Cabo Verde offers an incredibly diverse landscape, from exhilarating nature exploration and water sports to beachside pampering and cultural immersion. The sunny islands are a beach lover's paradise. With white sandy beaches, crystalline waters, and exciting water sports. The census islands call all nature enthusiasts and ecotourists. Mountainous peaks give way to lush valleys and surrealist volcanic landscapes where premium coffee and wine are produced. The Essence Islands are the cultural heart of Cabo Verde. Home to the two largest cities, visitors can explore the heritage sites while enjoying vibrant music, vivacious street life, and traditional food. Cabo Verde has it all. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the GWA Wing Foiling World Tour event in Cape Verde, Island of Sal. Live stream is getting going. The beast is roaring. We can. Looks like we are going to be having even more action in that day number three as we are already through to the quarterfinals. What is going to be happening down here in Cape Verde? We want to start immediately, okay? So be ready on the water. We have the heat number 25 first hit of the quarterfinals we have a noe kujala and hugo marine so uh, be ready because i want to put down the ap down that's mean when i put the ap down one minute after the red gonna be up okay and the transition time will be again three minutes and the Cabo Verde offers an incredibly diverse landscape, from exhilarating nature exploration and water sports to beachside pampering and cultural immersion. The sunny islands are a beach lover's paradise. With white sandy beaches, crystalline waters, and exciting water sports. The census islands call all nature enthusiasts and ecotourists. Mountainous peaks give way to lush valleys and surrealist volcanic landscapes where premium coffee and wine are produced. The Essence Islands are the cultural heart of Cabo Verde. 
Home to the two largest cities, visitors can explore the heritage sites while enjoying vibrant music, vivacious street life, and traditional food. Cabo Verde has it all. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the GWA Wing Foiling World Tour event in Cape Verde, Island of Sal. Live stream is getting going. The beast is roaring. We can see Punta Preto is starting to fire. We had yesterday the guys and the girls go out and start to test it. A little bit of training for them, but we are going to be going into action. Who are going to be our champions? Another great day here in Punta Preta. Our wing foil is going out for the first time here at this perfect right-hander, proving that the wave discipline can happen. We saw them battling out against the waves. There's been washing machines, but they have been carving, hacking, and just improving ride after ride. It looks like we are going to be having even more action in that day number three, as we are already through to the quarterfinals. What is going to be happening down here in Cape Verde? Punta Preta was in a mellow mood for the opening of the competition, but there was enough set ways and breeze to get the action up and running. All the athletes were eager to get out on the water to battle in the fresh wingful wave discipline. Some are seasoned veterans from other water sports and others are young guns who want to prove a point. Whatever their story, all of them love the prospect wingful battles on Punta Preta. The break delivered again with bigger sets as the tide came up. Frenchman Julien Bouillier took full advantage. He got one of the highest wave scores of the day with a 9.5 out of a possible 10. His heat total of a 17.20 cent, Chuchu Nunot packing. First time in, uh, in Cabo Verde, so also first time in Ponta Preta, and uh, I love this spot. The ride is so cool, uh, super fast, so many sections, and uh, yeah, there are rocks, but. Uh, with my brother, we like when it's uh, committed. <laughs> Cape Verdean local Hendrik Lopez went all in in his heat against Pablo Padilla. He took bigger and bigger risks, throwing down spectacular air maneuvers on wave faces. Ah, it's crazy. <laughs> it was got some really hard bumps. Went to the rocks a couple of times, but definitely worth it. I'm really stoked. The vibe in the beach is amazing. Everybody's screaming, and it's really. I'm really thankful to be born here and I love Cape Verde. <laughs> the battle of the Frenchman slotted Clément Rosselló against Tituan Galea, the 2021 Surf Freestyle World Champion. Against the odds, Rosselló came out on top in the tight duel, even though he also ended up on the rocks. Maui-based Zane Schweitzer avoided any catastrophes. The renowned waterman with his famed competition pedigree dispatched Italian Gregorio Pugliese using his surfing experience to the full. For Schweitzer, the chance to compete in Punta Preta in the new wingfall discipline is a dream come true. Man, this is definitely one of the best waves I've ever wing foiled and for sure the best yet we've ever seen in uh, the GWA. So, so grateful to come here to Punta Preta. I've dreamed of riding this wave. Another great day here in Punta Preta where our wing foilers went out to test out the new discipline of 100% waves in one of the best right handers on the tour. Gaining their stripes here in Punta Preta. We've seen washing machines, we've seen wipeouts, but we have seen some of the best surfing today. It is incredible to see how riders from all different disciplines coming underneath one umbrella, and Cape Verde has been the place where that has happened. I can't wait to see what happens in day number three. We've made it all the way through to the quarterfinals. What's next? Okay, the Kaunang is coming 
Here I am down on the beach at Punta Preta this morning, nice and early, but let me tell you what the conditions they're in at the moment. Heat number one for the men, quarterfinals time now. And as you can see, there's a couple of nice sets coming through. This is the famous wave here at Punta Preta, a right hand point break. And this morning, it really is pumping we've seen big sets start as soon as we were down at the beach and our first heat is now on the water so i'm not going to waste any time down here and for you at home because there's only the one thing to do final day here our finals day and i cannot wait let's go and check out that action with joe up in the studio cv marvel estamos ligados yeah, thank you very much, Liam, and it is good to be here as we are getting ready. Another day of action, and Punta Preta one more time is starting to come out towards us. We have Noe Cuyalo is going up against Ugo Manin. These are two uh, F1 teammates. They are two very ferocious competitors. Ugo Manin, he has a little bit of more of the surfing style. Noe Cuyalo comes from the freestyle, but I tell you what, he really has impressed us in this competition. The youngsters, the new blood, the new generation, they really have that fire. So I like to say the fuego and they are ready to try and burn out some of those veterans so yeah but hey when it comes to surfing it really you know what one of the things that really plays off is experience and we've seen it at the GK with the kite surfing early on in the week and we are seeing it out here with the waves as well so quarterfinals on the water these are the ones that are going to be playing so Noe Cuyada up against Ugo Manin here in the first heat that is out on the water then we have it is a Cape Verdean standoff in between Hendrik Lopez and Wesley Brito in that quarterfinal number three unfortunately it will not be run because Clemente Rosario yesterday um, had a bit of an injury and his foot is not good so he is not going to be competing unfortunately he just came to tell us up against Zane Schweitzer so Zane has a bye and is making his way all the way free in to all the way through in to the semi-finals and then in the last quarterfinal there we can see Benoit Carpentier is about to go on the water so now it is there's the names those are the gladiators this is our coliseum here punta preta let's go out to the water as that first quarter final is about to start So let's see who comes out on top. Ugo Marin on the light blue wing, Noe Cuella on the orange. Both riders just out for a cruise out there, probably having a little chat. Uh, and there we can see uh, Noe Cuyala in the yellow. Hugo Marin is out there in the white. These are the two boys. Quarterfinal number one. And Liam, that information coming in. What a shame again about Clement because he put some absolute big backside in ride in there yesterday. But on that last wave, took a pound in against the rock and it looks like his leg, he can't compete. Real shame there for Clement because he's a rider that I really enjoy watching go out on the water as well. When I see his name in the lineup, I just think to myself, yeah, we've got a good heat coming up. You're always going to see, you know, Clement ride a good heat, but just show that style, that elegance and great flow. He's a very, very talented wind foiler, also very, very talented on the kite side of things as well. So big, big shame, but wishing him a speedy recovery because hopefully he'll be joining us at the future stops later on this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Waterman, as he was talking, you know, we had Zane in the booth yesterday, and Zane was saying, you know, really cool to see other Watermen out here on the tour. You know, we have the likes of on the GK. We've got James Guru is also doing a lot of that big wave riding over there in Nazare. We also have Clement Rosero, and now some of the youngsters here we can see Noe Cuyala starting to go down this very nice inside roller. 
Getting out and having a couple of turns. Whoa, taking the risk here. Oh, going absolute carnage. Going over the foil. As that, he went a little bit too close to the rocks. A little bit too close to the rocks. And I tell you what, if that fall is in one piece, that is a very strong construction. Oof. <laughs> that is a way to start the finals there. I mean, we were going to probably see a little bit of these wipeouts as the riders come close into the rock. Great maneuver there, really getting on the top of the lip, managing to dive back down. And then this is where it all went a little bit shallow. As you can see there, the foil just jamming into one of those rocks and they're going down. I'm just looking out the corner of my eye as well. It's good to see that the board has been picked up. But there he is on your screen. He's still walking. The youngster, I'm sure that he'll be really raring to go to get back out on the water. Yeah, I mean, great riding. Look <laughs> at the look on his face. He, he is going, what just happened? What just happened? But making it out there and the replay again showing you that ride. Yeah, really nice. Here we can see all the way in. It was that last turn. I thought he would have kicked out, but Noeg really going and taking it to Ugo Marin. But it was here. This is where you see he went towards it and boom, there it goes. <laughs> hitting the reef. Talk about the old tightrope tripping himself up. But yep, now it looks like he's going to be running down back to the shore to be able to go back out there. I mean, kudos to him. That is an A for effort. Yeah, I'm not sure if that wing that he was holding there was the one that he had on the water. I think maybe he had the orange wing. Maybe uh, I'm not sure if it's still in one piece. But these wing foilers are athletes out there. They don't just bring one wing out with them. They bring numerous. But no, he doesn't want to be risking any more shallow scenarios like that because, you know, only so much kit at these events that they're going to be bringing out with us. Just under 10 minutes now. Men's quarterfinal, heat number one. Score still coming your way. As every heat, let me tell you that every heat is going to be like a final because the men and the women that we have coming up later on today, it's going to be a great afternoon, a great day actually of heats because one big difference today, I'm going to say it, is that we have big, big waves early doors and hopefully that just means that they're going to continue to build. The frequency is going to get that little bit more consistent and there are following riders just making their way out as Hugo Marin here getting involved in one of his first ways. There, no a score of a five dropping. So Hugo Marin making this one work, getting to the top end of it and dropping back in as he continues on but decides to back out. Good decision there from Hugo because as we saw previously, no a just carrying on and getting in towards the shallows and going straight over the boards as that foil jammed into the rocks. Hugo there playing it tactically, wanting to keep everything in one piece. And this is a nice way from Hugo. Definitely we know he can show a little bit more style on the ways, especially on the bigger ones. But early doors, it's a score on the board and that will be dropping very, very soon. Eight and a half minutes now on the clock. Heat number one, quarter finals of the men. And there we can see Noe Kulala just making his way back out, struggling to find that little bit of a puff of wind to get on the, on the foil as he's just on the far left-hand side of the competition area. But at the moment, there's not a lot of movement out there. There's a little bit of a lump out here for Hugo, which he might fancy. He's just switched around to go backside. Yep, deciding against that one. So at the moment, going through that little bit of a quiet patch. So Noe just on the left-hand side. No crazy, crazy rush for the youngster to get back out on the water. But I can see him pumping around, trying to get some power in the wing as he needs to take it to Hugo. Because scores are dropping now. Scores are starting to come our way. And let's just have a little look at how we're looking on the scoreboards. Okay, yes, Hugo Marion scores dropping now. They're looking just that maybe little bit better than the one that Noe got. One wave each for our riders. And you can see there, Hugo on the blue. New V3 strike from F1. 
And Noe there as well, making his way out to join Hugo out the back. Seven minutes left, and there the other score, 5.33 for Hugo Marin. Great shot of there with the drone in the sky. Gives you a great idea and sort of can show you that some sets are slightly on their way. You can see there just above Hugo, there's a little few lumps out there. Will those form as it starts to hit the reef and turn into those waves that Punta Preta is so famous for? We've had brilliant days of action. For those that have just joined, we are now on towards the Wing Falling World Tour, GWA. This is the first wave event of the year. You can see there one, one man still in the runnings for the title here, Hendrik Lopez, the local. He is in full swing, showing great style on the waves. Not only does he surf it very well, but he always loves to put on a show, loves to put on a little bit of a freestyle maneuver. And hopefully with the bigger waves, if they carry on the way they are, we will see lots of action from Hendrik, as he'll be having a tough heat later on today. Who is going to make it through to the semi-finals? In the next five and a half minutes, we will have our first semi-finalists because Hugo Marin or Noe Kualo will be going through. And just looking there, you can see, I think that's a 4.5 wing size. Just giving you a good idea for how strong it is out there. Noe as well is a young, light rider. I'd probably say we've got about 14, 15 knots out there. So he's on the 4.5. Hugo, I'm not sure, probably on a very similar size. No riders really riding anything larger than a 5. They like to go out with small kit because if anything is a little bit too big, then it's very hard to maneuver around. Talking about the wing, you know, you know when they're going to be dropping onto the waves because they keep that wing in that powered up position with that backhand on, keeping tension in the canopy. And then as soon as they're dropping in on the wave, they tend to let that wing fly behind them with one hand and they just pure surf the wave from start to finish. And then as for the foil, as for the boards, they don't want anything too buoyant when it comes to the board, nothing too you know, big on the literage. And then as for the foil, most riders, as Tituan said yesterday, around that between sort of 500 and 550 to sort of no more than 800 centimeter on the front. Anything too big, you're going to get too much lift and it's going to be really hard to maneuver, especially in the big waves here at Ponte Preta. It is an aggressive wave. It can close out quickly. It's very fast. And when you go through that middle section, there's different parts. You've got that top section where we're seeing our riders put in you know, two or three turns at the most. Then you're going to get that middle section where the wave speeds up a lot, closes out. So it's important for our riders in this part of the wave to keep the speed going, keep the momentum. And then if they pick the good ones, if they pick the golden nuggets, that needle in a haystack, then they'll be able to ride that wave all the way through back towards the beach. So those are the waves that the riders want to be catching. And with three and a half minutes left, it's gone a little bit quiet over the last few minutes, hopefully another set. I'd like to think that Mother Nature will throw us a bone and give us just that one more set because as mentioned on the beach earlier, it has been pumping this morning. Great waves here at Punta Preta. Three minutes, 15 seconds. As you can see, Hugo Marin, 5.33. Noe, five, bang on the money. And here he is, dropping in to his second wave after that crash that he had on his first. This will put him into first position after this wave. He can keep it all together, but out the back as well. Hugo Marin is keeping busy. No, he's deciding against that one as it closed out. But Hugo here, this one is shaping up to be quite nice. Good section here. Cruising up and down, showing the flow. He has picked a good one here. Hugo Marin working the way from top to bottom. Showing the flow, the style. This one has gone all the way into the beach on the left-hand side. We talk about picking and choosing the right waves at the right time. This is most definitely the right wave to choose because you're able to get through every section. Big, big wave. That will definitely bump Hugo into first position. 
No a second wave isn't going to be enough at the moment. But with two minutes on the clock, here he goes, the youngster. Big left turn right into the pocket. Going for the air manoeuvre, grabbing the nose as well. This is a good run from Noe. It's starting to close out a little bit in front of him, but let's see what he's got as he starts to get that little bit shallow. And you can see they're learning from his previous mistakes. They're not coming in too shallow. Because with 1 minute and 45 seconds on the clock, if Noe was to go down now, it would be very hard for him to get back out and catch another wave. And there, replay showing that little pop manoeuvre, just grabbing the nose and getting out of the water before joining the wave again cruising round and saying thank you very much for having me Ponte Preta. Hendrik Lopez heading into the water because he is going to be going up next against Mr Wesley Brito that is a big big heat the locals here from Cape Verde up against each other but we still are in now the dying seconds the dying minute of this heat Hugo Marin definitely with the wave of the heat, but Noe here on one of the smaller sections. Going for yet another air manoeuvre and landing nicely. Great variety here from the youngster. Eight point three three now as Noe bumps himself into first, but we're still waiting for a score to drop for Hugo. That big long wave that he recently took. Score yet to drop for that wave. Noe's lowest wave is 3.33. Hugo's is a 5.33. And you can see there, 13.33 altogether there for Hugo as he's bumped that wave with an 8. So a big, big score there for Hugo Malin. That 8 is going to most likely give him the edge over Noe. Because there it is. Red flag in the sky. And it's going to be Hugo Marin that is going to be advancing through to the semi-finals. Noe at the back, not on a wave. And we're going to go and have a little look now at the heat highlights. And there are our eyes in the skies. A beautiful shot there of Punta Preta. And up next, do not go anywhere because this is a heat where you've got to get comfy. Hendrik Lopez against Wesley Brito. Wave men, quarterfinals, heat number two. Out here for the Wing 4 World Cup in Cape Verde. First pure wave event that we have ever done on the GWA. And on your screen there, that is Wesley Brito. Big, heavy hitter, Wesley. One of the bigger guys on the tour. Have seen him absolutely throw down when it comes to freestyle. Going for huge air manoeuvres, big front flips, big back rotations. And he's going to be looking at trying to take out a good friend of his, Hendrik Lopez. There he is with the blue lid, with the blue helmet. Because Hendrik Lopez 
really enjoying being here, competing in Punta Preta for the first time in his career. He was recently over on the kite. So had a nice result over there. Was a little bit disappointed with his finish, but he still rode very, very well. Everyone really impressed with the work Hendrik has put off in the off-season. And he's out here on the foil, on the wing, but... For Hendrix to advance through to the semis, he's got to get through this guy out in front, Wesley Brito. As Wesley now engaging in his first wave. Nice big top turn there as he drops back in for that second manoeuvre, linking it all together, showing a little bit of flow and a little bit of style as this wave starts to peel out nicely in front of our judges. Coming now towards that shallow section. Wouldn't be surprised if after this turn Wesley decides against it. But no, going for the 360 on the first wave what a maneuver there from Wesley Brito that is sure gonna put a little bit of pressure on for Hendrik Lopez we still have 16 minutes of this heat and let's just watch that replay I thought the wave was all over there as it was getting a little bit too shallow but Wesley proved me wrong as he opened this wave really nicely opening up his heat very well with some nice maneuvers, linking the turns together, getting a little bit of speed here, going through that section where that wave can close out before popping a lovely aired maneuver. Little 316, getting back straight onto the foil. Hendrik Lopez, this guy loves a little bit of freestyle on his waves as well. So let's see what he's got. You can sort of see him eyeing up the sections. Moving that wing from the left to the right hand, positioning it in the right place at the right time. Keeping the wave going. This is where it gets a little bit challenging. In the shallows. Hendrik Lopez doesn't want to get too shallow, but I reckon we might see another air maneuver from the local Cape Verdean. But again, didn't like it on that one. First wave. Normally, Hendrik likes to open up with a big maneuver, big sort of finish for the crowd. But, you know, there's plenty of time left on the clock, so why rush? You know, why take the risk of losing a little bit of that kit and getting caught up in the rocks? Because this guy at the moment, Wesley Brito, showing a nice, powerful wave ridden. And he's on the right-hand side here and starting to get towards that section. And... Back out now to the edge of the competition area. Riding that Duotone unit, the D-Lab construction with the Alula material, slightly stronger material that. Going to need that when it comes to conditions like Punta Preta, as you can see here. The second wave attempt for Wesley. So that will be a nice scored wave. Scores are to be dropped still. And Hendrik Lopez is out the back. Nice shot of both riders there up in the sky. Just under 14 minutes. Hendrix scores a 5.27 on that first wave. They're still waiting for Wesley. Boom, there it is. A 7.77 for Wesley. And that is just one wave as well. So that wave where Wesley put that three-star maneuver, put that 360, that scored 7.77. And you can see as well another score of a 4.97 now dropping for Wesley. So two scores on the board. And Wesley is not here to mess around. No, I mean, he is the powerhouse there from Bovi. So just skipped out there, Liam, to see. We are going to be having Clement. He's going to be coming up with us a little bit later, obviously, because he's unfortunately is not going to be able to compete. It looks like he has maybe something in the ligaments in his foot, maybe not. He's waiting for results. And then Zane's also going to be joining us as now he has a entrance into those semifinals. But what a shame, because A, that was going to be a big heat. Clement has been absolutely killing it out there. And talk about carnage. Punta Preta is taking these boys for a washing machine on every single heat. <laughs> Wesley now on your screen heading out. And you can see coming up next there looks like one of the Boyer brothers. But I'm not quite sure. We will have to get some confirmation on that. But all systems go onto this heat because look at Hendrix there. Punta Preta just eating him up alive as he's making his way in towards the shallows. Trying to keep that wing nice and safe. Is that wing still in one piece? It might well be. It does look like it survived there. I mean, one of the things that impresses me with these boys is those rocks are heavy. 
you know, you've got some holes, you've got some urchins, and they are running across them like nothing barefoot and just chilling. I mean, this is what we want to see. It is the support. It is all of them going for it. And now, you know, team effort out there on the water. As Hendricks, let's not forget, he is one of the locals. Team, and he is making his way all the way down. And then we have here Wesley Brito, the powerhouse, the beast, the black mamba who he's putting on a very impressive performance already a 7.77 and here's he dropping in for yet another wave great start for wesley in this heat and he's looking to just advance and keep the momentum going but yep doesn't like that one has definitely probably seen that hendrix has had that mistake and had that slight error there coming in a little bit too shallow so he's not in a rush and here we have a few of the locals just helping with the boards i mean Hendrik Lopez there, he has put his kit through the walls. I remember yesterday as well, that board was taking a beating in the shallows. Yeah, no, it was getting pounded. And there, everybody running down. So they're going to be running down back to the edge. Loads of time, no, let's not forget, 11 minutes still on the clock. And those boys are going to make it all the way down. And we'll talk about all the way down. There we can see Wesley Brito. Playing it smooth, playing it easy as he knows he has that good score. To have a 7.77 just to start it off, that puts you in a very comfortable position. Great shot there of the drone following Hendrik as he goes down towards a safer area to enter the water. That's probably why Hendrik has gone down there towards that part where it's a little bit less sort of in the shore break. Yeah, so now just chilling, they're holding it, making sure that he can get out. And Hendrick's going to be re-entering the water. And then the caddies and the friends there helping them out. This is one of the things I love about K Verde. We've seen it in the kiting, we've seen it in the wing foiling. Is it is a team effort. Everybody, it doesn't matter if you're up against them in the next heat, you can really see that family vibe. And here we have Wesley Brito once again dropping in. He's looking comfortable, mate. Yeah, he's getting at one with the wave here at Punta Preta. Really enjoying the riding out there. He's on a nice wave as well. This one is really starting to open up nice. If he can just get a little bit of speed through this middle section, this wave could potentially peel all the way through in front of the judges. Because again, Wesley showed... Look, I just love that mo motion there, Joe. When they swap the wing from left to right along the wave, they just make it look so easy. Yeah, I mean, there we can see Wesley out there on the unit D-Lab just cruising his way through you know the unit d lab one of the wings that has the new alula there from duotone kiteboarding and it really is looking like it is going very nicely a lot of the manufacturers now starting to use different materials we've got the aludas we've got the hook keepers there's you know people doing double materials in the laugh on the struts trying to you know find that sweet spot in between you know flex rigidity strength lightness i mean that really is one of the things we're seeing with a lot of the... Currently, your second place rider in this second heat. Heat number two, a bit of chasing. He is hunting. Hendrik Lopez here. Currently, your second place rider in this second heat. Heat number two of the quarterfinals out here. Punta Preta, Cape Verde. And there you can see that is where we are on the far left there. That's our little live stream booth. And in the middle, you've got the judges. And then on the right-hand side, that's where all the crowd is just having a little bit of a chill and where riders can have a little look at where they are in the heat and who they have next. But big wave up here, Joe. This one's looking really good. Oh, really nice. All the way along. Wesley is not stopping. Wave after wave. And we can see Hendrik out the back there. Right back into the groove. Not as vertical as Brito, though. Brito on those inner sections was able to get by. And Hendrik is going to have to oh. hold it. Is he going to be able to? No, he's going to go down again on the inside, getting caught out. The beast that is Punta Preda taking no prisoners out there today. What? And he is getting ready to get rumble, but look at that beautiful image there from Hendrix. That was the biggest set of the day so far. Hendrick, I can see great replay here. You know, he had so much speed coming down from the face of that wave. He, I don't know how he kept it together. You can see here just 
the board kept tapping the water, just bouncing back up, and he tried to pump through this bit of the closeout, but unfortunately there, so much power just wiping him out. And I hope he's okay, as you can see on your screen now. He's still got all the kit in his hands, but he really is putting himself through it, Joe. Uh, well, if he wasn't awake, he is definitely <laughs> awake now. That is what I call a cold shower. Yeah, he wouldn't have needed any coffee this morning because he sure has been woken up by the wave and the face. The meanness that is Punta Preta. Wesley Brito currently in first position, and Hendrik Lopez really is waiting for the right section to get back up on that foil. Wow, Hendrik Lopez there, getting ready. Is he getting ready for his third wave or his third wash? <laughs> Who knows, but I reckon, look, I just think he's taken a minute just to compose himself and just get his breath back because getting washed around like that at a wave like Punta Preta must be so exhausting. You see there are safety team just checking in on Hendrik, making sure he's all okay because guess what? There is still just over five minutes left and it's looking like Hendrik has some chasing to do to catch up with Wesley. Yeah, he certainly does. Let's have a little look at the scores one more time here, Liam. So, Wesley has a 7.77 and a 7.17. Then Hendrik has a 5.27, so a good first wave, and then a 2.33. But this last wave, this last score is looking like it could be a banger. So we are just going to wait for confirmation on that because that could throw a mix in, and there is still four just under just over excuse me four and a half minutes to go and there we can see hendrick lopez right back out getting ready and that's you know congrats to all of the shore crew because they are going to have a busy day here with preta they're going to be super super busy and the beach is only going to get busier as the hours and the minutes progress on because this is the final day you know if we manage to pump through all the competition Hopefully we'll be crowning some of our champions later at the first wave discipline, the first pure wave event of the year. And great shot. You can see, I wonder what they're saying to each other there. You can sort of see a few smiles on the faces. Yeah, they're just chilling. I mean, you know, who wouldn't enjoy to have Punta Preta to themselves and two good friends, two fellow Cape Verdians out there on this beautiful day. We've got right-handers. They've just caught a couple of the biggest sets to come, and this is looking very promising because if the waves are like this at this time in the morning, I reckon it is only going to get better out there. Let's have a little look-see at what the forecast is saying for today all right so we have a 0 0.8 to 1.3 meters of swell about 13 to 14 seconds swell direction is looking a little better than yesterday and we can really see that and that high tide is at half past eight in the evening meaning that low tide is going to be at two so we are two hours before low tide so this isn't even up on the push this is look going to be looking very good for when the final heats of the competition are going to be coming our way because it has always been a couple of hours after the low when the waves really do start to pump i reckon we're going to be in for a a big big afternoon if waves like you said joe are like this at the moment you know, very different to yesterday actually they we had some big sets come through in the morning but it wasn't as frequent as this you know we've seen in every heat you know <laughs> our riders get munched we saw Noe in the previous one Hendrix here has had two beatings so these riders they've got to be prepared mentally physically when going in the water but the thing I love about this here as you can see there Hendrik on your screen is that him and Wesley they train together they're good friends off the water so for them as well, being in the same heat, it's you know they're probably enjoying it and having fun. Yeah, no, they are definitely having fun. I mean, we could see the smiles and we're on the way out, and that was after getting absolutely rang and wrangled down here on the inside. We've already seen quite a few people go up onto the rocks, but I, you know, I'm gonna say the one that not where Noe Kuyala went a little bit too close and absolutely nosedive into the rocks. I'm very glad he's all right, but shows the power and the determination of some of these young guns who want to earn their stripes. 8.47 there, that's the score that has bumped Wesley up to a 16.24, so massive score to be honest. That's one of the, you know, that is a score to be beaten today. But we know that when the waves come, the big sets, the big boys, when they do appear, 
you know, scores like that, we'll probably be seeing a handful, if not, you know, plenty of those coming our way. Yeah, no, I mean, that is what we want to see. And, you know, that is how it is to, to get those kind of numbers. Wesley has the experience. This is one of his local beaches. Even though he comes all the way from the other island of Boa Vista, he does come to Punta Preto a lot. And we've seen it in the kiting and we've seen it in, you know, you see it a lot in the surfing. The older boys or the boys that have a little bit more experience can pick off on the good ones. But Wesley showing that he is being a force to be reckoned with. The Black Mamba, he is ready to bite and watch out Hendrix. He's going to have to get another good wave. But he is right there. Hendrix would need something around an 8.79 point ride. So it has to be a big wave if he wants to have that opportunity. But both of these boys not leaving anything left in the tank. Looks like Hendrik might be on a little bit of a bump here, and it's in a good position as well because he's really, this one's really starting to open up nicely. If it just starts to create that little bit more face out there, out the back, this could be a ride that we see go all the way into the beach. Hendrik Lopez dropping into this one. Let's see what he's got because this wave's face now starting to give plenty of options for Hendrix to get busy. Yeah, he is. It is rolling off of the reef very nicely, getting a little bit close now. That is where he has to be careful if he wants to be able to get through that position. He is dodging stones like no tomorrow all the way down to the bottom. This is a very long wide here for Hendrik. And uh, we also see Wesley doing the same. Does he oh! get it? Oh, perfect landing. Perfect one there. And uh, Brito, does he stay on? <laughs> no. Equal out for both of these boys. That is how we want to heat to finish. Red flag in the sky. What a way to finish a heat. I mean, the best thing about that as well was that Hendrik was on the first wave. Wesley was on the second. Wesley being able to watch what Hendrik did and then thought, you know what? You're going to go for that maneuver and I'm going to go for it too. Well, welcome back, everybody, as we saw a little bit of the recaps of that last heat. Liam, both Hendrix and Brito throwing down on those last waves. We are just waiting for the results to come in. But that is going to be a close one because that last wave from Hendrix was very nice and long. Not sure if it's going to be enough, though, but still good to see the 360 on the end. We're waiting for confirmation as we are going to be continuing on. In theory, next would have been that heat between Clement and Zane. But unfortunately, due to the injury there from Clement, that isn't going to happen. So coming up next, we are going to be seeing out there on the water is going to be quarterfinal heat number four. Quarterfinal heat number four in between Benoit Carpentier and Julien Boyer. Yeah, and it's very, you know, we've got to remember as well, Joe, that we are at a wave event. This is pure wave riding. So we can't get too carried away when it comes to those freestyle maneuvers. All right, there we can see the guys are down on the beach. So there's Ugo and Noe Cuyala. Chris, how are those boys feeling? I'm down on the beach with Ugo Marin and Noe Cuella. We just finished men's quarterfinals round one, and it was teammates against each other. Ugo Marin put on a clinic out there against his friend, Noe Cuella, who put up an absolute battle. Ugo, how did that go for you? Uh, it was a quite nice hit for me. Even if I had to wait a, quite a long time to have a set, uh, I managed to take a huge bomb in the end, and I was lucky on this. So. Uh, I was keen to make a, a good score and I'm really happy because I know that Noe is really a strong competitor and was really like, I mean, I was really stressed this morning. I was like, hey, Noe is really good. I think he really can beat me easily. And that's why I was super stressed, but I'm super keen and happy to go to the next round. So Ugo and Noe are not only teammates, but they're friends. And Ugo has been a mentor to Noe over the years. Noe, how did it feel to go up against Ugo? Yeah, it was so cool. I stress a lot for his really, really good in waves. So it was really stress. Yeah, I stress a lot. Yeah, I'm super proud of Noe here. 
English is definitely not his first language. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have Hugo interview him in French quickly for you. Here you go. Okay. Um, Noé. Um, alors t'es un super bon compétiteur et vraiment euh, je, suis, je suis fier de toi, t'as bien progressé et euh, j'aimerais savoir comment s'est passé ton hit et je suis fier que t'aies réussi à retourner à l'eau assez rapidement parce qu'il t'est arrivé une petite, euh, petite aventure pendant le hit. Ouais bah euh, ça allait en vrai jusqu'à ce que je tombe quoi. Bon en vrai je suis rentré assez vite, re rentré assez vite dans l'eau, en plus il n'y a pas eu de set pendant que, pendant que j'étais pas dans l'eau. Et après j'ai quand même pris deux bonnes vagues, bon euh, ça valait pas ta bombe Hugo mais voilà. All right, I'm going to send it back up to you guys. We are the on men's and women's finals day. We have pumping conditions at Punta Preta. We got here this morning and we're shocked when we saw how big the waves were. We got great wind. So, I'm going to send it back to you guys. We're going to get this thing done. Yeah, thanks a lot, Chris. Good work out there as the boys and a little bit of the French interviewing going on as well. Multi-language down there on the beach, but congratulations to Hugo Marin for getting that win. Really, really good. And here we can see the replay. So there's Zane Schweitzer, who is, excuse me, Zane, that is Benoit Carpentier. I do apologize as Zane is not in that heat. So Benoit Carpentier, he has been a world champion SUP surfer. He has a huge surfing background and that was a very nice wave. But then also we saw Julien Boyer who we will have his replay up there now. Here it comes. So here Julien, the RD rider, this was his first wave, still waiting for scores to drop. Julian there probably you know really showing nice style and getting back into the pocket of the wave just where it's a little bit more, you know, there's a little bit more energy and that's where you can get a little bit more speed to get through that mid, mid section. Julian actually probably one of my riders of the day yesterday. He had a great couple of heats and, uh, you know, didn't really put a foot wrong. I think he actually got one of the highest wave scores of the day. Yeah, no, he was killing it. If I'm not mistaken, I think that was 9.5 yep. and those are the two men out there on the water that we can see, Carp and Tien Boyer. Very, very talented young men and looking forward to seeing the surfing. We are waiting for scores, but it looks like it is a hairline in between them as we have a little advance on pretty much what's going to go down with the scores here on our judging panel. And there we can see Julian front and center. Looking back to see if there's one behind. No, there isn't. So it looks like he is going to be taking off. No, all right, deciding against it. So let's get cameras on Benoit. Representing France out there on the starboards and the free wing. And there he is, just dropping into this wave. Nice set actually starting to form now. As he gets that nice top turn, yet to let that wing loose behind. You can see keeping the momentum, needing that power to carry on. Not going to be a wave that the judges are going to score high there, while Julian out the back is catching yet another bomb from this set. Yeah, fluid power. Really, really fluid. But going down here on the inside, getting worked. Is he going to be able to get out of that impact zone? He is paddling, doggy paddling, kicking, swimming, you name it, to try and get back out. He even dodged the bullet there. Looks like he's going to be safe as well because there's no big sets coming again. So Julian can take it a little bit easy. And one of the things that with uh, Julian, you know, he's got his brother on the tour as well. He can keep... You know, they can keep each other busy. And as Chris mentioned as well, the two of them, they have their little YouTube channel. They put all these videos up and, you know, of them traveling the world and going to all these spots and competing and training and, you know, everything that they get involved with with their brands. So the Boyer brothers are busy, busy Boyers. Oh, they definitely are. And they are pushing it forward and great to see. Great to see both of them out there and really cool to see Julien now because a lot of the times Camille is the one that is a little further in front and Julien here on the waves has killed it. He has got the commitment and he has taken the falls and he has really taken it to the Punta Preta. But I mean, looking at scores, we are waiting for confirmation. So a 6.23 from Benoit and a 6.4 there from Julien and we're waiting for a second score to come up. So close in between these boys, but hey, quarter final number four out on the wall as we are getting ready to go.
All right, well, already good scores out there. It looks like Julien Boyer has a little bit of an advantage, but that last wave from Benoit Carpentier is going to put a mix in. He is going to mix up the whole thing. He is going to the instigator, the Frenchman, world champion SUP wave rider, and showing that he has the skills and he has the vibe. But Julien, all competition long, he has been going from the back, taking the risk. And talking to Mallory and the judges yesterday, they really love the commitment that he is bringing to this competition. You know, a lot of the times the Bouillet brothers, Camille, is a little bit further up on some of the competitions. And Julien now right up there in front. He is looking for a spot in the semifinals. And he is doing a very good job. You can see the RRD rider there on the old gold wing. A little bit of the Alula here in the morning. These, both of these boys, as uh, Liam was saying, have a YouTube channel. They do all these funny vlogs, travel the world. They have such a good vibe. They always have a smile out there on the beach. And, you know, that is what it is all about. And it is great to see Julianne here. Less than 10 minutes to go, but the sets, the waves are coming through. If you're just joining us, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you're tuning in. A coffee or a cold one, that is what you have to get to enjoy the entertainment out here. Break out the popcorn because Punta Preta is firing. We're saying about 0 0.8 to 1.3 meters, 16, excuse me, 13 to 14 seconds. And Julian again, a drop it in on this little inside roll, a bit closer to the rocks. Playing dodge out there, you can see how he looks in front of his foot, taking the risk all the way and getting out non-stop. Two decent turns. Two decent turns there on that one. And we can see that we are ready to get back out there. So joining me here in the booth, I got Chris Madol. Chris, welcome once again, mate. Thanks for being us here with us in Cape Verde. Dude, the action out there today is sick. Man, Joe, thank you for having me. I've had so much fun out here at Punta Preta. And we woke up this morning and we weren't sure on the conditions. We were driving to the beach and we heard rumors that it was pretty flat. We've been looking at the live cam and it was the exact opposite. Absolutely pumping today. We have seen some of the biggest sets come through and had three of the best heats I've seen all week. We just had Wesley Brito and Hendrick Lopes, a Cabo Verdean full on quarterfinal that was absolutely mad. I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. On the beach, we were at the friends and family were just screaming and yelling. Yeah, I mean, Cape Verde, we've seen it in the kiting as well, and we've seen it here in the wing foiling. The crowd, they just get wild. They get in there, and also, they run onto the rocks if they're, if they're compadres. If anybody is out there and in trouble, you can see some of the guys getting washed in. There's been a washing machine this morning. I reckon there's going to be some carnage today, but they jump in there. They grab their boards. They help them out. The community, and then, like you say, the roar of the crowd, when the, especially the local boards, every single turn it's you know it's almost like a bullfight in spain it's like ole ole they just you know all the way over it's a whole cape verdean thing but hey the most important thing about cape verde the saying that they have over here is no stress joe it's a, it's amazing to see the families out here and the just the local joy i mean hendrick's entire family including his cute little puppy were down here you know, Hendrix Lopes has been one of the standout guys for pushing it. It mm. just seems like Hendrix is riding with a little bit of extra energy and enthusiasm. I mean, he is on his home break. It's been really amazing to talk to Noah Angulo as well. You know, Josh Angulo, the local legend's son. And he's like, Hendrix is my best buddy. You know what I mean? We grew up here yeah. doing everything from surfing to bodyboarding to windsurfing and kiting. And now they're both just kind of paving the way for what can be done in these big waves. For sure. And you can see also one of the images we saw when um, Hendrick was going out with Wesley after Hendrick's getting absolutely worked. They were going out and both of them were laughing. They were smiling yeah. at each other. And that is so cool. We saw it on the kite also, you know, when Ayrton Cosolino took out James Carew. At the end, Ayrton walks over, gives James a hug. I got you this time, mate, but I know you're going to be back next time. That is so important. And, you you know, you travel around with lots of the guys on the wing foiling tour here, and you're with them quite a lot with the riders. One of the things we can really see is there is a gang. There's a clan. There's a crew. Absolutely. And it, it actually makes me a little misty because I see the guys. Like, I just bumped into Ayrton down there who's on the podium on mm. the kite side. 
and he is sprinting onto the rocks to grab Hendrick's equipment. So he is absolutely putting himself in harm's way and because he is helping out his friend, family member, Hendrick Lopes. And they're screaming at him, you need one more big wave. And then Wesley on the other side from Boa Vista, he's here absolutely sending it. The Black Mamba is, the guy is a beast. He's so talented in anything he does in the water. I mean, his skimboarding skills, his surfing skills, all are kind of coming on display right now here. And it's, this is a really historic event. I mean, a week mm. ago, we didn't know if we could even run at Punta Preta. Like, the debates going on at every meal around the island between riders. Like, we should go, we shouldn't go. You know, some of the legends from Brazil, Mizu Fernandez and Kali Said, both were adamant that we ride here because we need to show the world what wing foilings can, can do in the waves. Yeah, and that, you know, you're saying there, Kauli Saadi, like, you know, he has been a multiple time wave windsurfing champion. So he has competed here. You know, we caught up with Victor Fernandez, also, you know, another wave windsurfing champion. He says, yeah, Punta Preta, this place is gnarly, but this place is one of the best waves in the world. And you know, you have to adapt and, you know, talking to him about equipment, because we saw yesterday, a lot of the guys come up on the rocks, equipment gets trashed, you know, it's part of the game they will have rigged up three different sets of equipment just going down the reef so that in the end if you have a problem all right there goes the kit swim in on the reef get back at get back in there it's part of comp competition surfing as well as part of competition wing foiling and i think it's been good to be able to portray what we have had here at punta preta because i reckon this has given wing foiling pure surfing a very positive push yeah, Joe, I totally agree. I think we're actually going to see a completely new landscape out there for the wave side because, I mean, like we discussed, it, it no one knew if we were going to run here. There was real talk of going to Kite Beach because of the worry about getting hurt on the rocks. And what's been proven is that it's no worse than riding a windsurfer up on the rocks. Um, yes, you do need to get out of the way of your foil. And what you're seeing with these athletes is mm. most of them don't wear leashes on their boards. That is so they can let the equipment go and get away from it. Yeah. Um, you're seeing, you know, beach people immediately jumping in the water, risking themselves to get the equipment. And guess what? Everyone's fine. We've probably had at least 10 instances of people going on the rocks and yard sailing. And 90% of the time, they're back out there. And I mean, it's no difference, you know, look at look at the WSL, look at some of the locations, those guys are surfing that, you know, the likes of Pipe, the likes of Uluwatu, those places are coral, they are gnarly, they are consequences if you get it wrong, but that is part of extreme sports, you know, you push the limits and sometimes the limits push back and riders accept this and they know this in the end, you have to know what positions you're putting yourself into, but sometimes you've got to risk it if you want the biscuit and here all of the riders really pushing it out there and i am very happy for wesley brito as well great heat there with with hendrick lopez but wesley has always been the underdog he has not at a competition we knew he had the talent he hasn't completely shined out because he's more the wave great that he can do that already into the semi-finals here of his home country cape verde punta preta yeah i think right now wesley is one of the favorites for, sh for sure joe um you know, Zane Schweitzer is another one that we've seen a lot of energy and enthusiasm from Zane, and, and that makes me really happy mm. because Christopher and I, being from Hood River, have been really the only athletes from the U.S. And what we're seeing is in New Zealand, we had Zane come, we had Cash Berzola, who was the standout 16-year-old from Maui, who absolutely sent it on the freestyle side. And we also had Mateo L, the Kauai surfer. So what we're seeing is, I think, to me, talking with Noah Angulo on the beach, the joy and the excitement at discovering that Ponta Preta is totally rideable, and I think this is going to be one of these contests that they talk about 10 or 15, 20 years from now and be like, do you remember when Kali came and Nizu yeah. came? Yeah. And all the boys from around the world said, we can ride here. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we've that that mythical windsurfing contest when Josh Angulo took the win for the first time and just one of the fathers here of Punta Preta putting it on the map. And there we can just see some of, you know, it's great to see the youngsters coming up, all different sports at the moment on the water. We have uh, Benoit Carpentier just dropped in on a wave there. Here is the replay of that one. Interesting style where he keeps two hands on the wing there. Run me through it, Chris. Yeah, you can actually see his wing has a big rip in it too, Joe. So he went on the rocks earlier, right in the panel. And what he's doing is more of a bit of a windsurf style. So he's staying powered up. Um, mm. Again, that's just personal preference. See how he's got two hands. Most guys are letting go and using the front handle, but that's just another style of riding from Benoit. 
Yeah, and I guess also, you know, coming from windsurfing backgrounds, kiting backgrounds, surfing backgrounds, anything can happen out there. But, I mean, look how close that is. 0 0.5 of a point in between these two guys. Looks like we got some sets on the horizon. Watch out. RRD boy here, Julian Boyer, dropping in. So Julian, as you said earlier, has always kind of helped Camille with everything. Camille was third place on the Freestyle uh, World Tour last year and just always seems to beat out his... Uh, his older brother a little bit. So we're really excited for Julian. He had a real inspirational ride yesterday and just went bananas with like a 17 score against Kali Saeed. And Kali Saeed was the number one seed from the seeding round with a 15. So I think Kali was a little bit surprised, but what Julian did was just go out and ride the most committed sections. Yeah, one of the things that judges have been saying as well is that they really like about Julian is there is you know he is not holding back no holding back whatsoever and here we can see him just on this really good wave all right well it looks like we're just waiting for waves to come in as we are now going to take a little set have a little breather with a small commercial break Welcome back to the finals day, day number three of GWA Wingfoil, Punta Preta. We just had an amazing heat between Julian Boyer and Benoit Carpenter. Well, Joe, I'm going to tell you, we just got the results. Benoit Carpenter is moving on, defeats Julian Boyer. Yeah, I mean, 100% wave. There was only 0 0.4 of a point in between both of them. Both of the guys getting really nice surfing, carving waves, but it looks like Benoit just edged hairline, edged past him. One of the, one of the first upsets there of the competition. And yeah, of course, also one of the things that we could see, you know, we've had those surfers, those other riders come in, like you were talking about, the likes of Misa, the likes of Kaoli, the likes of Ugo Manini, who's been on tour, but has been concentrating more on those waves. Now we have Benoit Carpentier coming from the SUP surfing world. This is really cool to see because it brings new people into the sport, new ideas, new feelings, new styles. You know, Zane Schweitzer now also in the semifinals. Big names coming down from all of the Waterman world. It can only bring good things. You know, Joe, I think you're right because the fact that Benoit is moving on, he has taken out one of the main contenders from the 
typical GWA tour. Precisely. Julian Boyer. Precisely. So we really only have two riders left. We've got Ugo Marin and we've got Wesley Brito, which are GWA veterans. So I think it's pretty darn cool that we've got Zane Schweitzer left and we've got Benoit Carpentier. So this is perfect for what they're looking for. They don't want the same guys from the GWA. All those guys already know how good it is and how much fun it is. The reality yeah. is, is we are trying to attract new riders from different disciplines to say like, hey, you don't need to come and do 360s or 720s like the Groms. What you need to be able to do is showcase your surfing skills. And that's exactly what Benoit Carpentier has just done. Yeah, exactly. That is very, very true. And I think, you know, sometimes a bit of possible pressure for lack of a better word, a little bit of a kick on the old butt cheeks, allows the sport to progress because I guarantee you those youngsters, those traditional freestyle GWA riders that have come here, seeing that they can get out on the waves, see that they can ride Punta Preta, are going to come back firing. So what that means is thanks to this and thanks to new people coming to it, new sensations, new conditions adapting to it, we are going to have more complete riders because they're going to up their surfing game. Yeah, Joe, I totally agree. I mean, we are going to be attracting so many different riders. Think how many SUP guys from Benoit Carpentier's circle are going, oh my gosh, our buddy is now in the semifinals and has a, you know, he has a one in four chance of winning. So it, it, this is great news for winging in general. Not only have we proven that we can ride these, you know, bomb places like Punta Preta where there's rocks and there's all this stuff, but we're okay with it and the riders are okay with it. So right now, we are literally witnessing history. You mentioned earlier Josh Angulo's famous first win here in the windsurfing world. I think we're going to be talking about this contest in the next 20 years just like that. Yeah, and now we are. We can see a couple of the ladies out there on the water as we have Muna White, Julia Castro, and Charlotte Baruzzi. Those are the three riders that are going to be making their way out onto the water. These are the seeding rounds. So seeding rounds, Chris, it's a little bit, a bit like the qualifiers we see on Formula 1. It's to see who can get that better position, who has, let's say, the easier route to the finals. But there's no easy route these days. Yeah, Joe. So the seeding round is new this year on the GWA. And we had the first, first instance of it in New Zealand. And it was really interesting. It worked really well. Was it perfect? No, but I know the GWA is adapting. So what happens in the seeding round is all athletes get the opportunity to go out and compete against each other based on scores. So it doesn't matter who you're on the water with. So right now we got Julia Castro, we got Muna White and Charlotte Barizi. So what they're doing is they're going to each try and get two waves and get the highest score they can. And what this is going to do is this is going to put a seeding on all of the women in the competition. Then, based on their seed, they go to the bracket. So if you're the worst seed, you're going to have to go up against the number one. So the idea is that it definitely helps to get the highest seed you possibly can. So I, I can't tell you what an amazing, we're, we're nicknamed this finals day because we have to get through the entire competition today. It looks like the wind is backing off for the next foreseeable future after today. Um, so I am looking at, I'm not sure if that's Muna. The girls are out ripping. They are getting some primo conditions to show that they belong here just as much as the men. Um, still just under 11 minutes to go. But we have just had such an amazing men's quarterfinals. Unfortunately, the report that we got very early this morning on the French duotone rider, Clément, was that unfortunately he had a pretty bad ankle injury yesterday. On his final wave, he got stuck in the foot straps. And what happens to these riders is when they commit at the very end, I think he got tossed around in the white water. And then essentially what that does is your, your ankles both get really sprained. So he woke up early, couldn't get out of bed. He told me, he said, Chris, he was devastated. He wanted to compete. He's made it really far in this round and had a real shot at it. And um, he, I think he ended up actually going to a physio, and he was told not to go today. So unfortunately, bad news for the duotone. French rider Clément Rosario, he had such an amazing heat against Tituan. 
So we're, we're, we're sending our best wishes out to him, and we know that you're, you're devastated, but heal up quick and um, get back out there, Claymont. So we are in the first heat of round one, the seating round for the women. As you can see on the screen, we got Julia Castro, Muna White, and Charlotte Baruzzi out there. They are picking and choosing their set waves, trying to get the highest seating that they can. We had an amazing quarterfinals with the men this morning. So we are all the way to the semis. So in the men, we have four riders left. We have two of the traditional GWA guys in Wesley Brito from Boa Vista, the Cabo Verdean, Duotone rider. We have Hugo Marin, the Frenchman F1 star rider, loves big waves, is very comfortable in the bigger surf. Then we have Zane Schweitzer, the starboard free wing rider from Maui, absolutely comfortable in big surf. Zane wants it as big as possible here. I, I would go out on a limb and say if it gets huge, Zane is going to be the favorite. And then he's got his teammate, Benoit Carpentier, also a free wing rider and starboard rider. He comes from the stand-up paddleboard world. He is a world champion, so he knows how to win. Uh, Benoit has been one of the competitors that I've gotten to know this week, and he is super smooth in the waves. So it will be Zane versus Benoit and Wesley versus Ugo later on this afternoon. So we are really looking forward to that. Right now, it looks like Liam is standing by with uh, local Hendrix Lopes, who just had an amazing heat. We're going to try and get those guys on for an interview. All right, we're going to lead into Liam right now. Liam is down with Hendrix Lopes, who just had an amazing battle with Wesley Brito. Down to you, Liam. Joining me down here on the beach, I have Hendrik Lopez, who unfortunately now is that that's the end of your week. You've been busy with the kite surf, now the wing foiling, but you know you just mentioned to me off camera, you know you're just enjoying yourself out here when it comes to the wing foiling. Yeah, Liam, exactly. I'm here to have fun, and I didn't expect nothing less. I got pounded a lot, but I'm really stoked to go compete against Wesley. He's one of the best on tour, and uh, yeah, it was really fun out there. We were laughing dur during the heat, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I saw there was a moment where the camera saw you both, and you were like so close to each other out there, and like I think you were just in front looking over your shoulder. What, what, what were you discussing out there? Were you just having a bit of a giggle, or were you talking a little bit about who's going to win, and I'm going to beat you, I'm going to beat you? <laughs> No, at first we were like, oh, let's go hard. And I was like, yeah, let's go hard. <laughs> and then we started talking. Uh, when we saw the sets coming, we were saying, Will, you want to go on this one or the one in the back? Like, kind of like we do daily day, daily today. And uh, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great to see that. So you could definitely see the, the sort of the friendship side of things out there as well. But that's great that you guys have that relationship on tour. You spoke to me yesterday and mentioned that you, you do train a little bit together. But for now, you know, you can sit back and relax. What's next for Hendrik Lopez when it comes to the rest of the year? Well, I'm, I'm quite really focused on kiting, so I'm, uh, I'm going to do that. But for sure on the combined events like we had here, I'm going to join the wing tour as well. And maybe now that we have a wave world tour, so maybe I'm going to do that too. And I, I actually have to start training more because I didn't train for this comp. I didn't wing since two months. Yeah. Went straight to the comp and did my best and I, I had really a lot of fun. Well, you could see the fun in your riding on both the kite and the wing. So thanks very much. It's always a pleasure having you at the events. But we're going to have to quickly go back to the action because I'm looking at the corner of my eye. There's some bombs dropping in hot. Wow, we just saw an absolute amazing set roll through for the ladies. We had just two amazing rides. It looks like both of them are back out of the impact zone. So, boy, that was a great set. And uh, ladies absolutely crushing it. Yeah, it's nice to hear from Hendrix. Uh, he, he just had an amazing week. I mean, 
sometimes the home competitions can be really challenging for the athletes because there's so many more people, you know, who need attention or focus or, you know, a lot of dinners to go to and stuff. And, you know, Hendrix is one of our dual sport athletes, we call it. He competed on the kite side and went very far, did really well on that. And then he decided, I'm going to wing as well. And he had a very eventful wing competition. Here we're looking at a replay, a huge bottom turn. Really committed. This is going to be a high seed. That was a great ride by the Cabrina rider. I'm waiting for the scores to come in. Those are looking really good. Julia Castro, Muna White, and Charlotte Barruzzi. So that was Muna White, the rider from Hawaii, USA, for Cabrina. And she absolutely caught a fantastic first wave. So that they still have three minutes left in this first seeding round. Um, I'm still waiting for some scores to drop. But Muna White from US, she did fantastic over on the kite side. And she just proved that she knows what she's doing in these waves at Punta Preta. On the Cabrina wing, just has an amazing ride. So, so far in this first round, we've seen Muna White from Hawaii with an amazing wave. So that's going to score high for her. Again, on the seeding round, they don't do live scoring. Now, the reason why we're not doing live scoring is the judges uh, are going to wait until the very end to release all the scores. So that's why you're seeing zeros on the board there. Um, so the, the women in this first heat, Julia Castro from Spain, Muna White from the U.S., and Charlotte from Italy have one more minute. Here we, oh, unfortunately, Julia Castro just went down on that one. But we got Muna White, the Cabrina rider behind her, who has been the standout so far on another fun wave. Muna White looks really strong so far. Whoa, great wave, Muna. Big cut back into the critical section. She is so strong. I am no, oh, wow, she just was right above the reef on that one. Great job, Muna. You can tell she has the skills being from Hawaii. Hawaii is very similar. Um, they get tons of great waves, and, you know, that's where Zane's from. That's where Cash is from, the other standout rider from New Zealand. So Muna is, is, is definitely showing her prowess in the waves. Here we're watching the replay of Julia Castro from Spain. Ah, or no, excuse me, that's Muna again on the Cabrina wing, shredding. Muna doesn't look like she's done either. I see her out the back looking for another one. There we go, back to Muna. She is not done yet. This is the final 15 seconds. She, oh my gosh, she is absolutely sending it. So 
Muna White is definitely establishing herself as someone to be a real contender in this contest on the women's side. Um, I'm looking really forward to seeing um, Bo Vanderlinden from the Netherlands. She's in the next one, but here's Muna again on that replay, like real critical section, absolutely making a big cutback. Um, almost loses it right there. You see her touch down her board. What happens when you touch her board like that? It gets really sticky, and then all of a sudden it wants to throw you forward. So here, all right, we got Julia Castro trying to get one more wave in. Red flag is just up, but she will still get that. But, nope, she pulls out of it. So there's the uh, Dutch star, Bo van der Linden. Bo was the 2021 women's freestyle world champion and had an amazing year on tour, but unfortunately hurt her shoulder. So she just has recovered from shoulder surgery. So she is going to be out there in the next seating round. So I am here with one of the standout riders from yesterday, Clément Rosario, the Duotone French rider who absolutely had a blistering heat against Tituan Galea. Clément, how did that heat go for you? Yeah, it was just insane. The condition was perfect. Said was coming, I don't know, all the five minutes maybe. And it was like a good egg chance with Tituan. I was going at first one, I was going on the second one. Yeah, Clément, so that heat, like just a recap if you missed it yesterday, it was one of the best heats of the day. Uh, it was just blow for blow, Tituan versus Clément. And it just, it came down to the final wave. And Clément, why don't you talk us through what happened on the last wave? Yeah, the, I saw a big set came and Tituan was going for it. So I tried to push him to go on the first one and he didn't want to go on the first one. He didn't want to go on the second one, so I said, okay, let's go on the second one. And this wave was growing up, like making the good ball, I think. And I was pushing myself to make good turns on the rail, like as I can try in surfing, kiting, and all the sports. And at the end, I don't know, I changed my mask for a longer mast for those kind of waves, like the big set of the day. And on the inside, I don't know, I lose the, the balance and my fault, I don't know, went on the side and my boss uncle stay on the foot trap. And yeah, I, I don't know what happened, but it was very painful at the end. Yeah, it was the last wave. We we're down to the final seconds and Tituan had a slight lead. Like, I think it was really less than half a point. And Clément was just going for a big macker and rode it all the way in into the critical section right on right in front of the booth right on the rocks you know, were less than 20 feet from all the spectators and Claymont went down pretty hard in the white water and you could just see his board twisting and so your foot your feet were still in the straps yeah yeah 
Yeah, until my 90 centimeters mass went out of the water, my foot was still on the shrub. I had the, my foot on the shrub like this, and my head was like touching already the, the water, almost the foil, I think. And yeah, it, both of the ankle was completely twisted on the strap. Yeah, when he got out of the water, I could see how gingerly he was walking over the rocks, which isn't easy anyways, but when you're hurt like that. And, you know, I talked to him on the beach yesterday late in the evening. I mean, when the adrenaline wears off, it's time to assess the body and see if you really are hurt or not. So you woke up this morning and... Yeah, when I woke up this morning, it was like super painful. Benoit was close to me and he told me, man, you can't compete. You can't walk, you can't go to the toilet, so you can't coop in this morning. Be careful, Clema. And yeah, I couldn't walk. I had to touch the walls to go to the toilet. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to cut down to Liam on the beach. It looks like he has Benoit Carpentier, who is advancing on to the semifinals. The stand-up paddleboard world champion, uh, free wing rider, as well as starboard. So we're going to send it down to him. So here with previous heat winner Benoit Carpenter, who's, you know, you took out Julian Boyer and yesterday Julian was, you know, scored probably one of the highest waves of the whole competition. So what was your mindset coming into this round? Yeah, you know, I've been battling with Julian since many years now, um, following the stand-up world tour with him. So we have many great battles together and uh, I know our type of um, approach to the wave is kind of similar. So just wanted to obviously to get the the best wave of the heat that's which I, I did I guess uh, I was really on the wave selection and then after not falling well I fell once like on my third wave I think and I kind of broke my wing but uh, it's okay it's part of the game you know when you play in Punta Preta you cannot be uh, all safe you gotta go big especially in the quarterfinal against a guy like him so yeah I'm super happy and uh, stoked first uh, ever GW event stoked to be in Cabo Verde stoked to be uh, here uh, representing Freewing and Starboard and the Starboard Foils. So it's been amazing. And uh, yeah, another two more hits at least. Yeah, you know, that's a good mindset yeah, yeah, to have yeah. two more hits. Uh, just speaking off camera, you said that your you know, home spot's breast. So, you know, just what sort of conditions do you get at your home spot? Are you able to train? I mean, obviously Punta Preta is, you know, a wave of its own, but are you able to find little spots with nice little golden nuggets for waves? You know, it's like 30 degrees, three meters every day, like some <laughs> bright sunny weather. No, no, Just no. Just like the UK for me. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, to be honest. Uh, we're getting some really nice one. The coastline is beautiful. If you guys uh, want to come visit, come visit. It's uh, really amazing. It's a great uh, part of the of France. And uh, yeah, we're getting uh, quite often some really nice condition. We have actually uh, up north, 20 minutes from my home, uh, kind of more, kind of lagoon kind of style. Well, the water is not 20 degrees like here. It's like more than uh, maybe a... Uh, 15 something like yeah, that but get the five four wetsuit on in there exactly with the hood yeah, so it was feeling, kind of a big that. change you know like uh, for he for me coming here and uh, it's been a long time i haven't been like riding in Bochol actually it feels really good so yeah no but it's a good place i'm really happy to live here and uh, yeah i want to say hi to my family as well my friends watching uh it's been uh, amazing and uh I'm happy. I will come back one day, but I'm going to stay one more one more <laughs> week, maybe. Going to stay one more. And just as well, in the booth, we can see that uh, a good friend of yours, Clement, is up there and uh, with Chris. So, unfortunately, you know, just, you know, the ankle a little bit sore. So, you know, a bit of a shame to see him not, you know, be in the competition for the rest of the event. Yeah, Clement is such a tough rider. Uh, he's, he's a great competitor and I've been traveling a lot with him and uh, he's a really good friend. It's just a bummer, you know, he's one, he's one of the best for sure, like in wave like this. And uh, yesterday he was unlucky, uh, just uh, it's, it's, how, it's how it goes, but uh, hopefully uh, he's all good with his ankle. I know he's back, going, he's on, go you'll be back. yeah, he'll be back. And I think he's going to tidy in two months something. So I think he's, he's, that was a good call to stay like in the booth and just yeah. talk. We'll go and bring him some ice and some nice Yeah, exactly. Just relax. enjoy. No worries. We'll take camera of him. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you've got a little bit of preparation to do. So semi-finals up next. Yeah. Best of luck. Thank you very much for joining us. And now let's jump up with the boys back in the booth because, you know, it's nice down here. We've got some good action going on the way. Oh, Liam, thank you. Uh, I like that, Clément. So you're buddies with Benoit, and uh, Benoit was just definitely like, oh, no, 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 you just take it easy. I mean, I know he's saying that because he's your friend, but he's a competitor, so I think he uh, maybe didn't want to go up against you. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. It's all the time when I'm with friend, push. I know that he's respectful on the water, I'm respectful, so he's just pushing and make the show for the for the life, for the people on the on the beach. and. Yeah. So you guys have been competing for years. 
like in stand up or kiting what yeah we were competing in longboarding and stand up in France at the beginning for the French Open chips and uh, and after he was already on the French team for the stand up world too and I joined the, the team three years ago no f four years ago so the last four years we were competing on on the team with the team French and it's like the yeah the guy with who I want to travel because I know that he's gonna push me and I'm gonna push him and yeah Benoit is so talented he have amazing style he's for me he surf in Britain that the water is cold and all the time on the water making good videos and yeah he, he's so talented he have the flow when he when he stand up you have the flow when he longboard you have the flow and when he's fall he's just like surfing style on the rail yesterday was a bit uh, he didn't understand why he didn't went over the six point because for him he was riding on the on the rail and he asked the judge to know and I think he he had a good hit against uh, Julien and get good score. Yeah, it, they didn't quite get the waves that they had yesterday, for sure. And I think that's where, on this pure wave event, we have to get used to that. Like, that's pretty normal in the surf world where, hey, sometimes it's just luck if the sets come through for your heats. But is Benoit, like, was he a champion on, like, racing stand-up paddle boards or surfing or what? Yeah, he's champ on the, on the stand-up paddle board on the waves. Oh, on the waves? Yeah. So he really has game in the waves. So... All week we've been training out at um, Abu Dhabi and some of these other spots, and I, I see this free wing starboard rider out there, and I didn't know who it was. So now we know Benoit Carpentier, and he's in the semis against Zane. What do you think about that? Uh, it's going to be a good hit because they had a couple of hits with the stand up world tour together, and all the time it's a competition between them, between the brand. I think they want to. Uh, they're going to rip for sure. I hope they're not going to finish on the rock and they're not, not going to be injured on the rocks, and they're going to keep safe on the wave but they're gonna push the limits for sure yeah I, I think Zane likes bigger waves for sure I'm not really familiar with Benoit's experience in big stuff but I think if it's big I'm gonna put my money on Zane but who knows so who do you like in um, semi-final number one it's uh, Ugo Marin versus Wesley Brito <sighs> at two different style I think Wesley is the power he's covered Jan is in home you have the you have the kind of the freestyle on the wave but he have also the pro I know what is uh, what he can do on the wave like uh, I think he's gonna go massive turns he don't go for small he go for big or he don't go and you go I think he's gonna try to surf uh, more safe I think he's not gonna fall because uh, Hugo almost never fell yeah, Ugo is an amazing, just flowing rider. That's one of the things that the riders have been trying to figure out what the judges are really looking for. Ugo Marin is a traditional rider, meaning big, swooping carves, riding in the most critical sections. But sometimes I almost think that he makes it look too easy so that he potentially could be underscored on some of this stuff. What did you think about some of the scores you saw yesterday? Uh, we were looking to through the scores with uh, Benoit a lot and I think almost all the the hit was the score was okay and good uh, I have a bit nothing to do on to say on the score I think it's it's way better than in Taiba that I was a bit I didn't understand the score and I was talking for one hour with the Jews and I think they understand everything that we were talking in Taiba and they try to apply here in in this comp so for me the score is good and if you have the wave, the beat set, you have the score. Right. Again, it, it really is. It's a bit of a different competition. Here, we're, we're taking a look at some of the ladies out there on some big ones. Um, we've got Manuel Hungo. We've got Sofia Marchetti. And we have Elena Romero. Again, for you folks at home, we are not showing the scores on the seating round. So what that means is that all the ladies are competing against themselves. The judges will tally the scores, and then that will determine the seating order. So again, it doesn't matter who you are on the water with. It just matters your final scores. And then we will start showing scores, etc., cetera, um, as we get into the first round on the women's. So Clément, um, what do you think this pure wave event is doing for different riders around the world? 
I mean, I know a lot of times people have been intimidated by having to freestyle on the waves, like maybe one trick, one wave. But with this being pure wave, do you think we're going to have more riders coming to this tour? Yeah, I think so. Uh, like, for example, even in Taiba with the one tricks, when some people ask me, oh, they have to do it only wave, wave, waves, like some uh, only surfer, surfer, surfer. And I think, yeah, the, the surfer, the only surfers they're going to come to to shred maybe strapless or, or, or with strap but yeah I think it's two different things freestyle on the wave and only pure wave uh, events. Yeah I think that opens up a whole nother world I mean right now you know with with someone like Benoit making it into the semi-finals my thought is that that's going to bring a lot more riders who were tentatively considering coming to this event to now say like, oh my gosh, look how far Benoit made it. You know, he comes from the surfing stand-up paddleboard side and absolutely sending it. Same with Zane. Zane Schweitzer, there's a whole crew, the Kai Lennies of the world, the Jamie O'Briens potentially. I know a lot of those pro surfer guys are really into foiling and downwinding. So this actually, like, as this event is unfolding, I really think we're making history here because it now proves that there really aren't that many spots that are off limits to the foil. So this this should be really exciting. Um, what do you think? Um, let's go back to Ugo Marin versus Wesley. Like, if the waves are smaller, does that make a difference for either one of those riders? I don't know. They have two different styles, and they're both going to uh, destroy the wave for sure. I think if it's small, they're going to... Uh, both is good. they're gonna shred the wave for sure. Big or not big, I think we don't gonna see a big difference. Two different style. Yeah, I I think you're right, and I think what you mentioned earlier about Wesley Brito, this is his home contest. We've discussed this before. Home contests can are really good. You have energy, but a lot of times you have too much energy. The adrenaline can take over. I think we saw that a little bit with Hendrix, who just was going mental in every heat he ran on the wing side. He's the only guy throwing 360s directly over the reef. He just didn't care. It was like he was riding with this energy and abandon, and it paid off because he went really far, and he almost beat Wesley. But I think sometimes actually being the home contest can wear you out a little bit. So I'm looking forward to the rest of this. We're grinding through the women's seating round. Three minutes left on this one with Manuela Ungo, Sofia Marchetti, and Elena Moreno. It, I know we will have one more after that, and then we will continue with the men's semis. So we really only have four more rounds for the men. Two semis, a mini final, and a final. So here, I'm not sure who we're looking at. That is not Bo, but out the back, and the rider is safe. Three yes, minutes to go. Sophia. Oh, who, who, do you know who on. that is? Yeah, yeah. It's Elena. It's from Kanaya. She was on the water all the, all the winter training. And Why don't you talk us through what she's uh, doing on the wave right here, Claymont? Mm. So do off the screen. That, that, that's what our yeah. viewers can see. Um, yeah, she, she rides safe. She knows that is the, the opening rune, and she rides super good. Long waves was a big set of the day. I think she rides more than good huh yeah i mean that's fantastic because it's so nice to see the women out here absolutely shredding ponta preta uh, again just last week i mean every meal we had we were here a week early and uh it, the question was where are they going to run the contest is it safe to run here and i think we really have proven that ponta is absolutely wingable I mean, Big Ponte is wingable. We've had guys come in in the rocks. Unfortunately, you had an ankle injury. But at this point, like, the women are out absolutely handling it. So that's a great sign. Um, I'm really encouraged by this. Clément, what is uh, in the future for you after the ankles heal up? What, what are the rest of your plans for the year? Uh, honestly, I don't know for now. Um, I'm going to see how, how much time I have to, to rest for my ankle. Uh, I'm going to take care because I already have one uh, problem on one of those ankles and I need to be careful for sure. Um, be ready for the next winter because it's the, the best, season for, best season for me going for the big waves. Uh, foiling, maybe next winter we're going to try to foil the biggest wave maybe ever, I don't know. Really, where, where, do you, where would you want to do that? Uh, I think in Nazare, I, was, I didn't... Nazare, I, it was also a good wave, huh? Yeah, that was a great wave. 
Well, Clément, thank you so much for dropping by the booth again this morning. Devastating news from the French rider Clément Rosario. Do a tone back. He unfortunately suffered a pretty a uh, bad ankle sprain on uh, when his feet got stuck in the foot straps on that last wave. So heal up, bud, and um, we'll see you on the next one, man. Thanks, Edith. All right. Cabo Verde offers an incredibly diverse landscape, from exhilarating nature exploration and water sports to beachside pampering and cultural immersion. The sunny islands are a beach lover's paradise. With white sandy beaches, crystalline waters, and exciting water sports. The census islands call all nature enthusiasts and ecotourists. Mountainous peaks give way to lush valleys and surrealist volcanic landscapes where premium coffee and wine are produced. The Essence Islands are the cultural heart of Cabo Verde. Home to the two largest cities, visitors can explore the heritage sites while enjoying vibrant music, vivacious street life, and traditional food. Cabo Verde has it all.
And welcome back everybody here to another day of action in Punta Preta and joining me here in the booth Muna White who took the win at the GK Kite World Tour they're taking number one spot winner of 2019 now winner of 2023 not a bad week El Muna no not a bad week at all um, it's it's been amazing to be back here I love this place I love Ponte Preta and um, yeah we had some good conditions for the first day of our event and then the guys had amazing day too and then uh, yeah finished off a little smaller but was was able to get Stuck. the win yeah yeah no I mean <laughs> one of the things we saw out there you always had that smile you always were enjoying yourself taking off some of the bigger waves and now Getting into the wing foiling as well, because, you know, we are here for the GWA wing foiling world tour. It's the first time we are at Punta Preta. There was a lot of discussion happening before this event started. Would we run here? Would we go to the little mushier on more mushier onshore waves over at Kite Beach? You've been out there. How is it? Um, I'm not going to lie. It is a little bit scary out there. Um, the waves are pretty steep. Um, definitely something that I would normally kite or on, on a day like this. Um, also, you're getting pretty close to the rocks on a lot of these waves. So, um, but I I think everyone's doing really well. The girls are charging right now. Um, definitely a, a couple girls a little timid to go all the way in close to the rocks, but like totally understandable. Oh, I I, I normally would um, foil somewhere like Kite Beach. Uh huh. But um, I think it's pretty cool that we have this this arena for for the girls as well. I mean, Muna, you are you are a pure wave surfer, a wave kiter, and now a wave wing follower as well. You, you know, but there's no doubt that you are very into the surfing style. I mean, you know, coming from Oahu yourself, you have a big surfing background. How is it to be able to enjoy all the different sports out there, to be able to combine, you know, depending on, we were having a little chat before, depending on the conditions, you do one thing and the other. Obviously, very fortunate to live over there in the Hawaiian Islands. You can choose when you want to go, not have to wait for waves like us in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm um, pretty lucky to be um, on Oahu where we get all sorts of conditions and yeah, I pretty much um, just based on based on the day, how big the waves are, what the wind is doing can um, decide if I want to foil or surf or kite. Um, yeah, it's been pretty funny here um, switching from kiting all week and then switching over to winging. It's like a totally different mindset. Mm. I'm like all the different gear and stuff, but um, yeah, had two sessions out on the water now on the wing, so um, getting more comfortable. Yeah, we can see that and we saw that with the guys yesterday as kind of every single heat, every single wave 
it kind of like you know start out on the shoulder and then they would go a little bit closer and closer to the critical section obviously one of the big things here is the reef we saw this morning there was some carnage out there and you know i think everybody has to take it a little bit easy to get used to know where the rocks are know where you know where those positions are to be able to perform yeah. but one of the things that we're seeing a lot of people saying on the comments it is so cool to see people coming from all different aspects of different sports you know like we have the likes of Benoit Carpentier who's a world champion SUP surfer we've got Zane obviously you know the waterman himself coming down here I think it's really cool to see all these different play people and you know like yourself you haven't been on tour in more than three and a half to four years what made you come back it was the forecast that good <laughs> <laughs> forecast was good and um, I just love this wave I think it's one of the best um, waves for kiting and I, I didn't know I was going to join the wing competition at first. Um, I, yeah, I didn't know that, that it was going to happen here, and, um, but it, it worked out. I, I could fit all the gear and bring it over, and um, yeah, now I'm pretty stoked to try it out. And yeah, cool to meet all the um, guys and girls on the wing foil tour. Um, like, it's a whole new batch of people, and... Mm everyone's stoked on winging so it's pretty awesome and yeah yeah a lot of people um a couple of people that i knew from yeah the sup tour and stuff so yeah, yeah. no I, it's you know we can oh. see also guys get your eyes out of action on the water because we can start to see some very big sets coming our way so we're going to ask our camera boys to get a double screen up here because Muna, I mean, Punta Preta, we have, if I'm not mistaken, I think high tide is at half past eight and then the low tide is around two o'clock. So we're just coming up on half past 11 today. So a little bit before the uh, low tide to go. And then we've seen it throughout the days is that is when the push starts to come up. And I mean, the girls are firing here and looking like the sets are coming in. And you said before, better, is it easier to take off on the bigger waves because they're a little further away and then you can, you're a little further away from the <gasps> reef and oh all right there it that is was Nia maybe yeah I think yeah that is definitely near so I just going down but fortunately she took off on one of the later waves of the set so I reckon she's gonna go, be able go, to paddle go. yeah doggy um, paddle swim she's paddling right now scramble she's gonna make it. <laughs> yeah. scramble girl yes um definitely almost easier to take off on the bigger one just because you're further out like you said and um, I think Neo was smart to get the last wave of the set too that helps if you do fall then you can make it back out and not just get washed into the rocks so but that was a really good set just now um, I don't know if it, it yeah if it's the tide but definitely certain times of the day we get a good push and then um, hopefully it it keeps going for 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 the rest of the day, day. Yeah. Oh, it would be Finals. the idea is we're going to be continuing on until about six o'clock if everything goes according to plan around half past four to five o'clock local time that's probably when the finals are going to be here seating around at the moment just having a little look at the scores here on the laptop we have Flora Asner is in first position second position Bowen van den Linden from the Netherlands and second also Nia Swadir so looks like Flora has a little bit of an advantage but while we're waiting we are going to be going down to the beach because I can see Liam has an interview with our other commentator Chris McDonald. Here on the beach with a familiar face probably for you guys and girls at home I'm here with Chris McDonald who's been joining us in the booth. Chris firstly it's been an absolute pleasure to have you join us up there your insight knowledge into the riders that we have on the tour is second to none but just then we've got a few of the seeding round of the ladies on the water absolute bombs coming through. You know, Liam, this morning we weren't sure what was going to happen on the wave and the wind. We knew it was windy, but we had heard that it was pretty flat all morning. Well, when we showed up, we have just been treated to some absolutely <laughs> epic conditions. Literally, we just are in the middle of the last women's seating round, and we have Nia Suardias, we've got Flora, and we've got Bo van der Linden throwing down Liam. Yeah, throwing down, it's great to see. And you can sort of see, you know, the men had it yesterday and went in their ceiling rounds. You know, they needed that confidence to get used to the wave. And the ceiling round's so important because no, none of these athletes are going out just yet. But this round is going to put them in the right position on the elimination ladder because on the next heats, they will be, if they lose, they're going to be out. So how important, in your opinion, is this seeding round? Well, the seeding round is everything. Basically, what's happening is we've made everything single elimination this year. So the seeding round, Liam, is basically your first round. So no one really knew what was going to happen. It was just a few days ago that every dinner table 
on the island. The discussion was, is can the riders handle Punta Preta? Can they handle the rocks? Is it too dangerous? There were some riders that were pushing for Kite Beach. There were some that wanted Punta Preta. But really what happened was is the GWA did a fantastic job of adapting. They sent the men out there. The men did great. The women have had their turn this morning and they have proven that they are absolutely more than capable of shredding Punta Preta. I have been watching Flora and Nia and Bo put on a clinic the last five minutes, Liam. I mean, it's been fantastic. This is what we want to see out here in Punta Preta. But also for you, you know, you've joined us on this event, which we're so grateful for and it's so good. But, you know, you're a dad on the tour as well. You've got your son, Christopher McDonald, also competing. Unfortunately, not now in the competition, getting knocked out, but has also come off a win in our first tour stop on the surf freestyle in New Zealand. Yeah, Liam, Christopher's main focus is the freestyle side of things. We're from Hood River, Oregon, no real waves. We've got swell on the river, but we're not really a surfing family. So this trip to Cabo Verde has been amazing because we have been, or Christopher has been, you know, kind of thrown into the fire a little bit. He went out at Punta Preta a few days ago and took one on the head, you know, lost his gear on the rocks, ripped his wing. But you know what? He, he learned. He said, you know what? It's not the end of the world. I'm okay. He had about a 15 minute swim in, everyone collected his gear and the next day we were out at, you know, the big stuff again. So it's been really interesting for us. Um, I have had so much fun watching these new riders on this pure wave tour. We've had Benoit Carpentier, who's yeah. now in the semifinals. We've had Zane Schweitzer from Maui. Like in the semifinals. He's in the semifinals as well. We've got Hugo Marin, you know, the French rider who's always been known for his big wave riding. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does against Wesley. But, you know, four top guys. So what do you think? Who are you picking? I mean, I wouldn't want to put my money on any of the riders because, you know, we saw the riders when they when they registered and I was behind my laptop at home sorting out all the event and just looking at the names. I was like, I have no idea who is going to come through on this one because it's such a new discipline and it's so great to see that the, the GWA is really pushed and, you know, we're having this new discipline. We're going to be able to crown a new world champion at the end of the year purely on waves. And Chris, you know, you've been joining us now for the last couple of days. How have you found it up in the booth and, uh, you know, being part of the team? You know, Liam, it's a lot more work than it looks. I'll say that to our viewers at home that, you know, I've always been considered kind of a chatty Cathy, like I can talk a lot, you know, I'm sure, whatever. But the point is, is actually being able to do this in the sun all day, etc. You know, it's been it's been really fun with you and Joe. I've enjoyed myself. Uh, New Zealand was a little bit harder. It was just me doing it. But this has been great because essentially, like, we've had some great riders up in the booth. I, got, I just got done talking with Clément Rosario, the Frenchman duotone rider, who is just an absolute gem of a young man. He's 23 years old. He's his main focus is riding Nazare in the big waves. And just unfortunately, he knocked off one of the favorites yesterday, Tituan Gailea. And in the last wave, he just came off and twisted his ankle so bad in the foot straps that this morning I got the word early that potentially he was not going to go. And sadly, it looks like Zane Schweitzer had a free pass in his round because Clément couldn't go. Exactly that. And we'll see the men up in action later on. I can see Joe up in the booth with the one and only Moona White. So let's head back up there because I'm sure they're having a really great conversation. All right. Yeah, thank you, guys. Good work down there, both of the boys. My compadres, Liam Dredge and uh, Chris McDonald, joining us here on the commentary on the stream. And Chris McDonald, the new member to the family, but he is no stranger doing a great job. Muna, there has been some sets coming through. Yeah, it's been firing um, this, this whole time. Like, the girls are getting a bunch of good waves and really just killing it out there. Yeah, no, it is really cool to see. And like we saw with the guys, as this heat has progressed, like we can see here, Nia, also one of the top freestylers of the wing falling and now looking in the waves, looking pretty handy out there as oh, well. Wow. Oh, don't go down there, don't go down there. Oh, that is a big wipeout. Is she be able to scramble to get away from the white water? She was letting that one until the very end. That was amazing that she did that air at the end. Yeah, she was, and yeah, air or air drop. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, showing that they are really going for it, but yeah. no. Well, Muna, thank you very much for joining us here in the booth. One more time, congratulations for taking the wing on the kite site. It is so good to see you back on tour, and I hope to see you at more events, but I know it will be a wave event. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Great to be here. Yeah, all right. Well, there, let's go back to the action out there on the water. 
as we can see Nia Suadias there just going off and we're going to cut out here from the studio. Ten seconds. And welcome back, everybody, as we have just finished the seeding round for the women. And joining me one more time here in the booth, Zane Schweizer. Zane, good morning, mate. Thanks for having me, Joe. Buenos dias. Buenos dias, buenos dias. Punta Preta, this is the fifth consecutive day that we've had waves. I'm going to say it, today's looking even better. <laughs> oh man, I'm so stoked to get to the skippers meeting this morning and see the waves cranking down the reef. It's going to be an epic final day of action. Yeah, I mean the idea, if everything goes according to plan, we have 18 minute heats, we've got two minute transition. So around half past four to five o'clock, I reckon is going to be that golden time where we're going to be having those finals. You yourself have made it through to the semifinals. Congratulations. I know that it's not the way you wanted to make it to the, the semi-finals because obviously Clement Rosseau, your contender, had a sustained an injury yesterday. He was in here in the booth with us, but also it is part of the game. 
Well, you know, as you mentioned, I uh, would love to have an honorable advancement, and uh, I feel terrible for Clement. He's a great friend of mine and one of the people that I love seeing on, on tour, mm. and uh, for sure one of the most well-rounded watermen that we have at this event. Not only did he do amazing in the GKA kite event here at Punta Preta, Killed it. Uh, he also really displayed his performance in wing foiling. So I hope he heals up well and is back in action soon. Yeah, but also, you know, you have a teammate out there in the semis, Benoit Carpentier. You boys have bounced out off each other at a lot of SUPs events. Both of you guys are wave riders. You know, he's been a world champion. You've been one of the top riders throughout the whole time. How is it to have a teammate in there? But obviously, you know this guy really well. So there's a bit of an advantage there as well. Totally. I mean, it won't be the first time that we've competed together in a world championship event, and it's going to be super exciting. And I'm so stoked for the starboard team to have at least one of us moving on into the finals. And uh, definitely going to be a great show of action. Uh, him being a, a regular footer, me being a goofy footer. Mm -hmm. I think that there's, uh, you know, it's. I feel like there's almost a little bit of a benefit uh, to backside in some ways. There's also a little bit of a benefit to frontside in some ways. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And most definitely, like always, going to be thinking of the ocean, the wind, the waves, and not thinking much about my competitor. <laughs> that is, there you go. That's, that's, the, that's the way to do it, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to do a heat, that's how you got to go out. The mind, mindset here of Zane. Zane, obviously, Punta Preta. This wave, first time for you over here on the island. You come over from Maui. You surf probably pretty much every day. I was saying to Muna, who just came in here over from Oahu, it must be really nice to be able to decide when to surf because there's always waves and not have to, you know, go surfing when a little forecast comes up, like on the south coast of Spain. So you consider yourself very lucky, mate. Oh, no doubt. I feel so blessed to be from Maui and to have such a great community and family surrounding me out there. And also to have such a great uh, environment. You know, there's no shortage of action with wind and waves. And, uh, you know, there's no other place I'd rather be to push myself and my sports I'm most passionate about. So, Zane... Obviously, we've got about 10 to 12 minutes as we are now on a heat break. Then we're going to be starting off with the sem with the semifinals of the men. Run me through, obviously, you go out on the water as much as possible. When you're home, what is your daily routine? You know, what? how do you combine all these different sports? Because, you know, a lot of people say sometimes when the garage gets bigger and bigger, you know, it gets harder and harder as you choice. And we were talking to Muno about this. Is like, you know, what do you do? You're like, if it's windy, you're going to go and do one sport, or if the waves are say, how do you kind of go around of all the different sports that you do? Because I think pe probably people have the same problem. Yeah, I mean, you know, structure is important. You know, even in uh, such a free form life as my my own, uh, I travel quite a bit, competing on the Sub Surf World Tour, the GWA, and you know, doing the big wave events for the IWT and, and for my big wave training for surf. But I always try and uh, make my choice dependent on the ocean. You know, the ocean calls the shots in my life. And of course, my family and, and is, is also calling the shots. Um, but I wake up every day. I do my journaling. It's the most consistent thing in my life, whether or not there's wind or there's waves. I always start my day with gratitude, with a little bit of journaling and mindful intention. And then from there, try and, uh, you know, get an eye on the water, get a feel for the weather and let the ocean determine what my plan for the day is going to be. And it sounds uh, pretty amazing for many watching. And I know it is. I feel very fortunate to have that opportunity and to, you know, to create a career off of what I love most in life. And, you know, it. It depends also a little bit on my competitive schedule. Of course. If I have, uh, of course, right now I've been training a little bit more uh, for big wave as we're tapering off the big wave season and coming into the wing foil events. I've been doing a lot of wing foiling as well. So big wave surfing and wing foiling has been kind of, uh, you know, the priority. Um, but when the waves are good, as you mentioned, you see that swell in the forecast. I'm, I'm out there having fun surfing. Uh, you know, it's windsurfing is I still get a few days out there windsurfing too which has been great but with uh, wind sport primarily right now for competition being in wing foil uh -huh. I've been uh, prioritizing that a lot more and so depending on the schedule depending on the weather it determines my day but like as I mentioned structure is important so I do have a few things that I do every day at home I start my day with journaling. I try and do some recovery throughout the day. I'm someone who's always revving pedal to the metal. 
And so for me, one of my greatest challenges, challenges is finding a balance between that mental, physical, spiritual uh, training and fitness and preparation. And to me, one of the things I find myself needing more is that time to calm down, that time to recover. You know, I have no excuse to be uh, logging maximal hours on the day in the water uh, not only for my own personal training but I also run a surf school back home called Maui Sports Adventures so when I'm home I teach at least one lesson a day sometimes two lessons a day so between two and four hours of coaching um, and then two to four hours of personal training you know I usually am logging four to eight hours on the water mm. and uh, aside from that I'm trying to calm down taper down do my my journaling my meditation and yoga I do a lot of slack line I find that to be a great way of balance training but also mental training it's a great way to calm the mind and get grounded and get centered I do a ton of saunas with uh, almost heaven saunas and, and cold plunges okay um, so I, I really enjoy those exercises that are training the mind but also giving my body a chance to recover a rest yeah, so those those are things that I try and do every day, no matter what the conditions are, no matter what the, the, the my, my schedule and my plan is. And even on travels, when I'm away, you know, I bring my rubber bands with me for strength training. If I'm not getting enough training on the water, mm -hmm. I have my Normatec for, uh, you know, recovery, for compression and getting that extra blood circulation. Try and do my foam rolling and stretching. And I think it's something that everyone and every athlete kind of tries to find their own little rhythm in. The balance. Yeah, no, it is about the balance. I mean, Zane, you say, you know, you're getting into the big wave riding. We see you out there at Piahi, you know, or Jaws, as a lot of people outside of Hawaii will know that wave. Is That thing must be mind-blowing, and it must be so humbling to see the ocean, that amount of raw power. How do you prepare for that? Oh man, well, I get this question asked a lot. And Joe, there's not much preparation you could do physically. You know, it's great to be strong, it's great to be limber and flexible, but some of the most important training for big wave surfing comes from that mental control of t mental toughness, and as well that ability to control our heart rate. Mm -hmm. And so, for the people out there wanting to get more into big wave riding, and for myself as well, before a big wave swell, I try and once again taper down, calm down, control my heart. You know, and not, I'm not going out and like rah revving up before a heat. It's actually, or before a big wave session, it's actually quite the opposite. I'm trying to really calm myself, maximize my lung capacity and my breathing efficiency, get the oxygen flowing throughout the body, stored in the muscles, stored in the organs, because believe it or not, you could be the strongest guy in the world. You could have a six minute hold, breath hold time static after a meditation session. It's not gonna help you in big wave surfing because of course, it's a bit of a, a mental confidence to of know course, you could yeah. do that. You have and, that barrier, yeah. But at the end of the day, you're paddling for a wave. You're sprinting, your heart rate's up. You're dropping in on a giant wave. There's so much going on mentally and physically. If you fall on that drop, like a lot of the time happens when we're paddling into waves that are once believed to not be paddled into. Now, airdrop down, eat crap, and then you're getting exploded. You don't have that time to breathe. You don't have that time to have that full lung capacity. And so what's most important is breathing before that wipeout. When you're in the lineup, that morning, the days before full capacity of breath from lungs to stomach storing oxygen in the body wherever you can in the muscles and in the organs because the body is an amazing machine it is. and if you could push through the mental toughness and the panic and the stress and everything in you that's telling you to scratch and fight for the surface and take in water even though you know there's no air then our bodies will do its job pulling oxygen from where it needs to come from and believe it or not we can handle a lot more mm. than we mentally uh, are prepared for and so that's one of the toughest things about big wave surfing and it's one of the things that makes me so attracted to it it's being uh, balancing that edge of of that comfort zone and control and surrender and that's one of the greatest things about the ocean the ocean's always going to humble you 
we always have to be mindful of the waves and the wind and be ready to surrender. There's a time and a place to fight, but there's also a time and a place to surrender. I think it's, it's, it's a big thing about respect, you know, like my dad is involved in surfing and, you know, I was fortunate enough to take me in since I was a kid. Nothing to where you guys are, but some of the nicest moments I've had in my life is sitting out at our local beach at a lineup with a sunrise and surfing with my dad who's 72 now. I mean, it, for me, it doesn't get much better than that. But he always said, never be afraid, but always respect. Yes. And I think that is super important. And I can imagine that the levels, you know, we've seen recently, you've had a lot of sessions out there, Piahi, together with your brother. I think after one of that famous Eddie Akai competition, you said that you pretty much had the wave to yourself. That's almost unheard of. Oh, man, it, it really is. I mean, even back in the, the 90s and early 2000s when toe surfing was more consistent out at Jaws, um, it was very crowded with toe teams. And so to see Peahi with a lineup of maybe four six toe teams it was special it was something i'll never forget and not only did i get some of the best waves of my life and some of the biggest waves of my life so far uh, after 15 or so years of surfing windsurfing and stand up paddling that wave but i have also experienced some of the worst wipeouts of my life this winter and to me it's almost more uh of a little bit of a I don't want to say a confidence booster mm -hmm. but it's it's a little bit more assuring to know what I can put myself through because going through these terrible situations it's a nightmare for most surfers but when you come out of it with uh, when you come out the other end of it with a positive attitude and the urge and the f and the fire to keep going then the experience is positive you know it can go either way and for me, you know, I really uh, had some, some wild moments and I, I felt just so connected and more respectful to that place than I ever have felt. And so it's, uh, it's, it's that balance of humility and, and confidence and most importantly, you know, preparation when you're put on the spot to perform. Yeah, I mean, preparation must be key. I mean, preparation in life is key, but also... I presume there must be an uh, element of you've got to adapt to what comes to you. I mean, you, you've just said to us that you, you've, um, I presume you've strap surfed it, you've uh, normal surfed it, you've been out there on windsurfing, you've been on there on paddling. Every sport must be a completely different prep and a completely different feeling. It must be really fortunate to have seen such a once in a lifetime experience of the nature because mother nature is boss oh it no, is no matter what to be able to experience that how different is it to drop into jaws on a wave on a surfboard than to drop into jaws on a windsurfer you know where where is the line do you equally enjoy it or is there a preference or where do you kind of find yourself there yeah it's a great question joe you know over the years especially as a younger uh teenager i really loved and felt more comfortable windsurfing it and stand up paddling it because i have that ability to see uh to have a higher vantage point and to read the ocean a little better and to have a little more time and mobility to to move into position or move out of position and so there's a, a time and a place for everything but there's also a time and a place for your skill level and your confidence level. And so now after, you know, now I feel like I can paddle in on most days surfing. And the days that are too windy where it's maybe a little too challenging for paddling in, whether the apparent wind's lifting up the face so that the board, it just can't drop in. It's lifting up and you're getting pushed out the back. That might be a day I choose to windsurf, you know. And so there's always a time and a place to adapt. Yeah, no, uh, and I think it's it's so astonishing how far these sports have come. I mean, you know, surfing has been here for generations and generations, and there are new waves coming up, left, right, and center. There's new people, but one of the things I love about the surfing tribe, so to speak, and, and I've seen it throughout all the different wing sports, all the different sports that have that uh, DNA, is there is the humbleness to the older riders. Yes. Always, if you go into a lineup and there is an old veteran, he's paid his dues. Mm -hmm. He has he has his place. Everybody respects him. And it's almost like a hierarchy. It's like, 
he's first he's been here before and you respect that and it really saddens me when you go to you know you you must see yourself the amount of travel when you go to locations where you do have people snaking waves you do have people you know not respecting on the wind on the like on the the winging or on the windsurfing on the kiting you know you go out grab the swell come in with the bump let it hit the reef mm. surf it go back out when you see people tacking in front or snaking mm -hmm. underneath the, I think you know it's really important you yourself having a surfing school the education to newcomers mm -hmm. because you know let's be honest to wing foil to kite you know in a couple months you can be out there on mm -hmm. the water enjoying your sessions yeah but if you haven't had the right education of 100%. etiquette out in the water you can get into sticky situations mm -hmm. for you know keeping yourself safe but also you know respect out there on the water because in the end what we want to have is to come onto the water with a smile and come out of the water with an even bigger smile 100 percent. you know one of the greatest lessons i've learned about being a waterman is from a dear mentor and an uncle of mine in hawaii archie kalepa he's the head of the hawaii lifeguard association for decades and uh, someone that i feel very honored to have learned from and to, to have been on the ocean with and one of the things he taught me as a young kid was mastering your craft is a fraction of the challenge mastering the craft is the easy part yes it's learning to read the ocean and and be in the right place at the right time that's the greatest challenge of a waterman or a waterwoman and so me personally I keep that in mind throughout my career and my passion and my days on the water but also it's one of the most important lessons I teach at our when we're doing private coaching around the world and on Maui at Maui Sports Adventures it's it's not necessarily about mastering the craft it's about being mindful and present in your environment not just for the waves but also for the other people and it's really important to respect um, the the elders in the ocean in Hawaii it's, it, it's so. one of the first lessons a young waterman and waterwoman learns you paddle up to one of the older people in the lineup or one of the regulators you, you shake their hand you say hi to as many people as you can and uh, you, you only see that in places like Tahiti and New Zealand and in Hawaii and especially as a competitor on tour, a lot of the time we're taking over local lineups. Yep. And we don't want to make a bad impression for our sport. We want to make a good impression. And it's, it's, a, it's a big impact that we have the choice to make. And so, man, it's, it's just so cool to be here and to be talking with you. You know, I've always, uh, we've had a, I think I met you when I was 12 years old in Pozo. And, um, Long time ago. And so you're one of those guys I respect as well. Me and too. now these women out here I mean I respect these women so much you know to see them pushing the level of this sport and I think wing foiling really is attracting so many women and children it's, it's awesome it's, it's so, so great cool. to see so great to see the 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 youngsters that's you know every time I go to a new wing foiling location and fortunate enough to travel with the tour is you are seeing 12 year olds we're not seeing that in kiting so much. We're not seeing that in windsurfing so much. And then suddenly, let's say the combination, which has become with the wing foiling, you got youngsters. I mean, look at this on tour. We have, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds that are about, you know, yay high. And then when they get on the water, they're like 20 foot tall. It, it's, <laughs> it's incredible. And they have that fire where they have the coaches to, you know, always going back to the education. But I think that just says so much about this sport and you know having the girls come out here in Punta Preta having you guys here for the first time in Punta Preta surfers coming in windsurfers coming in you know paddlers stand-ups anybody from all different aspects is only going to be better because you know two eye four eyes are better than two you know four hands are better than two it's always good to have different perspectives because you know you yourself from the surfing from the waves let's say the more wave orientated disciplines you have a perspective that could bring something to the wind sport or the wing sport that we wouldn't have thought of then another mm -hmm. one from the windsurf and then another guy who's been competing for 20 years who's done an elimination format who's done a judging criteria who's seen a sport evolve seen the mistakes that have been made to not here and in the end there is no I in team it's all about a team effort and I think we're very fortunate with the let's say surfing background sports is there is that tribe that yes. family feel and I would never want to lose that we got the best community we, most out we do well Zane thank you very much for joining me here in the booth everybody Zane Schweitzer as we are, have a green flag in the sky we are going to go back onto the water for some action
Again, both Italian riders. There goes Charlotte. She gets a little puff. We're hoping she gets going so we can see these women in action. CV Móvel. Estamos ligados. Cabo Verde offers an incredibly diverse landscape, from exhilarating nature exploration and water sports to beachside pampering and cultural immersion. The sunny islands are a beach lover's paradise. With white sandy beaches, crystalline waters, and exciting water sports. The census islands call all nature enthusiasts and ecotourists. Mountainous peaks give way to lush valleys and surrealist volcanic landscapes where premium coffee and wine are produced. The Essence Islands are the cultural heart of Cabo Verde. Home to the two largest cities, visitors can explore the heritage sites while enjoying vibrant music, vivacious street life, and traditional food. Cabo Verde has it all. Welcome back everybody, here we go, we're underway now with the Wave Women, round one, heat number seven. So, Sofia Marchetti against Charlotte Baruzzi, both coming out of Italy. So, we've just been going, uh, before this, we had a seeding round, and the seeding round was basically there, because this is a new discipline, these riders sort of, although they're in heats of three, they were all going up against each other, and then the judges would look back at all of those waves, and rank them accordingly for the elimination and you can see just on your screen now that is I believe Sofia Marchetti riding for the north I think they're actually both north riders out there Chris but 
you know, it's been great vibes down there and some big, big waves that came our way. Man, Liam, we have had an amazing day so far. Uh, we just got through with the women's seating round and it just seemed like there were three rounds of three riders and each round was pushing harder and got better waves than the last one. So we ended with Flora, Nia and Bowen and they just went punch for punch on big waves. And then we ended with Nia Suardias, the teen from Tarifa, riding a critical section on the inside in front of a screaming beach and deciding she's going to throw a big air. It was so <laughs> awesome, Liam. And then I also saw as well that Moon and White just came straight over to Nia and congratulated her. Nia, for Nia as well, so having a, a rider like Moon come up and say, you know, massive congratulations, massive well done. I mean, what not only an inspiration that is, but that's got to give you know a little bit of fire in the belly for Nia to continue on because... She was the top ranked female rider in the seeding round. Yeah, Liam, deservedly so. Nia has been on fire this year already. You know, she swept New Zealand very convincingly. The the racing was, she won almost every race. She did go against the local New Zealand newcomer, Amy Bright. And Amy is comes from the windsurfing foiling world and is trying to qualify for the Olympics. But Amy was such a treat to have on the women's side in New Zealand. We were really pushing to kind of have her adopt more of the wing foiling side. Basically, we're trying to steal her from the wind foiling side. So Nia crushed the freestyle over there, and now she's coming away with the number one seed in the waves and looks really hard to beat. Yeah, Nia's biggest rival as well on the sort of surf freestyle. You know, you've got Paolo Novotna, who is our current world champion when it comes to surf freestyle. So those two will be battling it out again in Lukat. But yeah, as you mentioned, Chris, a great start to Nia's wave you know, career here as the GWA first wave stop. We're in heat number one, round number seven, seven and a half minutes left. And the one score just dropping there, Sofia Marchetti with a 5.73. Looks to be a little bit more on the quiet side out there, but, you know, take nothing away from Ponta Preta because I'm sure sooner or later, those sets will start to come in and another score on the way at the moment for Sofia. So shortly dropping once those judges have finalized those. Yeah, we're, we're looking for Charlotte's first ride. This is an all-Italian women's round here. Uh, Charlotte uh, Baruzzi has been on tour with Francesco Capuzzo, and they are just a lovely couple, really fun to hang out with. They have a really cute dog named Nacho, and it was really cute, Liam, because Francesco is pacing down on the beach by the camera because he's so nervous that Charlotte is competing. Yeah, and it's great to see, isn't it, the two of them. I mean, they both support each other, Francesco on the men and Charlotte on the women as well. I mean... I mean, you wouldn't have it any other way as well. Traveling the, traveling the world with the one you love. I know. I guess you could probably say that they're the best couple in the world right now. So, <laughs> good stuff down here at Ponta Preta. It looks like uh, potentially Sophia, we got a drone shot of her. That's amazing. Catching a fun one. So, Sophia just building on her score here. Um, she's up to a 5.73. Charlotte, unfortunately, in a bit of a lull over there. What she's trying to do for everyone at home is she's just in a really light zone. So sh there she's up on her board, and we're just hoping to see her getting foiling away and then back out there with uh, her teammate, Sophia. Yeah, very far out on the left-hand side at the moment. Quite, you know, quite far downwind, but I'm sure, you know, on a four, you can blast that wind so, so quickly. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing Charlotte just get that first wave under her belt because time's ticking actually what you know we got just uh, under six minutes left and those are the shots that we love to see you can sort of get a real good idea for that rolling swell as it starts to filter through at this point break and you can see it looks like there's a little bit of action that's going to be coming our way yeah i mean that's the problem liam we're sitting up here in this perfect spot and we get to look out at the waves but the bad part is that Unfortunately, we're stuck here t talking instead of actually riding. <laughs> There's often times that I would much rather be out there winging on some of these fun waves. I'm not sure I would be in the critical section the way we're seeing our athletes. I think I'd be shoulder hopping down on the beach break, but it still looks pretty fun. Yeah, what a wave to get involved in. And, uh, I mean, I also was uh, having a little chat with Julia Castro, and uh, she was showing me her watch, her Apple watch after her heat, and the, uh, the BPM, the heart monitor. I think it reached like 180 or something ridiculous. I mean, she was just going absolutely bonkers, but it wasn't like it was like a gradual increase. It was like, you know, normal heart rate, normal heart rate, boom. And yeah. uh, I mean, she's, uh, I think she's calmed down a little bit now, but pff, just shows you uh, that the wave here, it's a challenging one. And, uh, but, you know, 
we would like to throw a challenge to our riders, our athletes. These are the best wing fallers on the planet. So, and you saw, you know, as you mentioned, Chris, with Nia, just as soon as you get those couple, you know, on the way, a little bit of confidence and all of a sudden, you know, you come at one with the wave. Yeah, it's been really fun to watch this week. Like so much has unfolded in just a period of five, five days or even less where all of these athletes, you know, what they did is they released the wingers the first four days because they held the kite stuff first, which was great. There's a, a, a tremendous vibe on the kites around Cabo Verde. You know, it was an all Cabo Verdean podium, which was amazing. But what that meant is that these wingers were free to go explore the island. So we were out at Abu Dhabi, we were at Cora Azul, which is around the corner from there. And most of these riders, including myself, had never been in waves like this. So it was this kind of timid approach where one guy would get washed on the rocks and you were terrified. Well, by the end of the day, 10 guys had and everyone was okay with it. So what we've seen is this development of the skill on the wing side and I watched Flora ripping I watched Bo out there so basically what they were doing is they were cutting their teeth they were on bigger waves than this they they took a bit of a beating but they survived and they got some confidence which now allows them to come in here and really showcase what they can do exactly because you know the next rounds now you know if you lose you're out so that is the name of the game as we filter through the rest of the women. We've got just over three minutes left on the clock. Still a score to come. Uh, so, sorry, a score not dropped yet from Charlotte Baluzzi on your screen there. You can see just coming in left foot forward. Just having a look at the right hand side, but just not in the right section at the moment on the wave. So definitely got some work to do as time is ticking for that athlete on your screen. And uh, sooner rather than later, we'll be getting underway with more action. And correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but was it with the words that came out of Nia Suarez's mouth? Did she say that is the best wave session she's ever had to you, or, or was I wrong in hearing that? Nope, you're right. And it's really fun because we've gotten to know Nia and her family over the last two years of doing the tour. And Nia just a bit too young to travel alone, so we have gotten to know her parents. Nicole and Kuro quite well. Shout out to Nicole. She's back in Tarifa. I know she is devastated to not be here. Kuro drew the lucky card and got to come <laughs> to Cabo Verde. I'm in the same boat. I drew the lucky card with my wife, Nicole, back at home. Shout out to you, honey. I know they're sound asleep, but the, the reality is, is it's a family affair. The Suardias have another young child, Leo, who is, I'm going to say he's not even 14, and he's already a Duotone sponsored rider and ripping on the wing. So it's just a matter of time before he was actually in the contest in Tarifa. I was going about to say that. Yeah. yeah, the freestyle comp last year we had in Tarifa, we were able to give, uh, I think he had a wild card as well, he an organized wild card, and uh, the support that that young trooper had. I mean, it was great to see, and, you know, throwing it down as well. Yeah, he, Leo is absolutely fearless. And in Tarifa, we were there the week before, and Duotone had a, a camp going on called Youngblood. And you saw these like 10 or 12 wing foilers, a couple girls in there, which was great to see, Nia and a few more. But what was so fascinating is the beginning of the week, the level is at a certain point. And halfway through, you're like, oh my gosh. There's yeah. already people backflipping that couldn't do it two days ago. And Leo was actually one of those kids who has already mastered the backflip. So there was this a bit of drama in the household because Nia couldn't do it yet. So <laughs> Nia, the experienced rider, can't backflip yet, but yet her younger brother comes out of nowhere and starts sending him. Well, there you go. That's what siblings are for there, to push each other. And, you know, Nia definitely, you know, that's, uh, the surf freestyle is a big sort of factor of her riding. She's very, very strong on the freestyle, very strong on the slalom, and it's looking like she's also going to be very strong in the ways. So, you know, me and Joe have talked as well before. We talk about that complete rider, the rider that can do it all, that can throw down in the waves, that can go out in the flats, that can ride, you know, the big waves as well, like we're seeing at Ponte Preta. I mean, I'm sure that over the future years, we're going to see Nia, you know, continue to compete on the tour, continue to be one of those top riders, the one to watch. But also, if she's really enjoying herself here in Cape Verde, I wonder if she's going to be tempted by the likes of, you know, going off to the Portuguese coastline and, uh, you know, shredding up one of those big bombs at Nazare later on in her lifetime. You know, I think right now Nia is being groomed for yeah. <laughs> a future like that, Liam. She's a water woman. She's complete already. You know, what she's been able to do this year on the tour and even last year at such a young age. You know, she's sponsored by Roxy, and that's a really a really strong brand, and they have a really 
great support for women. I've seen a contest where I can't remember which one it was, but they left her a really cute package with a swimsuit in it, and there was a, a handwritten note. Just super strong stuff. Cool. I mean, great stuff. You know, sponsors do help massively on the tour for our riders. That heat previously has now come to an end. Red flag is in the sky. So before we jump into the next heat, we're going to shoot to a quick commercial break. CV Marvel. Estamos ligados. Cabo Verde offers an incredibly diverse landscape, from exhilarating nature exploration and water sports to beachside pampering and cultural immersion. The sunny islands are a beach lover's paradise. With white sandy beaches, crystalline waters, and exciting water sports. The census islands call all nature enthusiasts and ecotourists. Mountainous peaks give way to lush valleys and surrealist volcanic landscapes where premium coffee and wine are produced. The Essence Islands are the cultural heart of Cabo Verde. Home to the two largest cities, visitors can explore the heritage sites while enjoying vibrant music, vivacious street life, and traditional food. Cabo Verde has it all. And here we are back at the amazing break of Punta Preta out here in Cape Verde. And there you can see our event site. We're just there on the left hand side to your screen, far left. That's where we are located. Me and Chris there. Just running you through the next quarter final. Quarter final number one. Big, big hit. Who have we got, Chris? Oh, man, this is going to be a good one. We have Bowen van der Linden from the Netherlands and North Rider. And we have Julia Castro from Spain. I have been watching Bowen all week cut her chops on the Cabo Verdean waves. Bowen was sending it at Abu Dhabi and Cora Azul around the corner, and it's like she just got better and better all week. So we just finished with this women's seating round, and the last group was the tour veterans. We had Flora from France. We had Bowen 
from the Netherlands, and we had the team from Tarifa, Nia, and they just threw down Liam. They showed what they can do in the waves in Punta Preta. I mean, they sure did, and you can see there, that's how that sort of, this wave forms. You've got that, you know, the, the, the water line there, and, and the land, and the break, and the wave just breaks off to the right-hand side. Couple of our wing is there on the far right, but that's not where they, you know, begin their waves. They're all the way on the left-hand side of your screen, and just following that wave home, and, you know, just talking about the wave itself, Chris. We're sort of seeing, I would say, about three sections to the wave. You've got the beginning where the riders are able to put those two sections in. And that's where we're sort of really seeing that big, deep carving turns. And then the wave gets a little bit more punchy. It starts to, you know, close out quite quickly. And that's where we're seeing our riders sort of, you know, flatline a little bit of the section because they need the speed to get through past the shallow stuff. And then if they catch a good one, they're able to ride and put a couple more turns on the far left-hand side of the competition area. Yeah, we just had a great shot of our competitor, Muna White. Muna White was in the yellow helmet there, and she has had a busy week, Liam. She was at the top of the women's podium on the kite side already. The, the U.S. rider from Oahu absolutely shutting down the women on the kite side, and now she is back for more on the wing side. She did quite well on the seating side and really handled this wave here. I talked to her down on the beach, and she said that it was very similar to some of the Hawaii conditions. You know, right now, we are looking out from our booth right now. We just started with Bowen and Julia. They're still just under 13 minutes to go but it does look a bit flat out there so both of these athletes are looking for two wave scores what that means is we take the best two scores they have they're allowed 12 attempts on the waves but two will count so right now both julia and bowen seasoned veterans they're out there looking for bumps on the horizon um like i said punta preta we definitely haven't figured out the key to why they're waves sometimes and then the next heat will be totally flat and then after that they'll get 30 waves. That's very, very interesting. But I must say, you know, we are on, you know, another day of action here and, you know, yesterday we saw Punta Preta really come into its own as the day went on. It was a quiet morning and then we hit towards the afternoon, waves started to filter through and it had that weird you know, sort of feel to it, like, as you mentioned, Chris, where one heat was, you know, jam-packed, the next heat was not. Uh, but now today we're seeing a little bit more frequency out in the water, as beautifully demonstrated here by Julia. So Julia dropping into her first wave of the heat. I wonder what that heart rate is doing out there. Oh boy, that was a good one. Now she goes out the back. So what she's looking at right now is she is making sure she can get over this next set wave. I think she's in an okay spot. It's not gonna break on her head, but it was pretty close. So right now she's doing a little bit of a scramble, a little bit of a combo of surfing and just scratching to get over the next one. Yeah, it's just one thing is, uh, you know, riding this wave, the other is getting it, you know, putting it out, the, the fear out of your mind because we see a lot of the time when riders are out there having fun and they're happy, that's when they ride their best. If they're going out there, you know, sort of fearing the wave of Punta Preta, which is very hard to do, you know, it's a big, big wave, but, you know, you've got to try and put it at the back of your mind, forget about, you know, the wave itself and just go out there and ride. Well, Liam, the thing is, is this is wing foiling and the whole idea behind it is to have fun. I mean, I know you come from a pro tennis background and it's a totally different vibe. I mean, you're alone on the court out there. You're working the entire time. Like, I mean, tennis compared to wing foiling, a little bit of a different world, huh? <laughs> right, that's put a wetsuit on. That's, for, that's one thing for a start. But no, yeah, you're exactly right, you know, and that's... You know, I love the water sports side of it as well. You know, I, I do enjoy, you know, being out there. You know, no one else to blame but yourself. And, you know, every, every day is a learning curve. And, you know, for these riders, you know, every spot that they go to is something new. You know, it's a new spot here, Cap Verde, for, for a lot of our wing foilers. Not all the time are they coming to Punta Preta. Sometimes they're just, you know, heading over to Kite Beach. So having the competition here over in Punta Preta as well is actually forcing our riders to, to challenge themselves at a wave that maybe they wouldn't have done so before. You're absolutely right, Liam. I mean, just a matter of four or five days ago, as the kite contest was going, it was pumping, and there was all kinds of chatter within the wing foil community of whether we could run at Punta Preta. And the kind of directive from the tour was that they wanted to push. They wanted to see what was possible for wing foilers and waves. And, you know, I have been on this circus for almost the last two years chasing Christopher around, and I wasn't sure what was going to go down. I wasn't sure if Punta Preta was possible. And I have to say, my eyes have been 100% opened 
to how much more potential there is. The men have seen two days of competing and absolutely sending it. Clément Rosario was one of the standouts for me. The Frenchman duotone rider, he's a big wave guy. His main focus is Nazare every winter. Unfortunately, he did dethrone Tituan Gailea, three-time world champion on the wing side, but he could not go this morning. So the big news this, this morning at, at breakfast was we heard a little rumble that possibly Clément was too hurt and would not be able to go. So... Sad news out of uh, France for Clément that he, uh, you know, he decided to listen to his body. He went to a doctor this morning, and, and they, he did recommend not going. Yeah, and no, a great smart move there because he's a busy guy on the tour. He does, like, as he mentions, he's on the kite surf, he's on the wing foiling. But I think, you know, you couldn't have said it any better there, Chris, about the location, about the spot here. It's so good that we've, you know, pushed the riders, you know, slightly out of their comfort zone for some, you know, to, to challenge this wave. And also for us as a tour, being able to see that, a spot like Punta Preto has been successful, allows us to, you know, you know, experiment with other waves out there and, you know, sort of, you know, the bigger waves as well. Talking about big waves, Bowen van der Linden here is dropping in on her first wave. How is this one looking, Chris? Wow, we got a great drone shot of Bowen there. She is pulling in front of the judges right now. She is connecting a lot of turns. But Julia is behind her on one as well. So we're glad that these ladies are getting some waves. We're going to see what Boa can do. Both women looking for their, oh, Julia going down. It looks like she's going to be out of the critical section, so she's not going to get smashed, but hopefully she's able to get going again. Yeah, sometimes just having that smash, though, is what you need just to get it out of your system, you know. Having the fear of not wanting to fall down and sort of being a little bit tentative on the board, you know. Now she's had it. She's got the hair wet. She's had the face part. She can get back on the board and get amongst it because... At the moment, there's quite a nice set Ooh, wave. And I've just seen, paddling. Yeah, I've just seen as well, Baron van der Linden has done the old U-turn because there is a big set wave dropping in now. Here we go, second wave for Bo. The North Rider there just carving along with that Nova hanging loosely behind her, making this wave open up really nice. You can see carving from the left, carving from the right, but pumping through this section. Oh, Bo goes down hard. She loses her board. Oh, that one's going to be tough. That is going to be her second scoring wave, Liam. So for the, the w people watching at home, this is an important point. That's the second good wave that Bo has caught. There is only seven minutes left. So she is going to have a bit of a swim to get in. We've got guys helping on the beach right there. They're going to rescue that north board and foil. But Bo is sitting already with a pretty high score, and that wave will score again as well. So she is in a, still in a pretty good position to win the heat, even if she can't get back out there. Yeah, also, what, what, you know, just with where Bo has crashed there, as you can see there going down, you know, we see with the men previously, they're just, you know, pushing it with the wave that little bit further so that, you know, if they are falling, they're falling that little bit shallower, you know, a little bit close to the rocks. But what that means for them is if they are losing their kit, they're not spending as long, you know, swimming after it. However, now Bo went down a little bit further out and... I must say, she's probably a good, like, 30 to 40 meters, maybe a little bit more, actually, away from her kit. And then we can see, you know, just some of the crowd, some of the uh, the helpers on the beach there saving the kit. I mean, it's pretty risky stuff, even for these guys on the water that want to go in there and in the sort of the short break of the wave. Yeah, uh, being on the board rescue side is actually just as dangerous because there's all these holes and urchins and slippery rocks, and it's you're making a real commitment if you're going to go in. And then what happens sometimes is the board will get hit by white water and send the guillotine foil into you. So definitely not a good position to be in, but that's kind of the way it goes in big wave surfing. When people get washed up on the rocks, you know, safety is kind of out the window. The whole idea is that we want to help out our athletes. Um, Bo is looking like she's swimming in. Potentially she gets a lift from the jet ski. We're not sure on this one. Um, yeah, no lift will be coming from the jet ski for Bo. She has to swim in. They are, you know, that's the rules out there. She's got to swim in, swim in her own kit. She can't have anyone either swim out the kit to her. She's got to come all the way in. They have to just stay there and pass the board. And you can see there, keeping her head above the water, just in a little bit, a bit of breaststroke, but that must be some tiring stuff. Definitely looking on the tired side. And 
looking over the shoulder, just <laughs> hoping and praying there's no wave that's going to swallow her whole. Yeah, that's a great shot of Bo. She's a real competitor. You know, she was champion in 2021 on the freestyle side. And unfortunately, she suffered a shoulder injury while training and missed the next year. Uh, Bo's sitting on a 12.43 right now compared to Julia at a 5.0. Julia would need to improve on both wave scores to beat Bo. And with four minutes left, I mean, anything can happen, Liam, and we've seen it. But I think Bo is sitting in a pretty good position. Yeah, there's nothing to, uh, I mean, I'm sure she'll be told now was when she makes her way in. There you go. Finally being able to grab the boards. I mean, one thing I'm super impressed with is you know, the durability of this kit as well. I mean, these boards and foils have been taking an absolute spanking when they're coming into the shallows. But, you know, we've got all sorts of constructions out there. All these brands have got, you know, different technologies that goes into all the kit. We're seeing the aluminium foils, we're seeing the carbon foils, we're seeing, you know, all sorts of different stuff out there and lots of experimenting as well, Chris. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, everybody's gear is good now. It's like a few years ago, things were different and there were certain, wow, look at this, the horizon, Liam. There are some bombs coming through. But the, the gear has, everybody has kind of caught up, I would say, and so everything is good. Like, we, we'll mention brands up here, and, and we're not trying to single anyone out. We're not paid any more to say another name, but, you know, we've had RRD here. You know, we've got North Riders, Bowen Rides for North. We've got Duotone. Um, we've got F1, of course. So all the brands are good now, Slingshot. So shout out to all you guys, Ensis, Sabfoil. We are definitely not playing favorites. But right now, Liam, look at the horizon, man. Yeah, so that's, I mean, just watching that wave, you know, as you can see on your screen, it's a shame that no one can ride it. Just look at the one out the, this, wow. ne this, this next wave here. That, this is a set. This is a set. Two and a half minutes left on the clock. And this is just a moment for us to sit back, relax, and just enjoy this beautiful right-hand wave here in Punta Preta, Capo Verde. Liam, I'm going to put you on the spot. Would you drop into that? With a bodyboard? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I think, you know, it's always, I'd love to test myself on the ways in the wing four. You know, for me, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not at the level where, you know, I'm doing any, like, you know, crazy freestyle maneuvers or riding any massive big ways when it comes to wing falling. I, I just like going out in the lighter winds. You know, I, I really enjoy the kiting side of things as well. Kiting is my, my go-to when it's windy. So, you know, I try and ride on a foil or, you know, big, big areas, what I really, really enjoy. But, you know, just watching Bo here on the wave, you know, I'd like to give it a go now and then. So I'm getting to know my uh, my buddy Liam here a little better, and he just told me he was a pro tennis player. So tell me a little bit about the background on that in competing. Yeah, I just grew, grew up in, uh, on, you know, the land sports originally and, uh, you know, got into my tennis originally. That was uh, that was the way it all started for the sports for me and, uh, you know, competed in the UK. It was, you know, good fun and, you know, some of the tournaments out there and then was fortunate to move down the coaching route and that's where my abroad, my abroad experiences came. And then working abroad... Uh, there was a little water sports center when I was coaching. I thought, you know, there's a little bit of windsurfing in there. I'll give that a dabble. Went for a dabble and fell in love with the sport, fell in love with water sports. And uh, being able to, you know, have a land sport and a water sport is great. It keeps me busy on and off the water. And then being able to, you know, find, you know, get my hands on a kite bar and a kite in the air. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, here we are sitting at Cabo Verde in Pointe Preta. Oh, man, what a story. I like it. I know I was a snorkeling G.O. at Club Med back in the old <laughs> days and I was right next to the windsurfing shack and I was like man that looks fun and that was it I've been hooked on wind sports ever since nothing like getting uh, in the footsteps for the first time man you said it so we got a fun bet going uh, the bet going around the US Hood River Maui area is can Christopher my son the 16 year old if we give him 24 hours could he plane in the footstraps on a windsurfer. I mean, that's super tough. It's a, it's a very, very tough sport, just like wing foiling, you know, it's all tough to learn, but once you learn and once you're up, you know, it's, you wouldn't have it any other way. And that's why these riders out here at the moment, you know, this is what they do full time. They're just, you know, full time water athletes experimenting in all sorts of different sports. We see Julia like a prime example of one of the women on tour that does it all. She, you know, does a stand up paddling. She's, you know, jumps on a sub. She's on the wing foiling. She's in the kiting as well. She rides a twin tip. She rides a surfboard. Very well rounded athlete here as. 
The red flag now goes in the sky. So quick score check, 12.43 for Bo, a 5.04 for Julia. So it looks pretty good for Bo as we are going to now jump and have a little look at those highlights before heading on to the next heat. CV móvel. Estamos ligados. Cabo Verde offers an incredibly diverse landscape, from exhilarating nature exploration and water sports to beachside pampering and cultural immersion. The sunny islands are a beach lover's paradise with white sandy beaches, crystalline waters, and exciting water sports. The census islands call all nature enthusiasts and ecotourists. Mountainous peaks give way to lush valleys and surrealist volcanic landscapes where premium coffee and wine are produced. The Essence Islands are the cultural heart of Cabo Verde. Home to the two largest cities, visitors can explore the heritage sites while enjoying vibrant music, vivacious street life, and traditional food. Cabo Verde has it all. And welcome back everybody, here we are in Cabo Verde, Punta Preta, as next up, there we have it, two big riders there, Muna White against Manuela Jungo, what a heat Chris, quarter final number two, just talk us through Muna White coming off the back of a win. Well, Muna White had an amazing showing last week in the kite contest. Um, she won the event on the women's side and absolutely sent it in the finals. I watched that and it was there was so much energy and enthusiasm on the beach. It was just amazing. So I'm really excited to see what the Cabrina rider can do on the wing side. Earlier in the seeding round, she really showed us what she had with a few sets rolling through. Muna is from Hawaii, so we are seeing her really handle the waves like back home. And there, just trying to identify what rider that is. That might be one of the future riders coming up in one of the following heats. It looks like that might be Elena Moreno coming out of Spain. But plenty of time left on the clock here. So we got green flag is in the air. Muna White on the blue and white Cabrina kit out there. So what she's doing, it looks like there's a few bumps out there. Um, she is going to be picking and choosing. Manuela Hungo looks like she's on the Duotone kit. Um, she is 
about to drop into her first wave, and then Muna behind her on one. Looks like Manuela pulls out and decides against that one. Yes, but there's some really nice lines looking just out the corner of the booth here. So maybe that was a nice tactical decision there by Manuela. Uh, as you can see on your screen, just heading back out towards the far right-hand side. Not quite sure where Muna is positioned just yet. I think that's her on our left-hand side there. But oh, look at these waves, Chris. Look at the waves. Yeah, Punta Preta sure has uh, come through for us. I mean, again, this morning, the forecast didn't look great. We were kind of scratching our head. Would we even potentially have to move to Kite Beach? But no, it has been pumping for finals day. So we're watching Muna right now. She's in the yellow helmet and the Cabrina wing. And, um, you know, she's really riding high after that win on the kite side. So I expect great things out of Muna. She just doesn't have a lot of pressure. No, no pressure. Can go out there and have some fun. The only pressure that she'll be feeling is the pressure from the wave as Manuela here getting involved in her first wave, which is looking very nicely done. A score on the board, that's just sometimes always a good thing. Just building some confidence because, don't you know, everyone's going to remember we're now in the quarterfinals. So if you lose, you are out. So yeah, this is a good way for Manuela. She's a seasoned competitor on the kite side as well. And what we have here is we call it filling the scorecard, Liam. It's kind of like the same thing over on the freestyle side. You don't go out and take the absolute biggest wave and send yourself and potentially risk a crash. What you do is you take a fun wave, you make some turns, and you get a score on the board. Sometimes what will happen is when the ocean goes flat, flat those first few waves that you got really will end up winning the heat for you yeah and when we talk about the waves today as well i mean you might think differently but i actually think that it's got a little bit less frequent over the last sort of half an hour i mean for the when the men were on i i don't you know i just feel that there was definitely some more you know more frequent big waves in the sets it's definitely dropped off for me i think just that little bit but you know maybe these women want that those conditions just to ease off a tad yeah, it would be a little bit nicer if we had some more frequency on the swell. When there's uh, more waves, it's just easier for our competitors to really show their strengths. So right now, the ladies are circling around. I'm watching Muna on the outside. You know, she knows what she's doing. The Oahu native, she definitely knows her surf game. So right now, they're both kind of hunting for bumps. Muna pulls out of that one and decides against it. She has plenty of time left in this. We're, we've got 17 minutes. She is going to wait for something bigger. And then you have Flora just making her way out because she'll be on the next heat. So it looks like Manuela has the first score on the board with a 3.3. And again, for the viewers at home, the way this works is the the competitors are allowed 12 attempts, so 12 waves, and their two highest scores are counted. So right now, Manuela on the board first with a 3.3, and what that does is that gives her a pretty big advantage right now over Muna because it has gone a little bit flat. So the more time that goes by, these ladies, they're veterans, and what they do is they have race watches on Liam, and they are looking down at their watches right now, and they're saying, uh-oh, I may be halfway through this heat, and I don't even have a score yet. So Muna, she wins on the kite side. Looks like she might be trying to drop into something because she realizes time is ticking, and she needs two scores. Yeah, and you can see the boy mark there just placed by our sports crew. That's just sort of a mark just to... To show them, you know, hover around there. That's where the waves will start to form, sort of the edge of the area. And Muna White on your screen at the moment, just sort of circling that boy like a shark, waiting for the next big waves to drop in. Because at the moment, scores aren't visible on your screens. We do apologize briefly for that. We're just waiting for them to pop up as we're not obviously, we're not also just a little bit unsure how much time is left. I reckon we've got just above around 10 minutes. But, you, oh, there you can see. 17 minutes on the clock, but that is stationary at the moment. So we will sort the ticker out for you. But the scores are correct. So 3.33 for Manuela. Muna White still yet to catch a wave. Yeah, so for all the viewers back home, we're not just plugging into an outlet like at home. We are on a remote point break here at Ponte Preta. So 
We have to run all the utilities in. We have to get an amazing amount of telecom equipment. So it, 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 snafus do happen. We do lose power every once in a while. We have a generator quite a ways out there that is uh, working really hard right now to give us power. But the reality is, is we are in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, we definitely are in the middle of nowhere. But, you know, that is where we sort of find these hidden gems in the middle of nowhere. You look at some of the spots that our riders go to when they do like brand uh, videos and product launches and all of this sort of stuff. So it's always good, you know, when you see the these hidden gems in, you know, some of the videos I've seen online, I thought, where the hell are you? But, you know, that is what we want and that's what we want to see. Here we go, quarterfinals, heat number two of the women. And you can see here, just Moona White getting involved on her wave. Both riders there getting in towards this set because that was a set that we've been waiting for. These are the ways we've been talking about and mentioning when those sets come through. It's important these riders are placed in the right position at the right time. And scores to be dropping on the doors. For me now, I'm going to have a little wander. I'm going to go down to the beach, try and grab a few interviews because coming up shortly, there's a very special guest on the way. So I am here with my good friend Kali Seaji from Brazil. Kali, how are you, man? I'm very good, Chris. Good to be here with you. Yeah, Kali was just walking by and I just snatched him off the beach. He had had an amazing week. All week we have been shooting the new Strike V3 for F1. Kali, what do you think of that wing? Oh, it's amazing. It's so light, so performing. We had a really, really good uh, testing this, this week. And we even decided to use them on the contest because it's so much better. <laughs> yeah, we, we've had a really fun week. We've been, you know, you've been here. You're a three-time world champion windsurfer. You, you're very familiar with Ponta Prieta and Cabo Verde in general. And it's just been so nice of you and Mizu, Fernando from Brazil also, to kind of, you know, teach Christopher about Cabo Verde and show him around. Like, tell me about your history here. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I, I was just checking. Like, I've been here 18 years ago for the first time for competition, you know, back uh, with the first windsurf comp. And this place is really a special, unique place, you know, it's such a perfect point break uh, and offshore winds and was really, I think it was almost a breakthrough to windsurfing. It made a mark on my career because I could really show windsurf wave right the way I was seeing always, you know, at home where I was riding. Uh, the tour was mostly in Europe and more onshore places and I couldn't really ride the way I like to ride. And here I was finally able to make it what I was watching for the future of windsurfing, you know. And uh, and now we are here again for wing foiling, you know. And I got all excited when they said this event was going to happen here. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we bumped into each other for the first time in Taiba, Brazil last year. And, you know, you introduced yourself and I heard some of the background. And, you know, you ride for F1 as well as my son Christopher. And when I saw you in Taiba, I was like, oh my gosh, this guy has so much style in the waves. So it, it was so cool to meet you there. And then now we're roommates. 
Yes, exactly. It was a surprise when I mean, we got the, in the middle of the night and opened to see you guys there in the room. Super cool. And uh, Chris is an inspiration for me. Like, of course, I love wave riding, but I do like uh, to learn the freestyle tricks and I keep training them. Of course, I will never be able to reach these guys, but it's amazing the level that they're taking, you know, like freestyle. And hopefully, like places like this in the future, we'll be able to implement uh, freestyle tricks into this wave ride and we'll look so progressive and insane, you know. I think uh, the first days here, we were even wondering if we were gonna be able to ride this wave. And then I think by now we know that we are totally capable of shredding the wave. I've seen some guys really committed and deep and making tricks already. So I'm sure like we just plant that small seed that will make it into a big tree coming in the future, you know? Yeah, it seems like Cabo Verde has, even back on the windsurfing days, when we, when we talk about someone like Josh Angulo, where it was kind of this like historical event that people still talk about that, that last contest. And I, I feel like we're kind of seeing that with this, with wing foiling. Like we've been talking about it all morning where, you know, no one knew if we were going to be able to go here. And it kind of took some of the veterans like you and Mizu from Brazil also and the senior guys to say, no, we don't want to go to Kite Beach. It's going to be bad for the sport. It, they, we don't need to show mushy waves with no consequences. That the, the level is high enough that we can ride Punta. And it's they, you guys have all proven. And now we're watching Mona White from Hawaii who is shredding right now. Like, it's, it's amazing. Exactly. I mean, uh, wing foiling for sure. I think this is what's the most attractive, that any conditions can be good, you know. That's why in the last uh, years, I've been so addicted to wing foiling because where I live now, it's much less radical, the waves. So for wing foiling, it's perfect. And I can any day, even if it's small and a bit mushy and still super fun, I feel like I'm riding a perfect point break, you know. So that's the beauty of foiling. But I think it's good as well that we can maybe break this image that we can only go on fat, mushy waves and we cannot ride a hollow, nice wave. And that's what I think uh, this place was capable to make, you know. To, to make us believe that we can really bring to a much higher level of wave riding and commitment. Yeah, I mean, yesterday I was a bit disappointed to see you eliminated, and I, I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way, but it, it was very important because at dinner in the evening you were a real role model for the younger riders, where you weren't complaining, you weren't upset, or you at least weren't showing it. But, you know, you just said to the boys, like, why don't you tell me? Yeah, I mean, it's part of the game, yeah, win and lose, this is a consequence and I was really happy actually with my performance, uh, uh, what I wanted to show, you know, like I really see carving, I really like flow, connecting and speed all the time and I was able to do this, I really love the new foil, just got it like two days basically before the event really I was getting used to the skate uh, 650. Never rode such a small foil, but with this wave that has so much energy and speed, it's necessary so you can have control and speed and also to allow you to be deep because if you don't have enough speed, you cannot be deep because otherwise you'll be late for the next session, you know. And uh, so I was super happy and dialed with my gear. That's why I was kind of frustrated because I was so confident with my equipment that I wanted to perform well, you know. and. And I did what I could do, but Julien, I guess he did uh, even better and, and he probably made it more what the judges want to see because apparently they were looking more for the hollow part of the wave and a bit more commitment on that part and, and I was maybe mo doing a bit more carvey flow. So, you know, this is just the beginning. So I'm sure there will be many, many things to learn from, from this event and to improve even on judgment, on criteria that we want to see and how we want to push the future, that's what's so important on this event, is to define how we want to push waves, wave uh, uh, wing foiling, you know? Because if this is meant to be a pure wave riding contest, so these criteria need to be very clear. What is actually pure wave riding? What is the hardest thing to do, you know? Is it really to attack the leap or to maintain your speed all the time, the flow? So of course it's a mix of things and there is different visions. That's why it's so beautiful, you know. We have Carpenter coming from SUP with super flow and Clement, you know, with this flow background surf. We have guys coming from sailing that have a, a wind, wind surfing like Zane that have more power, you know, attack. So I'm sure there will be a many mix of visions and we're gonna 
along the years probably make this mix and make the best choices possible for the sport to look the best, you know? I mean, I think you said it there that it. I'm pretty excited that we have Benoit in it because we discussed earlier, like, he's probably got 10 buddies that he competes with back in stand-up paddling, etc., that are going like, man, I should have gone to that exactly. event. Benoit's in the semifinals and is in basically the catbird seat to win it. Zane's the same way. He's got 10 friends back on Maui. I know I'm talking about you, Cash. I'm talking about you, Mateo, where you guys should have come to this event. Yeah. I want more variety of riders on these. I, I know the U.S. can do better than one or two. We're stoked to have Muna here. She is out there right now. Her and Elena got some, or um, excuse me, Julia got some really good bombs out there. Um, uh, right now we've got Elena Moreno and we have Flora. Um, Flora from France just switched to slingshot. So let's see what these ladies have. But Cali, back to the growing the tour. Um, what what do you think are some of the spots that we could potentially explore winging on the, the wave spots? I really, uh, literally any place, man. That's the beauty of winging. Like you can go to any place. It can be like a mushy, tiny wave and we're going to still be riding and shredding to a place like this that we thought was not possible you know all right and we're gonna go to a recap of that last women's heat I'm here with Cowley Móvel. Estamos ligados. All right, we are back live here. We have Elena Moreno and Flora Azur from France. So let's see how these ladies doing. Red flag is still in the sky. They should be starting any second. I'm here with Kali Said from Brazil. Uh, I've had the pleasure of getting to know Kali all week. We were roommates. Um, he and Mizu came from Brazil. Both of these guys have very high-level surf game. Cali, three-time world windsurfing champion. We've been walking around town in the evening. People are recognizing him, taking pictures with him. Cali, um, tell me more about your favorite. What would be your favorite spot in Cabo Verde? Uh, the spots in the north are also amazing. You know? I mean, this island, everywhere you go, there is a perfect wave. It's really incredible. Just depending on the direction of the swell, you can just go around and you find a good spot, you know. But uh, my favorite spot uh, back in the day was Alibaba. This wave is just so offshore and perfect, clean, fast. It was amazing. We even had a really good wing session one day over there. And also around the corner, Coral Jew it was huge. A lot of guys got like some good sessions there. It was a bit sketchy. It's like a, you can get really solid. Not the jaws, but solid size, heavy, a lot of speed. I think. Uh, this place it can give you just uh, so much conditions to train and to practice wave riding and you can be the same day on this side training um, starboard tech and then you just in 10 minutes you're on the other side and you can train port tech you know so it's really incredible yeah Abu Dhabi was was terrifying Alibaba Alibaba excuse me was terrifying and you know I'm just an average wing foiler I'm not a pro <laughs> like you and Mizu and Christopher and, and Ugo and, you know, I get bored watching all day, so finally I go out there and flail around and shoulder hop a little bit, but still, it's it's pretty terrifying. So here uh, we're watching Flora on a good one. Flora was out all week at Alibaba as well, and she was cutting her teeth for sure, getting better and better in the surf. Flora's from France. She absolutely rips. Um, she has her own event. Uh, it's called the Roca Cup, and she puts it on, and it's a really fun event, and, and it's a really cool thing. It's coming up pretty soon. It's usually around Le Cat. But Flora from France on the slingshot looking really good. Um, she's up against Elena. It's still red flag in the sky. I'm not sure 
if we're on a bit of a break for conditions, but right now the athletes just getting in some training. Um, I'm here with with my friend Cowley. Um, Cowley, we got to test the new Strike V3 all week from F1. What what did you think of that wing? Oh, uh, that wing is really a big improvement. I think we made from last year already. You know, like. Uh, the stiffness, the weight, and just performing so was so much better that uh, we even we couldn't hold to compete already in the event. You know, like we were supposed to actually just use for the shoot, but we all in the end we end up uh, getting so used to it that we wanted to have it on the competition. And also, I was very impressed with the performance of the new foils, the skates which uh, I know they were working on already for some time on it, but uh, I think they're finally releasing now and I got the chance to try them on the shoot. And I was really psyched like how performing for these waves they are because they're so easy to actually like change direction and you've been able to break the line. And at the same time with so much speed, you know, because of the high aspect, so you had a lot of lift as well. and. And it was like I could ride a foil 650, and I I never ride rode a, such a small foil, you know. So I think uh, they they do a really amazing job, you know. Like Rafael, I know he's super into the development and testing, and and really that's the only way to make it better gear, you know. If you spend time in the water and try things, you know. Yeah, Rafael and his son Julian are so hardcore on the testing side. Like, these guys never stop. They're always tweaking things to make it better. They're always so excited about their new designs that have come out. And, and the Strike V3s definitely are not disappointing. Kelly, let's talk about some of our viewers at home who may be considering getting into winging. You know, you're a three-time world champion windsurfer. I know you've got a huge fan base that's kind of some of them probably still scratching their heads deciding if they should try winging um i mean i'm an ex windsurfer for 20 years and love windsurfing but winging is just so much easier so what would you suggest for people to, to you know start out on the wing side yeah i mean i have a school back in brazil in the north of brazil in São miguel do gostoso and it's amazing like our strongest uh back in the day was a lot of uh, windsurf rentals and the school then it started to really roll into kite surfing classes a lot. And now more and more we get like this search for wing foiling. A lot of windsurfers are also starting to wing foil. And as you say, like the possibilities on the conditions, it's so much uh, less, um, you, don't, you don't need that much of uh, radical conditions to be fun, you know? So any smaller wave days, lighter wind days, any day you are flowing and you're flying around and you're moving fast. And that's the beauty of this sport, you know. And that's what made me so attracted to it as well, you know. Like now, it's been almost two years as I'm living up north in Brazil and the waves are much smaller than the south where I come from. So I've been really focused on wing foiling, you know, like the freestyle tricks and of course the wave riding. Yeah, there is something about winging. It requires so much less wind, and it's just so gentle on your body. Yeah. So, when when people first start, like my description is, you know, I come from a, you know, a love of the snow as much as the water. But it's like being in perfect powder all the time. Is is the description of the foil exactly. for me? The f you know, flying. Yeah, you have no, yeah. no attrit, no no contact. So it's just a unique feeling. Yeah. Yeah. When the when you being first get that feeling of when the boards becomes unstuck I would say from the water and you just are dragging yeah, that foil glides, yeah. it's just insane it it to me it kind of felt like the first time I got in the foot straps and the harness lines correctly and really planed windsurfing yes I mean it, it's it's so hard to compare especially for me you know I don't want to say about windsurfing bad things because I really love windsurfing and, and especially when I come back to a place like Punta Preta you know which to me it's still like windsurfing, I look this wave and it's made for windsurfing, you know what I mean? But of course, um, uh, in general conditions all over the world, when you go around and it's not so epic, it's not such a perfect wave, the wind's a bit onshore or whatever, you know, conditions that you don't really get uh, that much performing on windsurfing and then wing foiling comes in like perfectly, you know. Low. So I think wing uh, really it, it ma makes matches the most possible conditions all around you know so and the compact gear is also amazing you know you have like with two wings 
one board, uh, one foil, you can pretty much do everything, you know. I can't imagine what you traveled with in the past. Oh, there was How many, many masts and booms and feet and different race boards and wave boards and light wind boards. And I remember in Maui, like when I was always going for a long time for developing, make my boards for the season and, you know, like test stuff. And I would come back one year, I think we had like almost 20 bags, man, <laughs> to come back home. So it was a lot, a lot of equipment. So now, you know, I can go to any wing foil competition with one small board bag, you know, like the size of a kite bag. So it's pretty amazing for me, you know, used to carry so much stuff and now you can travel so light. It's a big uh, game changer. I know, getting rid of the mass and the <laughs> yeah. booms and breaking them. And I remember fiber spar and remember all that fun stuff. <laughs> like, I, uh, I did windsurf recently in Silva Plana at the last event. I tried wind foiling and I remember balls was there. And, and, you know, he knows I'm an ex-windsurfer, and he goes, take my freestyle windfoiling kit. And I looked at it, and it was like an 80-liter board and all this fancy, you know, sab foil stuff. Uh -huh. And I was like, eh, I don't know if that's a good idea. So I rented the biggest fanatic foil and board and sail I could and went out, and I, I didn't even make it 10 minutes. I was so tired. <laughs> I got in the harness line, luckily, and just flailed a bit and and i did foil back and forth across the lake two or three times and then it was just like yeah nope. I, I i think you need the correct condition you yeah. know if the wind is really blowing and you have the the right condition windsurfing is just amazing you know it's, it has that unique feeling of course you know but uh i think foiling is still it it, it matches so many more conditions than usual you know yeah, I mean, I agree. I, I still would like to windsurf, and like I, I was mentioning earlier, we do have a bet going. We're going to see if Junior can, Christopher, can windsurf in a 24-hour period. <laughs> he doesn't have to be in the, the harness line, but he has to be in the foot straps, and he has to be planing. Planing? Wow. So I, I guess he can do. In 24 hours, I guess you that would be two sessions or three sessions, right? So you basically, you have two days. So... I don't know. We'll see. We're, we're gathering up to see who wants to take what side of what. But right now, we are still going. We have the sets coming through still, so this should be a, a pretty good day. It looks like we're trying to finish out today, Callie, because it looks like the wind gods are going to shut things down tomorrow. Um, in the men's final, let's talk about this. We have Wesley Brito versus your teammate, Ugo Marin. What what do you see there? Wow, that would be a tough battle, man. Like two different styles. You know, Ugo, it's really like a light flow surfer, you know, like uh, I think he, he has big game here. So I think it would be, it would be hard. And Wesley, of course, has this knowledge, used to also sail this type of waves all the time, probably back home. And uh, he has also their tricks mixed, so it will be interesting to see what the judges really want to see, you know. Looking towards more like riding, carving, or more the mix with tricks as well, you know, and air stuff, you know. Yeah, uh, you nailed it on that. We're still so young on the Pure Wave Tour. I feel like kind of yesterday, like I said... I picked you as my favorite, especially after seeding round of a 15, and you're just all week shredding on everything I saw you on. Um, but it looks like maybe they want to see more risk, as in like airs closer to the pockets, or I don't know. We're going to find out, and like I said, this is the first stop. And it, it's interesting because, Callie, on the freestyle side, we kind of have some, you know, there's some favorites already. There's, there's, five guys that can win yeah i feel like at this event with 32 riders that man 25 guys can win this yeah yeah wave riding is so more um subjective and also you need to select the right way remember carpenter like on the qualification he he selected the wrong gear he ended up just taking one small wave in the end of the heat he basically did not perform on that you know and then in the end now he's on the finals you know so it's really, you got to play smart, you know, it's not like just go crazy, throw tricks, because if you get washed right at the beginning of the heat and you end up in the rocks, the game is over, you know. So it's very, very important that uh, you find that mix of playing smart, that, uh, of course, uh, take the chance to attack and, and to be radical, and but uh, as well, as well, you need to just... Uh, 
be smart, you know, like here is, is a place that doesn't allow you room to make mistakes. Huh? Wow, look at this set. Ooh, it's There's bombing. There's a few bombs coming I through. Think, I think it's the best, huh? the finals would be amazing. Wow. It's not working out? Yeah, not it looks like we are going to be rerunning this heat. There were some issues with the flag, so we are going to go back and rerun with Elena Moreno and Flora Artisner from France, the slingshot rider. So sometimes, Cali, this is the way competition goes. Um, you know, we have technical issues. We are, you know, like we've said earlier in the broadcast, you know, we are not like we're just plugging into household power here. We have run utilities hundreds of yards out to the front of, of Punta Preta here. We built a little city for our judges and our booth here. So sometimes it's the judges just have to rerun heats. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes uh, that's the way it goes. That's not what we want to, but it happens sometimes, yeah? Yeah. They and need to be fair if there's something wrong. Yeah, that's what we really care about at the end of the day is, you know, a, an athlete can protest a score or maybe a trick is missed or a wave score is missed. And a lot of times that's what they'll do. They'll, they'll rerun that particular heat. So, you know, it doesn't happen very often, but it does. So what we're going to do is we are rerunning with Elena Moreno from Spain and Flora Artisner. So red flag up. We are less than two minutes away from the restart of this. Callie, I just want to say thank you for dropping by. I know you've got some work to do. You're going to go shoot more of the, the Strike V3 for F1. Exactly. Um, I'm sure you're frothing to get out there in the sets as well, but it's a pleasure having you. You've got a great attitude, man, and you're, you're a real inspiration for some of the younger riders out there. So keep it up, and, man, we appreciate you. Thank you, and congrats for your send, man. He's ripping. Oh, thank He's you very much. He's representing the future of our sport. Yep. <laughs> All right, cheers, man. Yeah, bye. Okay, so we're ready for the countdown. It's coming in 10 seconds. Okay, four, three, two, one. Ah, uh, that was brilliant there from Chris and Cowley there. Really good to get the uh, sort of the inside knowledge and just Cowley's thoughts there on just, you know, what it is to be an athlete and, you know, be it here at Cape Verde and, uh, you know, everything else that they discuss. I mean, brilliant, brilliant stuff. So thank you very much to those two riders. Uh, sorry, two guys in the booth there, Chris and Cowley. I think uh, he's off now to go to head over to Kite Beach. Have a little shred up in there. Chris has just popped down out of the booth before we get busy with the final sort of rounds of this competition because we're sort of coming closer and closer as the heats go by towards the finals but up next at the moment as mentioned we do have to have a little replay of this heat a few technical issues with the flags so elena moreno coming out of spain flora Artner out of france your current free fly slalom champion is on the water riding for slingshot and there we have on your screen alina so here we go We've got some time on the ticker and at the moment, it's a little bit quiet out there, but I can see Flora here on the inside. So let's see if we can get... There we go. Thank you very much. As Flora is here carving around. This is her first event as a Slingshot team member. And just moving and grooving around there. One, two, stepping around on the board. And just go, bringing this one home all the way in front of the judges. Pumping out. And around... She goes, well, Alina, again, trying to find a bomb out the back, but just missing this set, but looking at catching the back end of it. This wave starting off quite small, but actually as it's hitting that reef, opening up quite nicely here for the Spaniard. 
up and down you can see there just keeping everything together letting that wing loose out the back keeping on the foil and just coming out before getting too close to the rocks as both riders now in a similar position and will fight for priority Alina still running switch you'll probably see her swap that stance round very shortly but replay is showing that last wave keeping it together nicely there pretty much on the fall from start to finish that board didn't tap down onto the water at all and you can see there riding for Cabrina now liking what she sees turning around this set's not over but not being able to continue that momentum and what you find with the wing foil athletes you know if they do come off that foil it's very you know if you're catching a wave and you do a little bit of a u-turn just like Alina did there but if you come off that foil you're going to miss the wave so it's really really crucial critical that these riders keep the momentum they stay on that foil because at the moment Flora is on a nice looking wave coming into this section here flatter part of the wave carving around going picking up the speed judges want to probably see a little bit more variety when it comes a little bit more up and down swooping around getting a bit shallow there and going down before the wave closed out coming off the fall but nevertheless it's still okay however big crashing set coming in it might be that Flora gets wiping out here yes that is a nasty wipeout we do hope she's okay just getting caught up as waves are coming in there's another one to follow she's probably seen you can see there grabbing some kits moving everything out of the way as another big wave crashes down on Flora off goes the board she looks okay Yep, coming to her feet. Board currently on the rocks. Just yet another wave though. Flora just getting eaten and munched up in the shore break there. As is the board. A very nice wave there ridden from Flora. But this is going to be costly on the time. However, looking at that clock, she's got plenty of time left. And we see quite a few riders... Flora had taken an interesting approach here, keeping hold of the wing. We do see quite a few riders when they get caught up on the inside there and they do come off their board. They actually just let that leash off and just let the wing make its way naturally back in towards the rocks. And if it tears, it tears. But Flora wanted to keep a hold of it. And I can see on the left-hand side, she is starting to make her way out. And a few of the crowd on the beach just helping gather that board together. 12 minutes on the clock, Flora 5.40, Alina Moreno 5.73, so just in the lead. As there you can see the shot. That wing looks to all still be in one piece, which is good news. And just while we wait and, so and wait for Flora to get out of the rocks and back into the water, we're going to head down with Joe on the beach, who is with one of our riders for a quick interview. Uh, we do apologise for that there. Just a little bit of a technical issue when it comes to the sound, but we're just going to sort that out now because that is the sort of interview we want. We want to hear the words from Bo there. But on your screen, current heat leader. Oh, no, we've had the old switch around. Flora has actually bumped her way into first position. Must have been from that wave that she did crash out on. So judges appreciating the commitment and the confidence going into that wave. So Flora now in first position. Elena Moreno in second, but only the one wave for Elena on your screen there. She's currently sitting in second place. be really interesting. Very much looking forward to this interview coming up with Bo because she was catching some big waves out here at Punta Preta. And here we go, down on the beach with Bo, joining Joe Siasta. <laughs> Hablando. 
All right, welcome back, everybody. Looks like we had a little tech issue there. We do apologize. Bo, one more time, welcome to Punta Preda. Just made it in all the way from New Zealand. I know you did a lot of traveling. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of traveling, but it was definitely worth it. Uh, Cape Verde is amazing. We've had a few really amazing wave sessions. I've definitely caught the biggest wing foil waves in my life with some guys out there who are really used to the waves. I was a bit uh, on the shoulder, but it was amazing, yeah. <laughs> Bo, you're no more for your freestyle side and you know this is the first time that all of us have come to a 100% surfing wave. You know, for you guys and girls back at home, this is the first time the wave discipline is being introduced. There's a lot of athletes from all different sports. I think it's really cool because at the beginning, everybody was a little skeptical. Everybody was a little, oof, is this possible? But you girls are ripping out there. Uh, yeah, I was a little bit nervous, but I did a little warm-up session this morning and it was so fun that all the nerves disappeared. Yeah, it's a beautiful wave and you're just out there with two, one other person, so actually it's uh, perfect. <laughs> it's uh, so much fun, it's perfect. <laughs> I mean, that's any excuse to have Punta Preta by yourself. Just knock yourself in the competition. You're going to be out. Coming up next, you're going to be going into the semi-finals here of the competition. Congratulations. Yeah. And you are out there with Muna White. We saw Muna. She took the kiting coming in on the wing, surf, wing foiling as well. What do you think of the Hawaiian rider? Uh, well, she's definitely a legend. She's riding so well, and I think she's pretty used to the big waves. So uh, it's going to be fun. It's cool to be in the heat with her, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, I'm going to let you go do it. So, Bo, congratulations. See you out there. Liam, back to you. Ah, uh, look at the smile there on Bo's face. So good to see. Really is a great character on the tour when it comes, you know, to just all of the discipline. She keeps busy. She's in the freestyle. She does the slalom, and now here in the waves as well, riding out from the Netherlands for North kiteboarding. So really, really good to see her. And I can just see it's preparation time because next she's going to be facing Muna White, as Joe mentioned. Now that is a rider that you cannot take anything away from. Give Muna an inch and she'll take a mile. So that is a heat that is going to be coming up soon. But at the moment, we are in a quarterfinal. Heat number three, Alina Moreno from Spain, just snatching back the win now as she has scored a 6.37 for her last wave. Flora currently in second position, and I can see just on the far left-hand side as we enter the final seven and a half minutes, Flora working her way back out towards competition area after getting recently taken out by that last wave. So has definitely lost about five minutes on the clock with that issue. And that just goes to show you, you know, why we have the heat length, heat length that we have super super important that we give enough time for these riders to catch enough waves but also if something does go wrong and they you know they come off their board they lose their kit they've got enough time to get back in the mix get back out there catch some more waves and at the moment flora just on the far left hand side working her way out but on your screen there with the red wing that is your current heat leader Uh, really good now to see that our riders, both of them, are making their way into where they need to be. There we have it. There's Flora with that slingshot gear, just making her way out back to catch some more waves before this heat does finish. Because, you know, although she did have that slight issue where she got munched up in the break, in the shallows here, both riders have, you know, only caught two waves. So although Flora hasn't technically been on the water for the last five minutes, Alina, it's been a little bit quiet out there for her. And she's only been able to get, you know, the two waves. So both riders now sitting on two scores. And let's have a little look how those scores are made up. Because at the moment, first position, Alina Moreno from Spain, 5.73 is her lowest wave score. And a top one of a 6.37. So nice scores there on the scorecard. That combines a total of 12.10. 
And then Flora coming out of France with the 3.67. That's her lowest score, so we'll want to improve on that. And we know Flora can, very talented in the waves. Her top score, 5.40. So both of Flora's scores lower than heat winners, Alina. But take nothing away from Flora. Very, very good in the waves. We saw last year in November out in Taiba, Brazil, when we had the, uh, the surf freestyle, there was a big element of wave that combined the score and she ended up taking the title home. So here we go on the screen now, dropping into a wave after coming out of that last crash, but again, deciding, nope, don't fancy that one. I think for Flora now, it's just getting a little cheeky wave under the belt, getting some confidence back in the boots, heading back out and then waiting for that next set wave because ladies and gentlemen, there is still just over four minutes left in this heat. So plenty of time for our riders to you know, get amongst mother nature out there when those waves do start filtering through and you can see, unfortunately, just coming off the foil, but is in a much better position than where she was. He'd rather come off the foil out in the water than, you know, coming off in the shore break. Heat winner on your screen right now. A few little lumps out the back there. Will we see some more set waves come our way? Will we see some increase on the scores? Okay, so here we have another wave being caught for Melina here. This one's looking really nice, actually, as it's straight in front of the booth now. Good scores on the boards. Looking to improve on that 5.73. A little bit of a pop air there. Nicely done as he gets back onto the foil. Judges will definitely like the look of that because that wave is definitely similar to the 6.37 previously scored. So I'd like to see if there's going to be an increase on that 5.73. Personally, I think it is going to be. It's looking like a very nice score as scores are starting to slowly filter through and that's the advantage we have up here in the booth we just have you know a little bit of a inside knowledge but we always wait for the correct score to drop before we announce and you can see here on the replay a lovely choice of wave here you know myself and joe we've always been speaking about you know wave selection it's a big big factor especially at this spot you know, for the ladies out on the water at the moment, you know, they haven't had a lot of time to necessarily train because every time at Ponte Preta, you know, when we compete here, we actually close the spot off. So, you know, the people on the water are actually, you know, it's competition. So they've got to train when they can and find the little slots between the heats or, you know, before and after when the sun rises and the sun sets. And Flora here just backing out of that one, not one of the longer ways, is definitely going to need to find something a little bit more because... You know, scores are starting to come through for our current heat leader there on your screen. And it's looking like the increase is going to be made on that 12.10. A great little, well, I say little, a great wave there, actually, with that little pop as we enter just above a minute. So is Mother Nature going to throw Flora a bone so she can get on another wave? Can she handle the heat? Because if she can't, she's got to get out of the kitchen. Here is the wave from Flora. Breaking those eggs, making those omelettes. 50 seconds to go, and there you have it. I was correct. Just look at that. I mean, what a guess from myself. 13.90. That wave there, 7.53. So big, big score. And we could see an upset here because our current free fly slalom champion is on the verge of being knocked out of the competition. A set is going to be coming our way shortly. I can see out of the corner of my eye something nice coming. There's something nice coming. And this could be the buzzer beater. This 
has to be the buzzer beater in fact 15 seconds on the clock here it is the wave shaping up starting to form a nice face as Flora's getting that foil sliced and diced on the wave but a very interesting decision there to come out of that one honestly I reckon that that fall that crash at the start of the heat is still in the back of Flora's mind because you know not committing to that wave there and I'm going to say I do think that Alina Moreno is going to take the win. But a score still to drop for Flora. We'll have to wait and see. But I'm going to keep you guys and girls at home just on the edge of your seat, on your toes, while we have a little recap of that hate heat. Welcome back everybody, yet another good heat out there on the water where we're just waiting for results. In between Elena and Florida, who is it going to be making their way through to the semi-finals? We will soon find out. Now out there on the water, we are going to have Sofia Machetti. She is going up against Nia Suadias. There you can see the Italian versus the Spaniards. Nia Suadias coming out of New Zealand with a win. Sofia Machetti, a very talented rider. She has the freestyle. Let's see how she goes out there in the waves as we are just about to get going. That is Sofia over there on the left. And Nia Suadias, I can see out of the corner of my booth, just about to jump in on a wave as we go in to this heat, the final quarter final of the women who is going to be meeting the winner in between Elena and Flora. But Sofia taking off on an outside bomb. Look at that one. That is the first time we've seen someone go over that side. But hey, it's all about mixing it up out there. All the way over, all the way along. But it looks like guys just starting to get themselves ready and chill. And we are going to be going back to the water. All right, it looked like Nia Suadias was trying to get on a wave here. Nia, she had a very nice first heat in that round number one and rounds number two. And now we're looking to see in this quarterfinal if she's going to be making it through to the semi. So, Nia Suadias, this is a nice set wave. So it looks like the wave are going to be starting to come back towards us. Up and over and cruising and chilling all the way along. Nice long ride here from Nia. Coming close to the reef. For some people here on the stream, you guys have been asking why they're kicking out at the end. Well, the reason for that is because foil, foil versus rock does not win. So, unfortunately, there is a bit of a reef here right in front. And if they get too close, there are stones underneath there that they can kind of hit and they can kind of touch. But 
you have to navigate your way through there to get past it. So here we go. Here we go. Sofia Machete is going to be going up against Nia Suadiez. Hold on to your hats. It is the last quarterfinal of the women. All right, well, there we can see uh, Sofia Machetti there on the north wing, making her way back out, if I'm not mistaken. That does look like the Nova. And we can see Nia Swadias out there on the Duotone new unit with a little bit of the Eludo. And all right, starting to get a little groove on here, grabbing the rail. Nia Suadia is picking up already two nice waves. She has a 4.97 for that first one. And here we can see her making all the way down, all the way along, and picking off the good set waves here, the Spaniard. Just under 13 minutes to go. Wing Foiling World Tour, the GWA Wing Foil World Tour here. Punta Preta Cape Verde, the first time we've had a 100% wave discipline. And here we, it looks like the Italian rider is going to be dropping in. Here we have Sofia Machetti. This is a nice bomb. She's out on the shoulder but starting to get it along. Here she goes. Riding it all to the inside. So Sofia there on a bit of a bomb, but was quite far out in this into the shoulder. And here we can see Ania Suadias looking like she's going to have a big score coming in for that last one. There we can see a couple of replays of both of these athletes. Nia going down all the way on the left-hand side, but she is out of the impact zone. Another day of wing foiling down here. Punta Preta. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. As we are here in the beautiful island of Cape Verde, the island of Sao. And it looks like very shortly we're going to be able to get an interview down there on the beach. As I can see, the boys just starting to set up. We are not even halfway through this heat. And it looks like Nia is sitting with an 11. So, yeah, there we can see Nia Suadia. She's also, she is definitely out there on the new unit. D-Lab from Duotone Wingfoil. And looking very snazzy, I must say. She also is having a little talk to us. She's also on the Sky Surf Team Edition, the 4.6. She really likes that one in the waves. And yeah, no, it looks like it is working for her so far. What are we going to be seeing from this young lady? She's one of the most talented freestylers. She did take the win over there in New Zealand. Now it looks like she is in contentions at the moment to be making her way through to the semi-finals. That first semi-final roundup already is in between. Bowen van der Linden from the Netherlands and Munawai from Hawaii. That is going to be semi-final number one. Big semi-final there. And then it's going to be 
in semi-final number two, we're going to be seeing Elena Moreno is going to be going up either against Nia Suadias or Sofia Machetti. Nia dropping in one more time and she is looking very good out there. Grabbing the, way, the rail on the way down, going a little, get starting to risk it a little bit more, going closer to the impact zone. Now she's getting close to the reef. This is where we want to see her pop out. There she goes. And further enough away from the impact zone for her to be okay. Nia Suadias coming out of Spain. So just going to have a little recap on the scores. I mean, Nia already has a 7.13 and a 6.27. Two big scores giving her the first position. Sofia, we saw her take off on a really nice outside bomb. But she wasn't quite able to hold it together. And we are just waiting. As I can see that down there on the beach... We have Chris, our beach commentator, together with Elena Moreno. I'm here with Elena Moreno. She is from the Canary Islands, and she just had an epic battle with Flora Ortiz from France. I cannot believe it, Elena. You came out of nowhere and took out Flora. Tell us how that heat went. Uh, I can't believe, actually. I just came here to, to have fun and to have nice wave. Uh, so I'm I'm glad to be here. I'm enjoying enjoying the sessions and it's in, it's epic here. So I just have fun. I I, I cannot realize I I won the hit. <laughs> so you do realize you knocked out one of the tour favorites, Flora. Flora is an amazing wing foil athlete, and you guys just went absolutely toe for two. I saw you on an absolute bomb, like basically almost getting barreled. Walk us through a couple of those sad waves. I, I, I know uh, Flora is su super good. I have been, have been watching her on the TV from my sofa. So I know I, I had to give everything and, and have fun on the heat. And, and that's what, what happened. So. <laughs> well, so at, at one of the end of those, the whole beach was screaming. You basically were absolutely sending it down the line in the most critical section. And what happened next? You decided to give us a trick, huh? I, I couldn't even think it. I just was surfing and, and having fun. And I, I know it was a, a hard hit, so I say, okay, I have to try everything. If I go home, I, it's, I had to try. So I, it was funny, I enjoy, and I'm glad to be here. So, so what Elena is referring to is in one of the most critical sections, right over the reef, in probably six inches of water, she does a big air at the end. <laughs> I mean, and you landed it. What's going through your mind? Uh, nothing. <laughs> I, I have to see the the, the video because I, I can't believe it yet. So. <laughs> well, that was amazing. I know you ride for Cabrina, Spain. Is there anyone else you want to thank? I want to thank uh, Cabrina and also for sure my, my local shop, Magma, that they have held, you, held me from my very early steps. So I'm, I'm very glad for that and also to my family. Well, Elena, it looks like... From what I understand, you're going to be going against whoever wins this next one. So you better get ready. And there we go. <laughs> Cheers. Congratulations on an epic win against Flora from France. I was definitely not expecting it. And Morena put the cap on it with a huge rail or air at the end. Just an amazing display. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Back to you, boys. Thank you, Chris. Felicidades, Elena. Si, señorita. Eso es. Eso es. Very nice, Elena. Making her way through. And now, the other Spaniard, Nia Suadias, is racking up the scores. A little bit over five minutes to go. And she's got a 7.13 and a 6.87. Big scores out there. 14.0 total. And then Sofia Machetti, she is still trying to get a groove on. Still plenty of, there is definitely plenty of time to be able to get some more sets coming our way. But I tell you what, it looks like we have some big waves hacking and stacking to the horizon. Let's see if both of these athletes can land one.
All right, Nia dropping in on an absolute bomb here. Now we are talking. Look at this one. Oh, getting absolutely rinsed by that wave. And there is a set wave coming behind her. So she has released her wing. She's looking for her board. And she is getting worked here on the inside. Here we can see Sophia. She's going to be dropping in, and Nia has released all her for her equipment. There goes Joe, the promoter. Watch those ankles, my friend. That wing is coming through. Mia, you only have three minutes left. You're good. Take a victory swim in. All right, well, Nia here on the inside. Oh, it looks like she's releasing everything. She's released her helmet, released her wing, released her board. She starts to take her lycra off. I don't know what is happening there. But Nia just giving up everything for that ride and well worth it because scores are looking like they are coming in 7.13 a 6.87 she is ripping out there and here we can see Sofia Maciati coming down on this roller and this is a very nice wave now getting better we saw it in the men as the girls got are starting to have a bit more confidence a bit more they're taking a little bit of a risk and start to make their way closer to that impact zone but you do have to be careful unless you want to be washed and dried through the rocks of Punta Preta let's have a little look at the wave where Nia gets absolutely rinsed down here in the critical i mean overhead for her it's probably about three to four foot swells coming in and we can see grabbing the rail here and this is where she starts to go down the line and you can see where that where the wave starts to hit the reef this is where you have to start to hit the night trucks and speed along but just going off the back there All right, so here we have Nia. She is going to be swimming all the way onto the inside to see if she can have enough opportunity of scoring. running out 25 seconds left so she obviously isn't going to be making it back out it looks like she still have a, has a leash on so i reckon she might have broken her leash punta preda taking a bite and digging in those teeth so it is going to be nia swadieth is going to be making it through to the semi-finals and a congratulations also to uh, sofia machetti we could see that she was getting her confidence starting to get some nice waves and that last one was a really good one great to see the girls throwing down here in cape verde for what's looking like the final day of competition as there's still plenty of sunlight the waves are there the wind are there and we are going to be starting off with semi-final number one of the women after we have a little look at the recaps of that last heat
TV Móvel. Estamos ligados. Cabo Verde offers an incredibly diverse landscape, from exhilarating nature exploration and water sports to beachside pampering and cultural immersion. The sunny islands are a beach lover's paradise with white sandy beaches, crystalline waters, and exciting water sports. The census islands call all nature enthusiasts and ecotourists. Mountainous peaks give way to lush valleys and surrealist volcanic landscapes where premium coffee and wine are produced. The Essence Islands are the cultural heart of Cabo Verde. Home to the two largest cities, visitors can explore the heritage sites while enjoying vibrant music, vivacious street life, and traditional food. Cabo Verde has it all. TV Móvel. Estamos ligados. And welcome back everybody as we are here getting ready for the semi-final number one of the women. There we have Bowen van der Linden and Muna White.
And hi everybody, Chris, welcome back to the booth. I saw you down there on the beach, Mike, getting a couple of interviews, even getting the riders to interview themselves. Mate, you've got it on. Well, I think it's really fun when you can engage the riders and get them to talk about what how their week has gone. Like, I just bumped into Hendrix and Me Too on the beach. First of all, oh, we got a really good set out the back. Oh, that's that's Muna White. She's from Oahu, and it's she has kind of come out of nowhere and is just absolutely oh. shredding a bomb, Joe. Yeah, all the way from the back, all the way around, all the way along, and we can see her going completely down the line on one of the bigger set waves and going all oh, here on the inside. Not the most vertical, but still going rail to rail. Keeping it easy, keeping it safe. Obviously, first wave of her heat, but that is going to be a very nice one for her as she has a 7.27 up there on the scorecards. Now, let's see what she's going to get for this one. Yeah, Muna had a wave earlier where right in front of the rocks, I'm sitting here with Hendrix and Me Too, and she's on the edge of overfoiling, but somehow manages to keep it together. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Me Too and Hendrix were, were cringing because they thought she was going to crash for sure. It, I mean, I'm so stoked to see the legend himself, Me Too. He came last week. They had an amazing all Cabo Verdean podium. He gets second place, and he just told me, Joe, he will wing foil next year. No. He'll do the competition. He's that stoked. Oh, I know a few people that just started trembling. Now, if a guy like Me Too starts to get involved, but getting involved, there we can see Bone van der Linden. Oh, down close to the rocks here, Chris. She is risking it on this one. Well, Bowen, you know, she was one of the favorites coming into this. Her and Nia and Flora. And, you know, what we just saw, Joe, is we just saw Flora get knocked out by the relative newcomer, Elena. She's from the Grand Canaries, the Cabrina rider, and she sent it. So Flora, the slingshot rider from France, is unfortunately out. And now we're looking at Muna White versus Bowen, and Bowen has got some work to do. Moon is putting up, I think, the highest score we've seen from the women with a 15.5 already. Yeah, 8.23 for that last wave. 8.23. And there we can see that is Bo on the north wing. One of the things that a lot of people have been asking, what size masks that the guys and girls are out there. We've seen a little bit of everything. I see mostly it looks like people out there on 75s. They're wondering about the, you know, wondering about the rocks, wondering how they're dodging it. You've been down on the shore. What's it look like, Chris? Yeah, most of these riders, really what their go-to mass length is 85 centimeters. That's what they like. That is the perfect spot from allowing it to maintain its stiffness. So the longer you go, the more flexy it gets. The advantage of having the longer mast is that you can you don't overfoil as easily. So most of these riders are on 85 centimeter mast. If they go down to a 75 or even a 65, it makes it so they can breach yeah. much easier. Yeah. But on the flip side, over the reef, they don't hit as easily. Oh, of course. So yeah, there you go. A little bit of inside as you guys and girls have been asking out there on the comments. We will try to be answering as many of those questions. We also said, I heard you guys wanting to ask a little bit of uh, maybe some techie videos. They are in the pipeline because if we finish the competition today, which it does look like we are going to with the conditions at hand, we will be having some lay days where we'll be throwing out some content. So make sure to follow us on all our social media platforms. Get the ground there with the GWA Wing Falling World Tour and you will be finding all of the golden gems. Muna White looking like she's picking off another wave. And let's not forget she knows this wave really well from the kiting and she is going right in the sweet spot wow it's just been so interesting how you know i watched the seating round and i, I had already made up my mind who was going to at least you know go deep in this mm. and flora's already out um Bo for sure was one of my favorites but Bo has a huge uphill battle right now joe she's sitting almost three full three and a half points behind or two and a half excuse me and Bo rips. 11.96 is a very high score. So we're seeing the replay of the North Rider from the Netherlands, Bo van der Linden. She is, you know, she has got some work to do, but what she really needs is I'm looking at her wave scores, and she needs two 
fresh scores. Yeah, you know, Muniz really put in the in the work in a, a medium eight and a medium seven. Bo has a high six and a medium five. So yeah, exactly what you're saying there, Chris. She has to get two set waves to be able to do that because to be able to score above a seven, it's got to be wow surfed and it has to be on one of the bigger sizes. Muna, one thing she's done very well is straight off the bat has locked in to two good set ways and let's not forget that coming up next we're going to have semi-final number two elena moreno who you just mentioned that took out flora and nia suadias nia she's known for her freestyle but i am very impressed of her in the ways because she was very skeptical at the beginning about here in punta preta but i mean she's one of the girls that is surfing the best yeah, the team from Tarifa, you know, <clears throat> I could see the nerves all week in her mm. and, and not just Nia, but all the riders. Like, can we handle Punta? Can we do this? Or should we just do Kite Beach, the safe way? And it's worked out really well. Not only are the women shredding Punta Preta, but they are going full gas, Joe. Yeah. We watched Nia. We watched Elena absolutely at the end in the most critical sections doing airs. I know, So not I know. only are they, like absolutely pushing the boundaries and the limits of what's possible winging in these new big waves is that they're sending errors at the end so the thing is we did see the duotone rider nia suardias from tarifa she did go down pretty hard mm. at the end of that mm. last round she popped her wing on the rocks um you know i hope that doesn't affect, affect her. her to the point because it looks like you know, she's going up against Elena, you know, who I just met. She's from the Grand Canaries. No one knows who she is. I expect she's going to get eliminated easily by Flora. But instead, she puts a beating on Flora. And basically, it's like she's out of nowhere. And I interviewed her, and she's just so stoked and happy. What she has is nothing to lose, Joe. Yeah, I mean, I the, you I always love an, on, an underdog at a competition, the Southpaw. I always love that person who comes out who nobody kind of knows, nobody's really heard of, and then just, you know, throws a spanner in the work and taking out Flora. That is a spanner if I've ever seen one. Yeah, I, and the thing with Flora was Flora went on the rocks early with the one really good wave score. But that's super challenging for these athletes because the other rider can win with two decent wave scores. So that was really, I was a little bit heartbroken when I saw Flora getting pounded early on. But, you know, the slingshot rider from France regrouped. She got her equipment back. She got in the water down at the beach. She paddled out, and she caught a few more waves. So she had her chances. She had some set waves come through. And the fact is, Elena just, she caught better waves. Yep, yeah, no, no, absolutely. She had a better way selection and took them and performed on them as we're just coming up on the final five minutes. You can see here, Muna White with the biggest scores in the competition so far. I mean, medium eight, medium seven. Is there anything this girl can't surf? Well, I'm really impressed with Muna. Um, I mean, number one, congratulations on winning the kite title last week. But she's from Oahu, and if you're from Oahu and you grow up in Hawaii, you have wave game. It's kind of a rite of passage. It, I don't think there's too many kids in Hawaii that aren't basically born in the surf and spend every second at the beach, starting out boogie boarding, body boarding, whatever they're doing, and they just shred on anything in the water. So we that's to be expected out of Muna. I didn't quite expect this absolute trouncing of Bo. I, I would think an 11.96 would hold up about anywhere in the competition, but she's she's getting smoked by Muna with a 15.5. Yeah, no, no, Muna has put in the groundwork, but it does look like, if I can just take, stick my head out of the window here, because, I mean, Chris, we have front row seats. I mean, these are court seats right here. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't get any better than this, Joe. Uh, you guys have finally got yourself dialed in on the live stream. That's why I came in this late in the game. I didn't want to deal with standing on the beach all day. We've got <laughs> shade. We've got a little couch. We even have some plants. So, you know, we're just vibing out here. We're watching our big screen. We're I'm, I'm, I'm watching Bo looking oh, like she's, she's not done yet. Oh, that is a bomb. Look at that. Bo's in a basically a double overhead wave. She is gonna try and get to this critical section i don't know if that's gonna be enough oh and she goes down straight line in that one freight train unfortunately not going rail to rail not getting the turns ain't gonna be the score she's looking for yeah joe that's one of the hard things for the athletes that they really have no idea how well they're doing 
And with this wave riding format, like they're, you know, one in, one out, basically. So it's not like you can watch your competitor out there. You don't know. You get a sense. But the reality is, is if I don't know if you could give a signal from your caddy or I don't even know what the rule book says, to be honest about it. But normally you get like, what, what things we've seen before is there's caddies on the beach and they're lifting up one hand or two, which is basically your first or your second. So, you know, you have to, you know, try and improve one of your waves or not in these wave conditions. You know, if the set is coming through, you wait it and you have time. If a set isn't there, you try and scavenge and scrape down on the bottom. But once again, Muna taking off and this one is opening up on the reef very nicely she is in that sweet spot again wave selection here from the hawaiian and now oh, oh going down oh. is that board going to stay did that board go oh. with the wave because then she might have a chance oh. no she still has it she still has the board and it looks like she is just going to make her way out of that dodge in the bullet a bazooka going down at that section of the competition. Yeah, Muna was in a really critical section here. Let's watch the replay and see. Oh, see, she just breached the rail of her foil. And it's for the viewers at home, what happens is when that thing cavitates or comes out of the water, it's just all haywire. Your board completely unweights itself and you're falling basically. So what she did is she touched the water, which then sucked the board down even more and she falls head over heels. Muna was really lucky and actually was in a position where mm. she didn't get swept over the white water. Yeah, that was very close. You could see where it did look like her board was going to go over. I think she might have even grabbed it just in time. But yeah, I mean... Muna's definitely grown up in a location where she's used to getting waves on her head coming out of Hawaii so she knows how to stay calm and get past those situations but good ride in there from her she is still solidly in the lead and once again I reckon we might be seeing another upset of the usual suspects here on the GWA yeah Joe it's just been wild even on the men's side where we keep having these these it's like we've totally upset the world order mm. like i guess we've just gotten or i've gotten used to watching and knowing and i i know who should usually beat who and what you know on the racing side as well and i kind of had some ideas in my head and it, they've been blown up like i'm totally shocked at how you know i can't believe Bo and flora are both going to be out yeah, just 20 seconds to go on this heat. And here, Bo is looking like she's going to try and take off on someone here on the inside. Is this going to be a buzzer beater? She needs to increase her scores by three and a bit points. This needs to be an absolute killer, an eight or a nine. So Bo, all the way on the inside, jumping off the back. That is not going to be enough. So ladies and gentlemen, making her way through into the grand finale for the second time in Cape Verde. In a different discipline, this lady on your screen, Muna White from Hawaii. And let's just watch this little victory lap.
Wow, welcome back. And there are the local rocks, mate. Ooh. Those are the ones that have been taking out some of the riders. Who's coming up next, Chris? Oh, man, we got semifinal number two on the women's side. We have Elena Moreno from the Grand Canaries against fellow Spaniard Nia Suardias, the teen from Tarifa. You know, I had no idea who Elena was, and she came and just took out Flora, the legend from the, the G... GWA side like I thought there's no way floor is going down so we have just had the biggest upsets we just saw Bo go down to Muna White from Hawaii who won on the kite side earlier. Joe this is like this is a great competition because everything is shaking up yeah I always love when you know obviously underdogs or the usual suspects is not always you know it's kind of like I mean you're a big Formula One fan when Vettel it was pretty much a race for second place when he was in the Red Bull and it, it's great it's incredible and impressive for a rider to be so dominant but a little bit of a you know a little bit of a scrap a little bit of a battle a little bit of a mix-up always makes things more entertaining i mean basically if we're talking you know formula one yesterday Kali saeed basically is alonzo and he didn't even make it out of q3 yeah yeah basically done go home yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely i mean you had him in here in the booth of viewers looking at listening into that interview really cool guy has so much knowledge of this you know getting into new sports and of this location yeah cowley is is an amazing guy we have been shooting all week the new strike v3 the f1 wing and he he's actually our roommate in our flat so it's christopher and i in these tiny little twin beds and then cowley next door and he came in late. We didn't even know who our roommate was going to be. And the next morning, it's like, hey, man. And he is just such a good, humble ambassador for the sport. Just a, just a good human in general. And we had such a nice chat at dinner about losing gracefully. And here's a guy who's a three-time world champion. He has tons of history at Punta Preta and Cabo Verde in general. You know, he gets upset yesterday by um, uh, Julian Boyer. And he handles it like an absolute champ yeah no no definitely i mean talking about equipment yeah that new v3 from f1 coming out the strike that's the one that i've been told that's the one that have these radial panel layouts it's got double materials in the laugh and on the strut have you tried them have you had those in your hand paint i have had them in my hand but joe as a caddy as my main <laughs> job i have learned we have a term in the u.s it's called staying in your lane Mm. So when the, when someone says take out the new V3 unobtainium wing, there's a few of them in the world right now, and they're shooting them. It's not a good idea nope. for the old nope. guy to go out and ruin it on the rocks or nope. slip and fall through it. Nope. So what I've been doing is admiring them and touching them, but I have not ridden them yet. Caressing them. You've been yes. caressing the V3 on the beach. So uh, coming from the caddy side, do they float well across the beach? Can you lift them up and carry them for the little Chris McDonald out there? How, how do they handle? They're much lighter, I will tell you that. <laughs> We've got a new material out. The wing is way lighter. The pressures are higher. Now now one of the differences is the strut and the leading edge are mm. separate so the strut can be pumped up even harder so it's a pretty amazing wing the boys are fighting over using them now um of course the good guys never never hurt them but yeah of course but no i think yeah staying in your lane that is true i've done that i've done that before and then you go out and it's just it's all tears afterwards so no well obviously all the brands starting to bring the new the new kit coming out as the summer the summer months start to appear all the new 2023 equipment start to hit the shelves so have a look at all the new toys stuff we've seen quite a few of them here also the do a tone we've got the unit the unit the new d lab unit and the new boards and yeah the best of the best out here <coughs> excuse me Bless you. out here on the water but talking about the best of the best let's have a look as Nia Swadia, she is just looking more and more comfortable out there. Yeah, Nia's really, uh, she's coming to age in the waves just this last week. Look at the young teenager from Tarifa absolutely sending it over a critical section. She is looking to strike first against Elena. The good news is there wasn't really enough time for Nia to kind of digest the beating that she saw mm. her friend Flora mm. take from it was Elena. Straight out. So she hasn't really had a chance. It's not like there's there's if, if they had gone back and we were doing this tomorrow, it might get in Nia's head. But right now she's still buzzing from that last wave where she she got cleaned up, she popped her wing. So right now she's going out. She gets that's going to be a good starter score for her. Yeah. I do see some bumps on the horizon, so that is looking good. 
Yeah, it does look, you're right, Chris. It does look like out of the stream booth here, we can see some motion in the ocean and some lines starting to stack. But sometimes when this tide starts to fill up, the waves do increase and they come a little bit further down the line. They're not all the way over. And look at the set coming in. Elena about oh, to boy. drop in. Grand Canaria in the house. Oh my gosh, Elena is on a wave of the day. Oh, Joe, this 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 is a is a contest maker right here, that wave. Oh, look at her and getting past the section. Oh, 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 ow, ow. Going oh. down hard. And there's one out the back. This is not going to be good. No, this is going to so, be going over the rocks. This could be a good night for Elena from the Grand Canaries. We're super stoked for her, but this one's going to hurt. Um, Nia dropping in on the outside. We're watching on the screen. She's on a super smooth, buttery section. She pulls out. She is going to play it safe right now. Elena is in the impact zone, though, Joe. Yeah, but I tell you what, Elena's got some good scores coming towards her. Is she going? No, that wing's okay. So now she is definitely right over there, and there's still two waves of the set. Unfortunately, took on, took off on the first wave of the set, which meant she got the rest of the set on her head as she did not complete that ride. One of the biggest we've seen out there. Gutsy move. I mean, you know, the wave was looking so perfect. You have to go for it. But sometimes it's better to take on the second or the third wave because if you do go down, you're not going to have the rest on top of your head. Yeah, that's that's right, Joe. Um, again, that is local knowledge. Uh, I'm pretty confident it's Elena's first time here. She's still on the rocks. We're watching her taking a, a bit of a beating right now. So for those of you back home, she's not just standing in the sand right there trying to stand up. That is, there's holes, there's urchins, there's all kinds of bad stuff. That's where Clément Rosario got hurt yesterday and can't compete today. So there is a bit of consequence with this spot. You know, we're all super stoked to be here. We also have to realize that these wing foil athletes are, there's a bit of danger right down in that section. Yeah, no, it certainly is. But, you know, extreme sport means extreme measures. And we can see it doesn't look like she, that has even gone into her mind because look at that, Chris, on the screen. She is just paddling back out, and it is it. And here we can see Nia has taken this opportunity to get groovy and get busy out there. Look at that, carve and grab hack. Yeah, Nia just grabbed a rail on that. She is, oh, that's, oh, keep it together, Nia. Come on, you got one behind you. Now start, I think she's okay right there, Joe. I there. think she is. If she can get back to that board and paddle us to the side, if she can paddle, oh. if she can scramble, oh, come on, if come she on, come can on. come on, get past it, it's going to be close. It is going to be close. She gets over by the skin of her teeth. Great scrambling there. You've got to love a good old scramble. Wow, Joe, that was so close. Oh, so here's the replay. So the foil shoots over, and she just scratched over the next wave. We're looking, I'm looking for Elena right now. It looks like her wing stayed in one piece. That could be the difference in this contest, Joe. If her wing is ripped, she needs to come in and switch it out. There's still nine minutes left. The issue we're having is Elena only has one score. Nia already has two. So the difference is in nine minutes, Elena has to go out and get two high scoring waves. So Nia, another good one. Man, the swells are just pumping through. Yeah, this the, looks like Punta Preta has suddenly said, okay, so semi-finals, I'm going to turn this up a notch, and you guys and girls are going to have to throw down. So at the moment, Nina has one medium score of a 5.13, and then a backup or a second score of a 1.33, and then Elena has a 5.03. So anybody's money... And then look at that. Elena is just going to be coming onto our screen. We have Here we have Nia Suadias making her way back out as well. So both of these athletes still eight, over eight minutes to go. We've got a battle on our hands, mate. Yeah, I think Nia might be kicking herself for not taking advantage of that couple-minute mm. period where she, had, she really had Elena on the ropes. So now, you know, we're going to have to see how this one goes down. And respect to Elena to not even phasing herself and going back out. But now we will have to see if that hasn't phased her. Are we going to see her maybe playing a little bit safer? 
If it were me, Chris, I'd grab one safe one just to shake off the cobwebs because she does have time and then go. But hey, sets are far few between. And Nia now down the right hand side getting busy. Yeah, Nia's on a good one. I don't think it's going to have the energy to pump all the way through. But again, this is going to improve her second scores. Yeah, she only has that 1.33. Does look like there's a big score there as well, though, Chris. I wonder what that's going to be. Yeah, Nia's had a couple good ones. She hasn't quite had the bomb that Elena was on in the beginning. The, the first wave that Elena caught was so big, it basically swallowed her up. Yeah, I mean, she rode it all the way for the out. That was, I think, that you know, that one you could see is hitting that outside reef that occasionally we saw that with Machu Lopez, where he came in in the, I think it was the quarterfinals, where he took out a couple of the big riders and he just got that bomb from the very back all the way in. But I mean, my hat off to Elena because she was not holding anything back on that one and she was going full steam ahead. Yeah, she's had a, a pretty great run today. I'm really happy for her. You could tell in her voice that she just came and, and she's like, look, I have no expectations on myself. You know, I'm just, I'm here for the fun of it. I'm here to represent the women out there that are into winging. And she just threw down and took out Flora. I mean, it it's just, it's crazy. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, they are really going for it here. Super impressive to see how the girls are just not leaving anything out there on the playing field but now let's have a look see let's see what is going to be going as it, there we have Nia Suadias entering in one more time she is coming along one more time as another wave she currently is in the lead she's got a 4.7 for that second score there Chris yeah Nia is sitting pretty well right now I mean you can go back and you can talk strategy, Joe. Like a, a veteran move for her would be to go out and jockey for the bigger waves with Elena because Elena has to improve on two scores to pass up uh, Nia. So essentially the teenager from Tarif, I don't think that's the way she's thinking per se. She's going out, she's having fun. She's enjoying Punta Preta as much as anyone else. But right now, uh, Nia is in the catbird seat. Elena, we have seen with some giant waves from her. We've got, we've got waves actually breaking across in front of the judges now. So the ocean is starting to perk up a little bit. This is great, Joe, because we do have the men's semis coming up next. Yeah, and we have the day. This is the finals day. Who are going to be our champions here on the wing foiling side? But at the moment, Nia Swadi is in the driving seat. But yeah, like you said, Chris, she, if I were Nia, I would be sticking right next to Elena, trying to get that priority and making sure that I take off on the bigger set way because, you know, Elena only needs a 5.14, so that is a medium score to take the lead. And here it looks like Nia is coming all the way down on the bottom side. Metal. Yeah, Nia's on another good one here, but again, I'm not sure that's the set wave unless she can make something happen in here. So now she's got a decision to make. Does she go for a little air? It's This is really tough, Joe, because that was a small to medium wave. So that's a real veteran move. She could have gone for an air there. You could see her setting up. Mm. She wanted mm. to throw it. But the reality is that's a low enough scoring wave that I don't think it would have helped much. So that's really smart by the team from Tarifa. Yeah, she's definitely decided to go for that one and have a little look-see as she is getting some of the bigger scores out there on the water. Nia showing that she is now a veteran. Because, I mean, you know, fair enough, she's she's been a world champ. She is one of our veterans on tour, but she is still so young, but like most, most of them, mate. Yeah, Nia just turned 16. Um, it's funny because she came to Hood River and stayed with us and trained for a couple weeks last summer. And she was so jealous of Christopher being able to drive at 16 in the U.S. Because I guess in Europe it's 18. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that is the difference. Yeah, those two years, especially at that age when you, you really want to start exploring, you want to start going around. But now, okay. So Nia, a 5.03 and a 5.13, very close in between these two athletes. Elena didn't, didn't look like she got the groove on this one. Not as radical as we've seen there from Nia. 
but they're very close in between these girls. Three minutes on the clock, still enough time for another set. Yeah, so Joe, what we're seeing right now is we're not seeing the big bombs come through. No. So with Muna White, we saw her catch some absolute monsters and get sevens. So in this case, we, Elena, is absolutely in striking distance of Nia right now. Yes. Essentially, she still has two minutes, and with one good wave, she's going to surpass Nia. Yeah, that, exactly. I mean, if one good wave comes, both of these girls are going to be able to improve their scores because that is, you know, surfing how they are, I reckon that would happen if a set wave came through. But at the moment, not there. At the moment, it isn't happening. And, yeah, Nia Suadias in the commanding lead, looking to take a... I can see both of us here, Chris, extending our extending our necks like the old giraffes to see if we can see anything out the back. I can't see any lines. Yeah, I'm getting a bit nervous. Um, I'm close to Nia and her family. Nicole's at home, Lael's at home, and Kuro's on the beach, nervously looking at his phone right now. With 1 minute and 55 seconds left, it's a 10.16 to a 9.43. And the dark horse has been Elena from the Grand Canaries. And she is absolutely within striking distance. If there is a set wave, it is absolutely possible to see Elena improve on her. Her low score is a 4.4, which would not be very hard. So she's less than half a point behind. So right now, the women are nervously jockeying around. I am craning around the corner of our booth, Joe, to it see if there's some like, big bumps. It looks like there's a couple of bumps coming our way. Elena is all the way on the right. There you can see on your screen, Nia Swadi is there, just being followed by the drone. And there are definitely some bumps. Oh. There are, and I think Elena is going to have on this next one. She might be having priority. There are sets stacking and racking to the sky. Now we are talking. This is the way we want it to end off. So, semi-final number two, Elena on a wave. This could be a very decisive moment. Oh, my gosh, Joe. We're at under. Oh, Elena goes down. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Missing that wave, and she has missed out on that opportunity. 45 seconds. Is she going to be able to get one out the back, or is she in the impact zone? I reckon here we have Nia. Nia also, Elena, can she get up in time to get the last wave of the set? She needs this if she wants to have an opportunity here. She is trying to get up, but I don't think she's going to be able to. Okay, decides against it. 20 seconds, and there is one behind her. Is she going to tack around Nia? Oh, gets the end. Does she keep it? Yeah! Nia Suarez. Oh, Nia just goes down after that huge air on the inside. Elena still has a few seconds. She is out the back, but I don't think there's any more set waves. No, she is going to come in on one of these smaller ones as it is closing out. She is really going to have to milk this if she wants to have the opportunity of getting some scores. No, it does look like she's gone off the back. So what a shame for Elena because that set wave had scoring potential. But Nia, one more time bringing it to her and yep that is official so making her way into the grand finale here for Cape Verde that lady on your screen from Spain coming out of my hometown of Tarifa Nia Suadia yeah that was amazing Joe Nia rode like a veteran there Elena really almost took her out but Nia absolutely closed that one out she's going to get an improvement on that last score so Nia going to the finals against the Hawaiian. I am so excited to see this go down, Joe. No, we are looking forward to it. So now we're going to be moving over to the men as we are going to be having semi-final number one of the men coming on your screen. But before we do so, let's have a little recap of some of the best waves of that last heat.
Alright, well, welcome back everybody as we are going to be out there going with the semi-final number one of the men. We are going to be seeing Wesley Brito, the Black Mamba, going up against Ugo Marin. Chris, who's your money on? Oh, Joe, you can't do that to me. Both <laughs> these guys are amazing riders. Um, we were just discussing, I feel like Wesley has not come into his own yet. He yeah. has not had the contest where he breaks out. Right now, we're looking at him on his first wave, striking early. Oh, he's in a really oh, nice section. Rail to rail. Sending it rail to rail. I feel an air coming. Oh, he is deep in. I mean, that's a great first wave for Wesley. So, I don't know. This one's almost too close to call. Ulo Marin has been ripping all week on some of the bigger stuff out at, at, at the different breaks around the island. And, man, if he gets some waves, Ugo can... He will send it. But here's Wesley again. Like, great first wave. He Right now, he's going out. He's still got probably 16 minutes to go, and he's already got one score, Joe. Yeah, now you can see him really going side to side, keeping the speed. Unless you said there, Chris, going deep. I mean, he's playing dodge with the old rocks on the inside of the reef here at Punta Preta. But, yeah, I think the same. You know, my only question is what we were having a little chat before, Chris, is is there enough wind because wesley is a heavy dude you can see he's out there on the unit he is also he's got a very you know, a board that has a lot of volume in it if i'm not mistaken i think that's the skywing the team edition from from fanatic it does look like he has to have that buoyancy but is there enough wind out there yeah yes i mean he just got a seven on his first wave and it looks like he's already on another one so what what this is going to do joe is if this is another good wave. That's double overhead for Wesley. So what's going to happen is he's going to get his score here, and then he's going to be able to really mm. push it. He's pushing it pretty well right now. But what I mean by, oh, Hugo out Look the backside. The back. so, oh, Hugo Marin says it's not over yet. Absolutely in a critical zone, Ugo. Oh, wow. Really nice, Ugo got it. Oh, Ooh. kept it together, went down. But that first turn. Right on the set wave, hitting it as pretty much as critical as it can get. Really going to be interesting to see the scores. Both of these boys, they are throwing down. But hey, semi-final. And for Wesley Brito coming from Cape Verde, bragging rights additionally added to this. Oh, yeah. This means everything to Wesley. I mean, he's doing this one for his country. He's the last Cabo Verdean in it. Um, he knows this spot well. He's from Boa Vista. The Duotone rider is one of the nicest guys on the tour. Um, his nickname, as you said, the Black Mamba. The guy just rips in everything water sports. But let's not forget about Ugo Marin. Ugo Marin, the F1 rider from France, he won Dakla two years ago. Shreds in the waves. The guy is what I like to call the Rob Machado of wing foiling couldn't have put a better description on him because he is that guy that he's more of a free rider and trying to find his place on the competition scene but if Ugo can find his place it is here and then we can see Resley he is very very happy about that one and waiting for scores to drop and I, there are some very big numbers about to come his way but look at that commitment there from Ugo surfing all the way along and this is where he had a little bit of a fumble and just couldn't keep it together but another set wave oh, I tell you what the ocean is throwing us gems where's the big open carve open hack wow Wesley is absolutely in a bomb Ugo's in one behind him just going so deep oh my gosh we got we got dual split screen right Ugo is as deep as I have ever seen anyone here oh, I'm standing up sending I'm it standing up. Look oh my at god that. Ugo. And oh Ugo Marin in the most critical section we had a discussion at dinner last night about the judges wanting to see riders taking risks and Ugo just goes right by Wesley there, gives him a little nod, says, nice job, mate. And I cannot believe how deep Ugo just went. Ah, uh, that wave has got it equal because there was a 9.0 out there for Wesley with the wave that ended with a little bit of a 360. But look at Ugo talk about powering his way back towards it. Let's have a little replay of that last wave. Another good set. This this. Heat is stacked to the rims. Two big sets. Look at that slow-mo just carving 
easing, floating through. The Mambo is swirling around. Yeah, I want to see this replay on the little three on the inside. Yep, that was pretty sick, Wesley. So he deserves that nine. That's a big score for him. So Ugo dropping into another one. He is so committed. He told me he did a 360 in Dakla, and he thinks that's what won it for him. So let's see if he gets in here on a more committed section and we see an air out of him. Yeah, I mean, there we can see on the kiting side, it's more down towards the left-hand side when the boys do start to do that air. And it does look like Ugo... I reckon he's trying to line one up. He has, he's going to have another good wave coming his way as well. But Wesley, a nine and a seven, dropping the hammer and already got a few nails in the coffin. Can he finish it off though? Because Ugo, I'm going to say it looks like he's got a little bit better wave selection because he has taken off on the biggest waves of the set. Yeah, if you look at Ugo out there, he's on the strike V3. He's loving that. Looks like he's on the 5 meter. Now, this is what we talked about earlier. Wesley, a big guy. He is on the Duotone D-Lab. He does get himself going there, so I'm glad to see that. Um, boy, Wesley has two fantastic waves so far. So Ugo has his, um, has his work cut out for him for sure. Yeah, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. Is Ugo out there on the rocket? Yeah, Ugo's actually out there on the Rocket S. So the Rocket Wing is the traditional wing board from F1, but the Rocket S is the more surf style mm -hmm. with the rounded nose. Ugo loves small boards. He rides a 4-4. It's th oh, there's huge bombs coming. I'm so excited, Joe. Oh, huge. I, I am starting to stand up, ladies and gentlemen, because there is an absolute huge set coming oh. my way. I'm going to get Ugo here. Look at that. Look at that. All the way along, big turns. Look at the size of Wesley P. Oh. out the back. Ugo all the way. Chris, take a look at Wesley. Oh, my God. Wesley is so deep. I Both of them are on these just mackers. Ponte Preta just coming through right now, Joe. I, I don't. I think Wesley's was a little bit bigger. Maybe his local knowledge of taking the third or fourth wave, but... Oh my god, these guys are already sitting on a 16.6 and a 14.2, so... Whew. This cannot get much better. The ocean throwing us. They're not throwing us a bone. They're throwing us a complete skeleton, mate. That set from Wesley Brito and Ugo Manin. Ugo goes a little bit faster. He flies his way through. Wesley, you can see going along, but let's have a look at the replay. Look at the size of that one. Yeah, these are easily double overhead for both these riders. They're both six foot. Um, Ugo already looks like he's getting on to another one on the outside. Wesley chasing him out there. We're just over halfway, and this has already been amazing, Joe. Oh, and here he is, Ugo again, right? Even more critical, deeper, keeping that together with the speed. Now he's going to go back to the phone ball. Staying a little bit further out on the shoulder to see if he can get past it. Wesley Brito out the back waiting for another set. This heat is stacked. Yeah, Joe. These guys are like gladiators right now. Just going punch for punch. Right now, Wesley does have the upper hand. Wesley is definitely riding with a bit of adrenaline. This is a home contest for him. He is representing Cabo Verde right now. So Wesley wants this win, Joe. Uh, he wants it. He knows it, you know, and also he knows how important it could be for Cape Verde because let's not forget we had three Cape Verdeans on the podium. And now if he could get himself on the podium and on top of the podium, you know, that for Cape Verde would be huge for the government, for the businesses to know, to support for the future of the sport here. They can't ignore it if they have a complete one like that. But Ugo is balls to the wall because he is even deeper now. He is going to go in for those risky ones. Yeah, Christopher and Ugo have been riding all week with Kali and Mizu, you know, the Brazilians, and they've been shooting the new wings, and they've been out at Alibaba and Cora Azul around the corner. And Christopher's comment about Ugo was, he just disappears, Dad. I think he crashes, but in he's actually just so deep. We're oh. seeing a great drone shot. Oh. Nice top turn, right in the critical part. Oh, going nice and vertical there, Ugo. He is really swooping out that one. I reckon we're going to see the 360. No, going for the air. Didn't commit. He didn't commit there. He was half-hearted. You can already see when he took off, his weight was already back, Chris. Yeah, the, the issue with that, Joe, is 
you know, these athletes are dealing with these millisecond decisions. So right there, he's on almost a non-scoring wave is what I would call that. So he knows he's been on some bombs. It's not about how many waves you ride or how good you look the what entire time. It's about two waves and two waves only. So that was going to be very hard for Ugo to improve his score. So the issue also is, Joe, is that he doesn't know Wesley is sitting on a nine. If he knows that, he is going to have to send it on one of the biggest sets. Yep, and then let's, let's not forget also in the rule book that they cannot be having two hands on the wing. So, he, you know, if he wants to perform an air reverse, a 360, or a backflip, or a front flip, they have to do it pure from the energy of the foil hitting the wave in that critical section. So real pure surfing out there. But Wesley on fire. Both of these guys on fire. What a semi-final number one here of what is looking like is going to be the final day of competition for the GWA Wingfoot and World Tour World Cup, Cape Verde, Punta Preta. Yeah, Joe, I can't even tell you because this morning on the way over here, the mood was a little bit down. We weren't sure if there was going to be waves. We were wondering, like, should they be making the call to do the two or three hour move over to Kite Beach and kind of finish with a fizzle? But instead, we are finishing with a bang. Mm. Cape Verde has absolutely come through. Punta Preta in a full effect here. Wesley sitting on a 17.8. Insane. I mean, these aren't bullets. It's C4 out here with the explosion. I mean, it has been set after set. And that last one, the way from both of them. I mean, you know, Ugo, 15.14. That's a huge score. You know, usually that would be maybe even enough to go through. But Wesley, a 9.0 and an 8.80. Judge is loving his style. He does go vertical. He does go powerful. Black Mamba in contention right now for making his way through to the grand final. Yeah, Ugo Marin is in trouble right now. Um, I love his style. He rides so smooth and flowy and aggressive, and he rides the biggest surf. But what he doesn't have is this is not his home contest. Wesley has his friends and his family. He's got the backing of his country here at Punta Preta. You know, his good buddy Hendricks got kicked out earlier, puts a little bit more pressure on his shoulders. Wesley goes out there and he says, you know what, Joe? I'm going to open with a hammer wave. Mm. Both Ugo and Wesley went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but Wesley is just that much better today. Yeah, he can see Ugo starting to go. On this one, these are one of the big waves. I do not know. Look, he doesn't even get wet. They just control the four. You can see how he's shifting his weight. Great riding here from the Frenchman. Yeah, Ugo, he's just, Ugo is such an amazing winger. He makes it look easy. So what happens is when you ride with this guy, it's like all of a sudden you start thinking you can do the same thing, and you can't. <laughs> what he's doing is there's a few guys in the world. So oh, um, nice I'm watching him. Wesley on another one. It's not the biggest one. It's not going to improve his score, but what Wesley is doing is he's putting a stamp on things. He's saying, I'm the best today. I deserve the title. Yeah, you can see also Ugo is not lending up. He's going deeper and deeper. He knows he pretty much has to put it all on the line if he wants to get past the Cape Verdean. Three and a half minutes are left on the ticker. It is getting close, but we want one more set. So it looks like he's the, yeah he's out on the five meter. If I it looks like right there, I think Wesley is maybe on a five point five. Uh, Wesley's on a five as well. Okay. Both these guys, none of these guys really do anything bigger than a five. It, it's they're not normal humans. So what that means is they're not necessarily using the wing to get up. Mm. What they're doing is they're using the wing and the foil combined, Joe. So they're they get the tiniest puff. And then they absolutely suck their legs into their chest, which engages the foil under the water. So it's a, only a few athletes in the world can do it, and they're all here. Mm. But the reality is, if I was out there on a five meter, I'd be up to my neck. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no chance. And Wesley is probably close to 100 kilos. Oh, yeah. Wesley's, Wesley's got uh, – Wesley's huge. I mean, you stand next to that guy, he's like no, – he, he could be a, a lineman in, in the NFL. Yeah, no, you can definitely see the boys got some size in it and picking off some of those size waves today. Two and a half minutes, both of the athletes are going all the way out the back, hoping that there's another set. We're hoping there's another set to see them go one more time. But Ugo, I mean, Ugo has to improve almost both of his scores. He is 1.1 behind on 
Wesley's backup score. So he would need, he is almost comboed out by a few decimals. So Ugo pretty much needs a 10 point ride. Yeah, you know, Joe, Ugo unfortunately has shown up to a gunfight with a knife. So uh, it's just he, he is being outgunned by Wesley. And the only reason is, is because Wesley is riding for his country's pride today. Yeah. Wesley, Wesley, we met Wesley in Fortaleza two years ago, and he was on the podium there. And we were so excited because he's such a nice guy. He was so kind to Christopher. Like he's like a big brother to him. It's, he's just so such a good human being. And I've expected great things out of Wesley. I've always thought if Wesley has the right wind, meaning he, he needs wind, we, there's no way to get around that, he's going to rip. He reminds me of a bit of Bastion Escofe, the same size. Bastion needs wind. Mm -hmm. If it's light, he doesn't have a chance. But right now, Wesley is, Wesley's sitting on, I'm going to say, the highest score of the entire contest. At a 17.8. Insane. It was really cool to see Bastian take the free fly over there in New Zealand. He's, I mean, you were over there. Chris, tell me a little bit about it. Well, Bastian s impressed me in Taiba. I'd noticed something that I hadn't seen before. He was doing stuff. Same with Alain Fadit. Alain Fadit all of a sudden was on my Style radar. Meister. Because I spend so much time just sitting there watching, being bored. That's kind of one of the reasons why I've enjoyed being in the booth is because you know, Christopher doesn't want to hang out with me during these events. So we go to these 10 day things and he's with his peers and his friends. He doesn't even want me around. So anyways, I just watch. So I see Alon and I see Bastion and I'm like, wow, those guys are getting way better. So in New Zealand, Bastion got some really good wind in his heat, coincidentally against Christopher. And it was toe for toe, Joe. I mean, it was a coin flip. I didn't. I couldn't even talk because I'm trying to be professional, but I'm also, you know, mm -hmm. concerned for my son. But the fact was, is Bastion, he he gave it to him to Christopher. It was amazing. 720s front flips. He landed everything in his repertoire, and Christopher beat him by like point oh something. So here we got Ugo Marin. Red flag is in the sky. Ugo, we are fired up and very proud of you, man. Yeah, I think both of these waves are going to count because they look like they just went before. So, Ugo, there we can see, rocking out the F1, going another turn. It looked like we saw Wesley fly through the bat. We'll be getting, there it is, screen on screen. Who's it going to be? Wesley, another big open face hack off the top. Yes, Ugo going for the spin, not being able to land it. Wesley getting past that second section. He's going to be making it all the way down. He is. Is he going to be able to get past Ugo? Yes, he is. Just says a little high. And does the 360 oh lands God. it. Perfect. Oh, my right God. Right in front of Ugo. That's a statement. Yeah. Uh, Wesley just put a stamp on that one. We call that the nail in the coffin. Ugo, that was an amazing heat. Man, you ripped. You should be really proud of that one. But Wesley is on a different planet today. Um, there he throws a huge backflip for the crowd. Uh, the Cabo Verdean is here to win. That's what he just said. Uh, and when you see athletes of this caliber excited, amped, pumped like that, that is a difficult mindset to get past. And let, not even saying about the skill set on the water, Wesley Brito probably one of the best waves of the competition. Yeah, Wesley just knocked it out of the park. I mean, if we're talking about the Duotone rider from Bo Vista, you know, the guy... <laughs> The Black Mamba, he's incredible on the basketball court. He skimboards like a maniac. His surf game is super high, but he's also a nice guy. He's always having fun. He's always smiling. He'll help you. You know what I mean? There was a great story about Malo yep. and Zavi Kor walking home in Tarifa from the party, and it was like 4 in the morning, and, and there was you know there was some trouble on the street, and, and Zavi and Malo were scared. There were three guys, and they broke beer bottles, and all of a sudden it was getting real, and guess who walked into the picture? <laughs> I bet the other three turned around. Yep, the Black Mamba all of a sudden put his arm around Zavi and Malo and said, hey guys, how's it going? And the three guys looked at Wesley, and Wesley, who speaks like five languages or even more, yeah. said to him in Spanish or whatever he said to him, and the guys dropped the bottles and walked away. Yeah. I mean, looking after his peers, and that's, you know, that's part also of the family out here, looking after the smaller ones. I wouldn't mess with Wesley. That guy is a big guy, and, you know, always wrestling over here on the beach with all of the boys. I've seen him take down a few guys in a playful manner, but I, they ain't getting up. Yeah, I, I, I'm not messing with Wesley. 
but congratulations to the Cabo Verdean. He just absolutely nailed that uh, that semi against Ugo Marin, who showed up blazing as well and had some amazing rides. Ugo's going to look back on that. He's going to watch the live stream tonight. He's going to analyze. And I don't think there was anything more he could have done. Wesley just has that little extra oomph today because it, it's, it's Punta Preta. It's his hometown. So... Congratulations, Wesley. You got one more to go, my friend. Yeah, look at that. Getting the congratulations out there. All the boys. There he is, Matthew Lopez. I can see Kelton there as well. Now we're talking. There's the smiles. Absolutely taking it. Oh, they're going to need some to get that boy up on the shoulders. There it is. It's, I mean, it's almost as if he's already won the competition. Yeah, you know, that was that was kind of a victory right there in itself. He's got all his buddies there. You know, Machu, who won earlier in the week on the kite side. We talked to Me Too earlier. I mean, it was great. They're fired up. I'm sensing some of the kite guys wanting to potentially try this wing thing. All right, so Chris, how are we going to improve that? I mean, coming up now, two teammates, two boys that have battled it out against themselves on multiple occasions because they both are world-class SUP wave riders. They've been in many competitions, many finals together. Zane Schweitzer from Hawaii going up against Benoit Carpentier from France. You know, Joe, I need to catch my breath after the last <laughs> semi between Ugo and Wesley. Uh, Zane... I know better than Benoit, but Benoit has really shown me something this week. I've been watching this guy ride all week, and I haven't been I – I didn't know who he was, but I kept saying, wow, this guy's smooth. He's, he's really good in the waves. So first of all, you and I are going to have a bit of a problem. They're both on the same gear. They both ride for free wing starboard. So – Yeah, we have Zane is out there on the yellow light. Okay. And Benoit, here we have him dropping in on the white – Benoit also, a lot of the times, he has those two hands on. So it looks like we're going to first grab the wave there from Zane in the background. So Zane, I love how he crouches down and starts to get the power. Both of these boys opening up with a set. Look at the lines. Punta Breda. Oh, both boys getting a set wave. Zane's out the back is a little bigger. He's going to have more power coming through. We're going to see something out of Zane in this section. So... That was a veteran move. Zane knows he's still on his first score, so what he does is he pumps back out. Benoit riding all the way into the beach, but Zane is going to actually be in position to take this next big set, Joe. Yeah, I reckon he might be able to get past, but Benoit going all the way down. As it looks like we can see out of the corner of our eyes, it does look like Zane is going to be getting on another one. We're going to replay for you very shortly. Here he is. Oh, Zane in a really critical section. He's barely keeping it together. Oh, wow, that's two high scores for Zane immediately. Right now, Zane Schweitzer, the local from Maui, big wave rider, rides for free wing and starboard. He is absolutely in a gem of a position, Joe. We're not even three minutes into this, and he has two great scores. Yeah. Zane is a veteran. What he's going to do now is he's going to push. He is. And I you know, had a little interview with him here in the bush, and he said that you know, one of the things for him, he is always pedal to the metal in his life. And sometimes when it comes to it, it's harder for him to calm down than it is for him to get amped. But at the moment, Benoit Carpentier with a 8.07. Zane still waiting for scores. But it looks like Benoit has what a big wave on that first endeavor. And here we can see the replay of that last one from Zane. Zane two for two. These guys are going at it, escaping by the skin of his teeth there. Yeah, Zane just got out of that one. Um, Zane is from a family of watermen in Maui. Uh, they go back multiple generations. I mean, way back from the beginning of windsurfing. Um, his dad, they're a big dirt bike family. They're real adrenaline junkies. They ride moto all over the island. And um, I think I think Zane is going to show us something. He, I was excited to see him in New Zealand because he would be a great athlete to have on tour with us. Yeah, no, and I mean, he's such a cool guy, such an easygoing guy, and has a lot of experience in all different sports, and great to see him coming in here. But, hey, you know, this is why it's so cool 
that this discipline, the new discipline of the wing foiling tour here with the waves, we are ha attracting athletes. I mean, you were talking about Cowley, about the Mizus, about, you know, the Zanes, the Mooners, new people coming in from all different generations, all different sports. It can only mean good things. Yeah, I think this is actually really working out well. Not only are we getting the conditions at Ponta Preta in Cabo Verde here, but the dream is working. I didn't completely understand the no freestyle at all. Like, you know, again, we're biased. Mm. We're freestylers. Mm. We're from the Flatwater Hood River. We want to do tricks. That's, that's what Christopher loves to do. But I didn't totally understand the concept, but now I do. Uh, this, seeing conditions like this, it yes, makes sense. Yes, this will bring a whole new group of riders to the tour. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I think it. I think it's really positive. I mean, look at Wesley there. We've, you know, he's been the underdog on tour for a couple of years. He took it, you know, was on the podium a few years back in Brazil, like you mentioned. And then for me, he's always been that guy that hasn't broken out of his shell. But with that last wave, he has completely kicked the shell out, kicked it out the door, and I reckon he is in contention of being a champion here in Cape Verde. Yeah, right now Wesley can taste it. So right now what he's got to do is is go back to the beach. You know, he's going to have tons of family and friends all congratulating, and everybody wants to tell you what to do. You know, they've all got the secret sauce now that you're in the finals. The reality is, is Wesley just needs to keep doing what he has been doing. He knows how to ride. He knows how to wave ride. He's got one more round to go. Yeah, so it's, I reckon if I were if I was him, I'd say yeah, thank to all the family, put my headphones like you can see Ayrton and a lot of the top riders do, go to a nice little quiet place, relax, hydrate, get ready, breathe, and then just go out and explode. Absolutely. Um, I know Zane is looking to improve his scores here. I, I'm surprised a little bit right now. I mean, it is going a little bit flat, so we're just going to see what happens to these teammates, you know, free wing, uh, uh, starboard riders. As you said earlier, they've competed quite a bit. I'm looking at Ben Wall on the screen. He is dropping into not a giant one, but what he's doing is he's a competitor. He's veteran. He knows that he has to get a second score. Yeah, and it's all the way over. Nice carving cut back there from him, keeping it smooth, keeping it groovy. Nice couple of link turns all the way over on the right-hand side here of the competition area. And for some reason, he's continuing on this one. Okay, so he is going to be using it. So he has just trying to show as he keeps both hands on. But I reckon that's almost considered to be out there in the flats. Are we going to be seeing an air here? It does look like he's trying to make this wave all the way along. Would that be considered one wave? I reckon it kind of died out and then got back on it. Well, the good news is we're going to be able to see a score on that mm. one. Let's see what the judges do on that. Um... On the replay, it's not the best wave. I think, Joe, you were right. He was trying to set up an error, yeah. and he actually decided against it. Yeah, I think so, too. Nice open phase hacks as he has just got that other set wave. So as it stands, Zane has a 720 and a 493. Totally now at 12.13. Benoit Carpentier has a 8.07, excuse me, and he's looking like another big score coming his way. Benoit is going to be in the driving seat. Yeah, so it's interesting. I want to see what that last wave did. I'm trying to understand the judge's mindset on that. It wasn't a very big wave, but I guess maybe they're scoring because he wrote, he pumped into the next section, or let's just wait and see. Yeah. Let's see what the scores are going to be coming in. Sometimes, obviously, the perspective we have here in the live booth isn't the same as the judges has. All right, so here, he's not letting go of the wing. He's still getting and creating that power. Open face hack. Nice and controlled there on the way down. Do you reckon we see an air from Benoit? Because this one's eyeing up nicely. Yeah, he just touched down. That's not what he wants. Zane's on one behind him, so we can watch that as well. Zane on a pretty critical section right there. Oh, this is going to score high if he can ride out of this. So that's what the judges wanted. Oh, he's in trouble now. Come on, Zane. Hold on to that board. Was trying to air out and grab the board. All right, so let's see what happens now, Joe. Is this wave going to break on top of him? I think he's okay. I mean, Zane's used to having... Waves a little bit bigger break on top of him. I think a little bit of a mush here. It'll be all right. Yeah, uh, this guy rides uh, Jaws all the time. There was a great story. The Eddie Akau, you know, the big contest over in Oahu was a couple months ago. And, and Zane was like, man, it was crazy. Everyone was at the Eddie, so we had Jaws to ourselves. 
You gotta love it. You gotta take a positive for any it can come. And you could see he was trying to air out of that white water section there. So uh, let's have a look. Okay, so it is Benoit Carpentier in the lead. He's got a 5.87 as his second score. Zane an 8.07. Both of these boys with a huge SUP background. And they are not holding back as we're just coming up on seven minutes left to go. Can start to see the Cape Verdean flags coming down on the beach as they know they have one fellow countryman in the grand final. After this, we will be going to the mini final of the women. Mini final of the men, grand finale of the women and the grand final of the men to close it off. Just coming up on just coming up on three o'clock local time that is five o'clock central european time if you are joining us good morning good afternoon good evening semi-finals out on the water yeah we got zane and benoit right now these guys are teammates they've com been competing against each other for years um i think zane might tack into this one mm. let's see yep there he goes wow that's a nice spot for zane this is going to improve his score if this wave jacks up a little bit so see how he just cuts into the pocket there he says i can go even deeper judges he is in a critical section right there rips nice. the lips oh, oh, he, oh, oh my god that's high level how stuff did he keep that together yeah that's gonna score real big oh. i'm gonna I'm, i think we're gonna see an air at the end of this one as well so here comes zane he's setting up for a little pop oh, decides against it and but Wow, Benoit's on one in the back. There he goes, Joe. Take it over. Yeah, Benoit all the way out. Nice open face carving hack. He's going to have to speed if he wants because this wave a little bit further down the reef is starting to close on him. He's going to have to try and get past this section. Oh, Cavitation goes underneath, nose diving. Losing an opportunity there. And Zane just scrambling out of harm's way. Both of these boys missing by the skin of their teeth yeah boy this is a crunch um zane is still down i think i don't know if we've seen final scores come in boy but it's getting close between these teammates um yeah if zane is next score coming in i reckon he's going to be shy of a point shy of a point here we can see that last replay from benoit he does get some nice turns that last one isn't going to improve on his scores. But both of these guys taking off on the set waves. And it is very, very, very close in between them. As we're just a little over four and a half minutes to go. Yeah, there's still plenty of time for both of these guys. I think Zane ha still has a great opportunity. What he needs is a big set wave to really be able to show what he's got. I feel like Zane is at its best when it's a little bit bigger than this. This is like, I mean, yeah, he's great out there. Obviously, he's in the semis. But when it gets big, I think we could truly see what Zane's got. Yeah, you know, he is used to getting into the Spago ways. I mean, we just saw there on that little bit of a fumble, he was able to control it. He touched the board on the water, which normally means over and out for a lot of these riders. I mean, how hard is that, Chris? Oh, what, what both of these or everyone we're watching today is on a absolute alien level. They, there's nothing normal about these riders. That's one of the things that as a, you know, I'm just an average rider. I can wing. But when you get to see these people and ride with them all the time, not only is it a treat, but it starts to get you a little overconfident. And that's when I get in trouble because I think, oh, I can ride a small board. Yeah, I can I'm ride fine. a tiny foil. And I don't even get up. And I get this constant thing from Christopher where he's like, Dad, uh, I think you should take a bigger foil, take a bigger wing. And I'm like, nah, I know what I'm doing. And, yep, he's right. I swim. But <laughs> what we're seeing from Zane and Benoit right now is they're on the tiniest gear. Their foils are so small because they want to be able to stay with the speed of the wave. They're on tiny wings. They're on tiny boards. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, to be able to get that one up and running in this win, three minutes to go. Benoit has the upper hand. So it's 13.94, 13.67. So Zane needs to increase by 0 0.28 so he needs to get about a high six and he could be taking this high six is more than possible out there but it's definitely going to have to be a big set wave and there we can see who is it going to be mini final Ugo Marin and there is the grand finale with Wesley Brito waiting to see who is going to be the man to take out the monster that is the black mamba 
What is going to happen here in Cape Verde? And the cool thing is we can see Matthew Lopez, the Cape Verdean that won the kite surf event down here on the beach, supporting his fellow man as Wesley is right out in front here in the stream booth. Yeah, Joe, that's really neat for us to look down. You can see Wesley's just so loose and relaxed. He doesn't look nervous. Right now he's chatting it up with the boys on the beach. Machu's telling him, you got this, bro. I mean, I'm sure Hendrix is down there. Man, this is really special. I, I'm happy for Wesley, and, you know, one more win, and he's got it. But this semi number two isn't over. Uh, I think Zane has something for him. It looks like there might be some bumps. That looks like Benoit might be on one. Zane might be one on the back. So let's see what these guys can do. Yeah, Benoit has a very laid-back, slow and chilled style, doesn't he? Yeah, Benoit rides a lot like Ugo Marin. They're real smooth. Zane's on one behind him, so Zane's going to look to improve on his backup score of a 6.47. So the question is, is it big enough? So Zane dropping in in a critical section. Up, he's going to have to cut back and show the judges that he is not afraid to go critical. There he is in the glassy section, doing really good. Come on, Zane, give us an error. There you go. Air oh, oh, just misses out. Ooh. That could have been... The cruncher, if he had landed that, as there was just coming up on 60 seconds to go, I don't think that is going to be enough. And I'm just waiting for a score to come through here of Benoit, because Benoit did complete his wave. Yeah, Joe, I, I hate to say this, but we're at 50 seconds left. Zane is in a very glassy section, so it's not easy to get going on that tiny equipment. He's sinking. You can see him. I think he's giving the signal to his caddy to know if he's in the lead or not. And the caddy is going to be telling him right now that he is not. So if Zane lands that last wave, you just don't know. Yeah, no. We know you, and it ain't over until the buzzer. Anything can happen. But, yep, you can see that glassy section. He is caught out here on the inside. So it does look like... Unless a miracle happens, it does look like Benoit Carpentier might have done enough here, Chris. Yeah, Benoit has, has kind of come out of nowhere. Like a lot of the this whole entire competition, even on the women's side, you know, Bowen getting eliminated, Flora getting kicked out. I mean, you know, Ugo getting kicked out, uh, Cowley, Mizu, like a lot of this is this is like March Madness where this bracket, no one's bracket's correct anymore. Yeah, well, there it is. We're going to wait for, as there's a last score to be coming through, to wait to give you that result as coming up Knox is going to be mini final of the women out there on the water. But before we go into the action, let's have a little look-see at the best recaps of that last heat. Wesley Brito, you are a finalist here at the first Pure Wave GWA event. How does it feel to be a finalist in your home spot? Man, it feels super great. I was waiting for this since a long time, so now we finally got it. Super stoked. You scored two huge waves. I think one of your scores was a 9.00, the other was just like a really high 8. So a combined score was super high. You just look to be having so much fun out there. Just talk us through what it's like to wing foil on this wave. Man, this wave is super special because it's like, it gets super big, it's close to the rocks, it's really critical, you have to be really careful, but at the end it's super good, it's like one of the best waves in the world for this. And lastly, before we let you go and prepare for the final, you're one of the bigger guys on tour, what sort of kit are you riding? We've got a lot of the viewers at home on the live stream, they want to know what our riders are on, so, you know, what's the front wing, what size wing are you on as well? So, um, always like, my bigger wing I use is a 5 meter, I don't go bigger than 5. I have a 65 liter board from Fanatic and I have a 82 mast, a 750 carve and a 216 back wing with a 60 fuselage. 
Well, there you have. They're the ingredients that cook everything up for Wesley. So good luck in the final. It's time to head back out on the water. Thank you, boys, and congratulations, Wesley, into the grand final. We are going to see. But now, talking about the mini final out there on the water, Bowen van der Linden is going up against Elena Moreno, and then we will see in the super final, Muna White, Nia Suarez. Muna, second final of this of, I'm going to say combined event because she won the kiting and now in the wing for talk about a, a Wonder Woman out there. You know, Joe, it is so exciting to see Muna. You know, she's from Oahu. You know, I had not met Muna yet, but wouldn't it be amazing if we saw a clean sweep? I, I can't believe those words are coming out of my mouth. Nicole, I know you're watching this in Spain. I am really sorry. Clearly, my alliances are with the, the teenager from Tarifa, Nia Suardias. But I have to say, I've been so impressed, Joe, with Muna. She has just come out of nowhere and said, hey, I belong here too. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm very impressed with Nia as well that not being in a location that has waves that is Tarifa she is improving ride after ride and she is now going to have to go up against probably one of the best wind sport surfers there are with Muna White but now look at the back out there Chris there are some absolute bombs coming on there we can see uh, Bowen van der Linden out there in the yellow. And Elena just about to drop in. We couldn't even see her because of the set that was coming through. So here we have her, the Cabrina Rider out of Gran Canaria. Yeah, so this is the rider who's literally come out of nowhere. Elena Moreno riding for Cabrina Spain and just the biggest smile on her face. She's so stoked. You know what? She said, you know what, guys? I'm not putting it on the rocks in my first wave. Yeah, I think that's a smart move. We've seen quite a few riders. Also, it can shake you up. But then, hey, some people need that adrenaline to kind of put them into the zone. In the end, everybody has a different way of competing. Now, Bo and Van der Linden here. So, Bo dropping in a little bit further to the right. This is a nice wave just coming out of New Zealand. Had a lot of travel to get here, as I know you guys were very far away, but she is way out there on the shoulder, Chris. Yeah, so what Bo's doing right now is a real veteran move. She got a nice score there. That's going to score a four or a five. You know, it's not going to it's not gonna set any records, but what it does is it builds her scorecard. Yeah, exactly. Same thing in freestyle. If you go out and huck a giant 720 and crash and blow out your gear, you You're can dumb. be done. So what you do is you do the tricks that you understand or the, you take a smaller wave you can wait for the sets, but what we've seen from Punta is that sometimes it's few and far between. So I think what we saw with Wesley against Ugo is Wesley got two phenomenal first waves. What that did is it energized him. It yes. showed, yes. it proved to him. He knew that I belong here. I am ready for this. This is my title. Yeah, and you could see just the fire growing and growing inside him. But Ugo not letting up at all because it was pretty much every set wave that Wesley got, Ugo got the one behind or vice versa. And I mean, what a heat because I think in that heat, we probably had four to five good sets that we haven't seen yet. Yeah, they got some really good waves, and I, I have to give a shout-out to Ugo Marin. He is an amazing human. He is not the most fiery competitor. He's not the guy who's going to go protest. He's not the guy that's going to go, you know, cause a, a stink over thing. He just wants to go out and have fun and vibe and ride big waves, and he's amazing at it. We've seen him do it all week, and he put up an amazing battle against Wesley, but Wesley just is riding on a different level today. So I am looking at, it looks like that's Bo coming in. Bo van der Linden, the North Rider from the Netherlands. She is back on tour. She was the 2021 Freestyle GWA Women's World Champion, but unfortunately had a injury training to her shoulder, which required surgery and almost an entire year off. So we see Bo on a good one right here. Oh, there she goes. That's looking like double overhead right there. Bo pumps to get in front of that section. Real critical. Takes a nice big swoop. Looking good. That's a great way for Bo. So that's going to be two good scores. Liam, what would you think of that? 
Ah, uh, Chris, it's good to be back up in the booth with you. I've just been down on the beach, and uh, I must say, the vibes down there, I mean, the energy that is also for the local crew. I mean, obviously, Wesley Brito coming out of Cape Verde. I just had a little chat with him, as you saw on the live there, and uh, he is ready. He is fired up, this guy. I mean, talk about having fun out there. I mean, he was just throwing a nice few aerials. I don't know if you saw the big old back loop as well that he did, backflip, back loop. I mean, nuts stuff from the big Cape Verdean, but... You know, it's all systems go for our women. This is the mini final, so this will decide who finishes in third and who finishes in fourth. I mean, whoever it is, I just take my hat off to these ladies because it is absolutely pumping, as you can see on your screens, front and center. Elena Moreno dropping in currently in second position. Yeah, and it looks like we got Bo out the backside, so we are getting just what we want in Cabo Verde. We are getting waves for finals day. So Bo on a good one. Really strong showing for her. Um, Elena, who has had a Cinderella run through this, is going to need some good waves because Bo is a, you know, she is a world champion. So she knows what to do. She's riding this section. She's showing the judges. She knows what to do. And it, it's, it, this is great, Liam, because just a few days ago, we didn't know if we were going to be able to compete at Punta. And this has been amazing. Yeah, the fact that we always, that we, you know, I remember we had the discussion with the crew the night before and we looked at the long-term range forecast and thought, well, firstly, we've got to, finish the whole competition before the forecast goes a little bit poo and then you know we had to then make the decision well you know forecast is looking good but is punta going to be working because you know it didn't look like all the stars were going to align we came down in the morning and it was flat and the question was do we then move now to kite beach and then you know last couple of days we were you know fortunate enough that the conditions sort of came through in the afternoon we kept all our fingers crossed we stayed here at punta and then yesterday absolutely fired for us i mean probably better than what we had for the kite surf finals conditions wise and then today it's been non-stop from start to finish yeah this has been an amazing week so far liam um i'm exhausted <laughs> what it's just been crazy because it this is what happens at these things I, i've i've had the opportunity to travel with the gwa the past 18 months or so and the only way i can really describe it is you get too many cooks in the kitchen <laughs> you know, Too many. and what I mean by that is you get everyone who's local, you get everyone who's a big shot here or there. Maybe someone won a very small windsurfing competition 40 years ago at their local spot. So now they're an expert and they're going to tell you where to go. So what, what you see is that nobody can decide on what to do. We should move to Kai Beach. We shouldn't. And really the pressure is on the GWA and they have done an amazing job about being really informative about how they're deciding on things they've been in, they've been informing the riders telling them like look this is what we want we want ponta and we want it big and windy we don't want to go to kite beach so that's been great and what's happened is liam every day the conditions have worked they've just been firing they haven't just worked they've been absolutely firing for us it's been great to see because even before when we arrived at the competition it was like we had it in the back of our minds that you know we were probably going to run the kite surf event here at punta and then we were probably going to move over to to kite beach anyway and then you know we saw some of our wing foiling riders big impact was that we saw we actually saw them go out of punta and train and actually get amongst this wave and then that was where we were like hang on a minute like these guys are really tearing up this wave let's put all focus now on punta we've got the setup here we've got everything in place you know why do we want to have the effort of then pushing everything, taking a whole morning out, taking the risk of using one morning to set up at Kite Beach to then maybe it not work? Because that was a thing as well, Chris. I mean, we had, when we had the discussion, we were like, okay, we can move to Kite Beach, but if we go over to Kite Beach and it doesn't work and then Punta kicks off, we would have made probably the worst decision possible. So taking the risk and just taking that little bit of a step back and thinking, hey, let's just relax here. We'll stay at Punta, and then it came in. I mean, great call. Big shout out to our judge team, our sports team. You know, those guys are the best in the business, and a lot of them are past athletes as well. You know, they've, they've been on the tour a little bit themselves, and, you know, everyone's very well-rounded. These guys know exactly what they're in for when they come to each of these spots. No one is a newbie here, and, you know, it clearly shows in the decision-making at each event. Yeah, those guys, that's a really tough job. I mean... I've done a tiny bit of judging at some of the youth events, and I was just shocked how hard it was and how close these things were, and I actually know what I'm looking at. So for the judges, I mean, they're in there 6, 8, 12 hours a day, 
you know, they are hungry. They, they are humans too. So the thing is, is, is like, as we sit in this little booth up here and the sun's on us, it's like, I'm hot and a bit tired, but the reality is the judges have it way harder. So one of the exercises we do when, when I hear a bunch of riders at dinner complaining about stuff, I'll be like, okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's a trick. Three seconds later, what was the score? Oh, guess what? Here's another trick over there. What was that score? And you can see the riders kind of freeze up when they realize that it's not like they're sitting there eating hors d'oeuvres and hanging out talking about what the score should be. They've got two seconds at the most to make a quick decision. And what rider was it? Was that a back loop or a, a back flip? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough call for our judges. And that, again, one of the reasons why we have that seeding round is because it's helped with the just gen, general elimination ladder. We've done a few events in the past where we've actually had three athletes on the water. And you can imagine if the riders don't have, you know, different color lycras, you know, some of them, as we know, you know, we have a few F1 sponsored, Duotone, and they all ride the same sort of kit, same color wings. And before you know it, you've got three riders in the water that are pretty much identical. And from afar, if you're not placed in the right position, it's really hard to identify who's who and you know judges cannot take their eyes off the water so big shout out to you guys you always do an amazing job at all our events whether that's GWA GKA you know it's great to travel the world with you all and now six minutes 30 seconds on the clock you know this is where the judging has to be really key because it is the final heat this is where we are going to be crowning our champions in the next over the next sort of I'd say 90 minutes we're going to be crowning but right at the moment Bo is leading this mini final so currently sitting in first position and third overall yeah so right now we've got Bo and Elena Elena has come from the Canary Islands and absolutely put a stamp on her first GWA competition you know she's here to have fun we had an interview earlier on the beach and she's just fired up I said you know you just rode a really critical wave and did an air at the end what were you thinking and she goes I wasn't thinking so <laughs> I think that Elena has made a big push into the mini final Bo is a veteran though Liam so if unless some differentiating big waves come through. I think Bo Vanderlinden is enough of a competitor. She's going to be out there taking priority. She is in the lead. It looks like she's about two and a half points ahead. Um, I think she is, we might have a little set coming through. So we'll see. Still five minutes left. Anyone's game. Yeah, five, just over five minutes, as you mentioned, 6.97 Bo there. And just starting to get involved. But now on your screen, Alina Moreno is on this wave and i can just have a little look she's going to want to, want to improve on a 2.30 oh, wave shoot going just down saw though. that yeah unfortunately going down on that one i can see bo out the back as well on yet another wave so bo's lowest score is a 2.97 is this wave going to be one to improve yeah bo's on a good one right now so she cuts around elena elena looks like she kept it together Bo is going to make another swooping turn, which will improve on the 2.97. So Bo working this one in, showing that she belongs here, that she wants to be on the podium. Um, that's a good way for Bo. And here we have some scores just starting to be calculated from our judging team from those last two ways. So shortly we'll be looking at improving, maybe improving some of the current scores on the boards. But highlight now is Bo on your screen just making... Most out of this one, I wonder what size, what length uh, marsh she's on. Probably around an 85 centimeter, 90 centimeter, you reckon, Chris? Yeah, most of the pros are in the 82 to 85 range. Um, anything bigger tends to wobble and sway around a bit. There's just too much flex, Liam. A lot of the racers will go on the longer mass. Like if you see some of the guys in the free fly slalom, which you know we're not doing here, they're on 105s. And the reason for that is they can hold down more foil in a bigger wing. That's a fantastic point there. So, I mean, this sport just has so much variety to it. There's so much you can do, whether that's equipment or going to, like, different locations and doing different sort of disciplines. So, I mean, it's just a really, it's just, you know, always changing. And uh, if you think about it, it's actually quite, you know, a very new water sport as well. It's, you know, we see a lot of the windsurfers now transitioning into into the wing foiling so great to see and that's why, you know, this wave discipline is so good because we're seeing a lot of those windsurfer riders come in and I think that this event over in Cape Verde is going to attract a lot more people to join the tour for the waves. Yeah, here, so here's Bo out the back. We got the camera on her. She's on a great one. Mm. Really fast section right there. She's going to swoop down, make a turn, cut back towards the critical section so the judges are going to love that. That's a great score for Bo. So right now Bo is looking pretty strong oh she's going into the really good section saying i belong in third place 
Great ride there from Bo. Very, just so good in the ways, you know. I went, saw her name on the leaderboard as well, and I just thought, yep, yeah, Bo's going to be up there. You know, that's going to be, you know, potentially a podium finish for Bo. And, uh, yeah, she's uh, not putting her foot wrong at the moment. I mean, sitting in first position in this heat, just under three minutes left on the clock. And you can see here, Elena just pumping, trying to get back onto this wave because she needs to try and get Bo. As Bo's on an 8.4, Elena 4.63. Final 60 seconds, Chris just went down to the beach, and I tell you what, the vibes, the Cape Verdean music is there, the boys, the tribes are starting to come out, the knees are starting to get loosey-goosey. I mean, it's like war trance out there. You can see, it's like when the Maoris do the whole shaka, you can just see and feel the energy. I would not want to be up against Wesley right now. You know, I kind of wish we had the camera on us right now because I'm cracking up listening to that lead-in. I don't even know where you get this stuff. I'm going to have to go back and study. I'm going to go back and get some old Joe-isms. I know red sky in this red red flag in the sky. That's a good one. I'm going to drop that one. And Liam had some funny ones. But I'm going to come back with some games. So. Uh, we're going to have you in the booth more than often, mate. And it is great. Thank you very much for coming into here. Absolutely great to have you here on the team and what conditions all i'm going to ask for is that for these two finals we have sets like that heat from ugo and wesley that's how we want to end this one off absolutely i mean the vibe down here has been just amazing i i got to talk to hendrix and and me too i met me too for the first time the guy is such a legend he's so humble and he said to me joe he goes Man, you guys are crushing it on the wings here. Maybe next year I'll do it. Oh, that is mic drop, headset drop, computer drop. Now I know a few people that are going to be trembling. Because when Me Too puts his head to something, watch out. Okay, so this is a blast out to F1 in France. You need to get Me Too a kit for here. He's going to want a 530 escape for sure, an 85 mast. How about like a 4.6 36-liter carbon S for me too? Oh, he will go bananas. And, of course, the new strikes. Uh, Anyways. Chloe, you know you got to sort him out. There it yep, is. Raphael get to work, sent Chloe. that stuff over. Red flag in the sky. We are just waiting for results of that last heat. While we do, we are now going to have the mini final of the men going out there in the water. So we can see there are the two players, Ugo Marina coming out of France, up against Zane Schweitzer out of Hawaii. I reckon he had a clean shave there when he got that photo, looking nice and nice and slick there, mate. Yeah, I got to be honest with you, I'm a little bit jealous of Zane's haircut. Back in the U.S., I call that a summer cut. Uh -huh. And it's like, get out of the shower, one wipe, and you're good. You're good to go. So I think that might be in my future, you know, go uh, a little more aerodynamic. But this one is going to be good, Joe. I hope we get some bombs. Uh, we're still showing red flag, and we have a set coming through. Ugo Marin out there on the new Strike V3. He is frothing to get into this set. Yeah. He is the experienced competitor. He tacks and goes back out. So Zane, another very experienced guy in the wave. 
I feel like against Benoit, Zayn did not get to show his best. No, I think so too. I mean, it was always going to be close in between those two boys. And there we can see some of the athlete. That was Lena making her way out. I'm going to find out the results, Chris. Lead us into this heat. Okay, so right now we have the yellow flag in the sky, Joe. That means we are less than one minute away from starting this. Green flag coming up. Hugo Marin. The Rob Machado of wing foiling. This guy from France is as smooth as it comes. He rides the biggest bombs. He rides with Tituan. Okay, this just in. It is confirmed. Bo Vanderlinden, you are on the podium. Congratulations to the North Rider from the Netherlands. Nice one, Bo, taking the win. But I'm going to say it, a big round of applause also to Elena because she threw down, coming out of Grand Canary, representing the Magma Shop there with the Cabrina gear. Congratulations to her, Felicidades, because she absolutely went bononcas here. And it is so cool to see the level of the winning wing falling. But now the Frenchman looks like he's going to be starting off. There's a set coming our way. Here we go. Oh, boy. Hugo Marin is in a perfect spot. Green flag is up. He's in a critical section. This might be what Hugo needs to get on the podium. He is going to swoop back towards that critical section. A hard bottom turn. Joe, Hugo wants this podium. And here's Zane. Oh, Zane going down there on the end. And we've even got the reggaeton music happening down here on the beach as it is starting to get a vi. Rompe, 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 rompe. But it looks like Ugo Manin is going to have the advantage after that wave. Zane going down, but not in the impact zone. Plenty of time, plenty of time. So you can see Zane's classic carving style. We saw this in New Zealand. We had a toe foil contest, and Zane gets really low on the board and squats and just does these crazy cutbacks. Unfortunately, that wave wasn't quite as big as he was hoping. So what happened was it just didn't form enough for him there, and he kind of fell out the back. Yeah, no, that was unfortunate. It, didn't, it wasn't able to pull it together, but still, as we said, 16 minutes on the clock, 18-minute heats. We have a 12 wave attempts for each one of these athletes. The top two are the ones that count to be numero uno here, which would mean a third position on the podium. Zane, you know, one of the first times we've had him here on the wing form. We got him out there in Lucat last year, He's came to New Zealand with you guys. And then now, first time we have him here on the waves. Ah, uh, Ugo top turn, racking it around. Oh my gosh, Joe. Ugo's on a bomb. This, These are Ugo's conditions. He's going to turn back. Oh, Zane's on one as well. So we've got a chance with Ugo Marin, the Frenchman, the F1 rider. He's so silky smooth. Oh, yeah. wow. I don't know. I think he just lost his foil, but... Let's cut to Zane in the bottom corner there. Zane in a fun one. So Zane's going backside. So for everyone at home, Zane is right foot forward or goofy foot. So this is much harder for him on this wave. Yeah, and he makes that real Zane. critical section. He got that wing up high. He might pull a little air here to try and differentiate himself. Yeah, Zane there. Also another, not another good wave. We're going to be getting replays. There's the replay of the of Zane. Like you say, crouching down. Nice turn. Almost lost the fall there. Going out. Keeps it together, though. Big carving top turn. Back to the power section. Three decent size hacks. This is going to be a good score for Zane. I reckon Zane might have got a little bit of the upper hand on that wave. Wow, Zane's foil actually came out of the water at the beginning of that replay. And, I mean, that, the skill to be able to continue to ride is, like, off the charts. That's, that's just, I can't even believe that. Yeah, I mean, he was saying to us here in the interview that he does a lot of slack line. There we can see another Hawaiian, a Muna White there, going out on the, Cabrina, uh, on the Cabrina gear, ready to rumble. Zane said he does a lot of slack line because it helps him hugely with balance. Looks like it's working for him, and he's getting busy one more time as there are set sack into the horizon. Oh, you do not want to be going down there. Oh, boy, Joe, that's a tough one for Zane. I hope, well, and Ugo's behind him. 
This is actually going to be a little bit sketchy for Ugo because he, his his concentration is broken because Zane is in front of him. So not only does he have to navigate a very big wave, but he can't hit his buddy. Yeah, and Zane, the thing that really impresses me with Zane is he's so used to getting hit by Whitewater. I mean, you know, this guy goes out in Pierre. He goes out in some of the biggest waves there are. And look at that. He is just powering through, mm. not letting go of his gear, trying to get past that impact zone. And there it is, up on the, up on the full, swimming away. Is he going to be able to make it past this one? It's going to be close. It's going to be close. Oh, Zane's, oh, that's not good right there. Um, right now, his leash is being flexed and, and pulled apart. He, it looks like his wing is still together. We're on the replay. That was a great wave. This one is really close right now. Um, Zane is so committed. What happened was is he came off foil and touched his board. So uh, Zane's taking it a, a little bit of a beating right now. Yeah, he is taking an absolute beating, but not letting go of his equipment all the way from the impact zone down to this side. And it looks like, I'm not sure if he, yep, okay, so he is going back out there. All right, so Zane, it does look like he's got to a good position, but now eyes on Ugamanin out the back. F1 rider coming in. This is a good wave, Chris. Oh, my gosh. Ugo has a bomb right now. He's going so fast right here. He is definitely going to do an air at the end of this one. Nope. Through the glassy section, that is going to improve his... Oh, look at the scores just dropped. And that last one is definitely going to be an improvement for Ugo. Yeah, Ugo has a 6.57 and a 6.83. Zane, an 8.03 and a 5.10. So we are just waiting. And he's improved that again by the 5.77 of that wave where he got caned. So there it is. It is Zane in the lead by 0.4 of a point with a 13.8. But we are waiting for the scores of that last wave from Ugo. So close in between these guys. And we can see out of the booth here that Zane is getting back into position. Yeah, that's good to see Zane getting back out there. We're watching the replay of Ugo Marins. That was a great last wave. Um, man, this is another one. We're only halfway through this, Joe. And both riders, toe to toe, both these guys say, I want to be on the podium. Yeah, Ugo, a nice little inside roller just going off of the shoulder here. And uh, he's going to be going back out to that top boy to see if he can jump in on yet another swell. As we are just 10 minutes left on the timer. And both of the boys making their way back out. As we are looking at scores, it is the Hawaiian leading the pack so far. And after taking an absolute caning there on the inside. Yeah, Zane knows how to take a beating. You know, we've talked about him riding Jaws and some of his uh, West Side breaks on Maui. And, you know, he comes from a family of surfers and watermen. He knows how to take a licking. I mean, I'm sure what Zane is super worried about when these small waves for him is that he doesn't damage his equipment. Yeah, absolutely. And especially here on the wing, and you want to get that wing away from the fore. You can see none of the guys using a leash here because you do not want that wing going past because normally the wings can take a beating. They can take a beating on the rocks, but as soon as that foil nips them, it's game over. Yeah, one of the issues you have, like we saw this in Taiba a lot because there was so much shore break, mm. it was really hard to get out. Like it was taking 20 minutes to get out. And your wings get what's called bagged out. They might not necessarily get smashed or shredded, but what happens is they get they take such a beating or so much white water actually on top of the canopies that they stretch. Yep. And then they're flapping. Basically, you're sailing around with a garbage bag. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's exactly the same thing with kites. When your kite goes down and the wave just drags it through, it gets attacked, and then, it, yeah, it just has a little stretch, kind of, you know, ending up like that garbage bag you're saying. But now nothing but anything far from garbage out here on the water because whoa we have zane in the lead of 13.80 third position at the moment if he can keep this mini final of the men coming up next we will have the grand finale of the women and then the grand final of the men 
And I tell you what, Chris, I'm looking at another set wave coming our way. So that's Zane on the back. He's got a real nice one, real meaty right above his head. He goes up, he hacks at the top, he turns around. Oh my God, the judges are gonna love that turn. He went right back into the most critical section. Yeah, this is why Zane's getting some of those higher scores. He really is going back almost in front of that whitewash. And he's going to have to try and pump and get past this one. Or he is going to be going down near the rocks. All right, letting go. But, I mean, that is a good way for Zane. And he is going to have to try and get out of the way. Ugo, here he comes. He's got one all the way from the back. As Ugo also had a wave on that set. All right, there we have Ugo up and over all the way around. Not missing a beat out there on the water. And this was also a very nice carving surf. But is it going to be enough? Because that last one from Zane, he was going vertically up and vertically down. Yeah, we're kind of at this point. This is a new format, a new competition, Joe. So these riders really don't know what the judges are truly looking for. There's actually been talk among Ugo's friends and camp that he rides almost too fast. So the judges can't tell that he's in these super critical sections where you get some of these riders who are going much slower and then they're taking a hack at the top. But it, it looks like it's more critical, even though Ugo is swooping in. He's on a tiny 530 escape foil. So he is just flying. Um, boy, this one is so close. 0.4 of a point right now. Um, Ugo Marin has six minutes left, and if he gets a bomb, we'll see what he can do. Yeah, I mean, it's got a, it's definitely got to be a set wave. There, you know, an 8.90 and an 8.03, so a 16.93 total. Zane coming into a world of his south on this one. I mean, those are scores that he could be going up against some of the best scores we saw there from Wesley Brito, the Starboard free wing rider. But Ugo Marin, it ain't over until it's over. This guy has elements of sleaze out there but he needs to do two completely new scores and that is with the time ticking but there is a set he can still maybe pull this off yeah ugo is he's in a tough position now i'm gonna call him the french machado he's out there he's just having fun he's ripping huge carbs but the thing is is i think what we're seeing from zane's last score is the judges want to see him cut back harder into that impact zone so instead of going down the line they want to see him cutting back in front of the white water that's we, better that's better he's doing it there we might still see an air out of this one zane has one out there come on hugo send us to 360. so uh, zane's zane. still ripping yeah out the back and growing oh making his way past that section here on the inside Straight line in a bit, but he's going to have to bend it out of that one. Good wave once again from Zane. He is in the zone at the moment. And like you were saying, Chris, I think Ugo just isn't going back into that impact zone as much. And that is what the judges are looking for. Well, it's just these are two very different style riders. Zane is going a little bit slower, but he's also in the impact zone longer. He's taking big hacks right in there. He's in like the critical section right there. Ugo, on the other hand, is flowing through every wave. All right, well, we're, while we're waiting for the boys to go back out to the uh, upwind mark for more set waves, it looks like we have Liam down there on the beach, and he is with the third position winner of the mini final, Bowen van der Linden. Bo, a, first, a third place finish here at the first wave stop of the year. How does that feel? Uh, it feels amazing. The conditions were really pumping. It was uh, really nice. And the wind actually in my last heat was finally getting a bit better. It was a bit shifty before. So yeah, I had a lot of fun on the water and I uh, want to go out again. Hopefully they stop soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, abso it's absolutely firing out there. And a uh, few wipeouts we saw, but uh, you know, nothing like you had you, in Taiba last year, I remember at the end, you know, your wing was completely in half. How does that Taiba wipeout compare to the one here in Cape Verde? 
I think in the beginning I was a bit more nervous for this spot, but in the end, compared to Taiba, it was just the perfect wave. It's really, you can read it really easily, so in the end it was really cool. You have a few chances on getting on the rocks, but it's part of the game, I guess. I know, I know. We don't want to make it easy for you guys out here in Cape Verde. So for now, enjoy the moment. That's a third place finish for you. We look forward to seeing you at the future stops for the rest of the year. I know you've got a busy year ahead, so now you can sit back and relax, and then as soon as we're done, you can get back out on the water. Yeah. Anything to say for anyone watching at home? Oh well, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, that's it I guess. <laughs> I don't have anything else. There we go, Bowen van der Linden everybody. <laughs>Yeah, so we're we're looking at the winding seconds of this one. We're about 2 minutes and 25 seconds left. Ugo Marin sitting on a 13.4. Zane Schweitzer in control with a 16.93. Zane, here's Ugo on the replay. Ugo is going to be looking for a big set wave at this point. Um, he is such a flowy rider. He's really controlled all the time. Um, I think sometimes he's so controlled and fast on the waves that it doesn't make it seem as hard at what he's doing, Joe. Yeah, I mean, both of the boys, they know how to throw down here. They know what's on the line, third position. But yeah, Zane, at the moment, he has really stepped up the gear. Ugo, he is staying around the six to seven point mark. What has he got to do? But you've been saying about this 360 every single wave long. I reckon he's just got to go for it. Yeah, I'm just, a lot of times it's hard for the riders because they really don't know where they're sitting. Um, you know, I don't even know what the rule books say about having assistance on what your scores are, but that is going to be something that as this discipline develops that these riders are going to want to know. It's kind of the same thing in freestyle. So yeah. here, I'm looking out the back. Ugo is on a big one. So there he cuts real oh, deep into that nice. one. Nice. So let's see if he go, goes back and gets even more critical. Oh, I mean, that's pretty darn good there, Joe. So let's see what they think about that. Um, one minute to go. Yeah, that was good wave selection. He did get all the way back, all the way down in that critical section of the wave. And he's going to be milking this one all the way to the end, but picks out. And that is going to be a good score for him. I got a feeling it's not going to be enough. Yeah, Zane's sitting on an 8, 9, and an 8. Uh, it might just not be enough. A little too late for Ugo. But let's see, because we still have 30 seconds left. There is another set, so... I mean, if I had a, an earpiece into Ugo right now, I would say, Ugo, you need to send it. Yeah. So here comes Zane coming in on a victory wave, but Ugo has a chance. He is on the outside, and there are waves coming. I mean, I think this is the perfect time to drop the line, go big or go home, mate. Yeah, right now you got to just say to Ugo, like, Ugo, this is it. Absolutely risk it. So maybe we see an air trick on his second wave and he sneaks something here. But right mm. now, Zane in control. Yeah, nice wave here from Ugo. So he's going on the inside but deciding against it. So I do not think that is going to be enough. But we are going to wait for the confirmations of the scores coming in. And coming up next, we are going to be having the grand final of the women, which is going to be in between uh, Nia Suadias going up against... Muna White, what a day, what a week for Muna with those two with the win on the kite. Can she pull it off here on the ways? But watch out for Nia, the team from Tarifa. She is hungry. Who's it going to be? But before that happens, let's go to the recaps of that mini final of the men.
All right, everybody, all right, everybody. I can start to hear the noise out here on the beach as it is final time, Chris, final time. Who have we got going out there? Wow, Joe, we got Muna White, the Hawaiian who showed up here last week, won the women's kite competition, and then came in and just threw down throughout these women's rounds. Muna had some of the highest scores we've seen in the waves, and she is proving that she is a contender for this. She's going up against the teen from Tarifa, Nia Suardias, who was the favorite going into this. But, Joe, I this one is up for grabs. Yeah, I mean, it is anybody's money, anybody's money. So we are waiting. I'm looking over the side here. There might be a protest of that heat in between Zane and Ugo. So we've had scores up. We have waiting for those results to come in, but I think there might be a protest over here. So we'll get that information to you as soon as possible. But yeah, we will have to see if that result will, be, will stand. At the moment, it is Zane Schweitzer taking that third position here at this event. But obviously, maybe if there's a protest, they have to have a revision and then they will determine the result. So we will get the info to you as soon as possible. But at the moment now, finals out here on the water. So we got the women's final right now. We got Muna White from Hawaii and Nia Suardias from Tarifa. Uh, this is going to be a battle. Nia has just absolutely blossomed this week in the waves. She is just just turned 16, Joe, and is shredding. You know, I know she was nervous about even going out here. So what we have seen from this young 16-year-old is like, not only can I ride here, Joe, but I can rip here. She was throwing airs in the most critical sections. Here we got Muna striking first, the Hawaiian from Oahu on a fun one. Oh, just going down. And yeah. there's Nia in the back, Joe. Yeah, Nia coming in as well. She is no letting up at all. So both of these ladies are going to have a wave underneath their belt. Muna there going down a little bit early. Nia here on a little inside roller. I mean, we know this is going to come down to the sets. We've got more than 15 minutes to go, 17-minute heats. They are the top two scores, are the ones that are going to give you the kudos, the shackers, and the love from our judges. And there we can see that little replay of a little bit of a cutback and a little bit of a wiggle there from Nia. Yeah, what she's doing right now, we've talked about it all week, is she is getting something under her belt. Yes. You know, we're, what are we, four minutes in on this one or three minutes, and Nia already has a score. So Muna fell on her wave, so it won't be as high, and right now, now it almost turns into a mind game. As Nia rides by, Muna's still trying to get up. They're in a bit of a lull, so the advantage is to Nia right now. Yes, no, no, it definitely looks like the advantage is there, but we all know that the set waves are going to be coming through because this is a final and Punta Preto is going to be sending us, going to be sending us those set waves making their way and we want to see finals with the best possible situations out there. All right, so no, that is official. Just got the uh, word in. Zane Schweitzer has advanced over Ugo Marin, meaning that Zane is third over here in Cape Verde. Congratulations to the starboard free wing rider. Great surfing out there. But also, Chris, Ugo, this guy doesn't get enough credit. He is absolutely ripping here. Some of the waves he went out, hit it in the critical place. He's always out there in the mix. Had a very hard draw getting into fourth position here in Cape Verde. I take my hat off to you, Ugo. Yeah, I want to congratulate both the boys. Um, you know, at this level, there's 25 guys out of this contest who could win. You know, Joe, it's just so hard. You've got Cowley, you've got Mizu, you've got Noe, you've got Leon. you got guys that rip and, and really at any point can win. Wesley, Hendrick, so Titouan. So the point is, is Ugo is an amazing rider. Uh, he's so flowy. I think sometimes it, he actually can, it can look too easy. 
per se. But in this case, Zane was the better rider today. Zane from Maui came. He was in New Zealand. He was fired up there. I'm really excited for the young Maui kid. He's having a baby in June. He just got his first podium at the GWA. This is a great one for Zane. Yeah, a little rowdy's going to be coming here saying, uh, saying a big hello over there to Kim, who I presume is watching and is very happy now knowing that Zane has got that third position. So, yeah, great work there from the Star Wars rider. And I know he's going to have a smile and a shaka on his face. Great work. But now back to the water. We have Nia Suadias in the commanding lead. But both of these ladies have only really taken off on a small wave. Yeah, Joe, we have not seen a set yet for the ladies. Uh, we are eight minutes into this. I'm looking on the horizon, hoping to see some bigger bumps. We want to end this with a fist fight. We don't want these little waves. Okay, Nia dropping in on a better wave. There's sets coming at us, so you can see Muna there also at the back. So eyes on Nia. Going backside, Muna, the regular, going. So Goofy versus regular out there. Nia all the way down. Muna has got a bit of a size for her, going a little bit straighter. This is starting to jack up. She's going to have to speed it if she wants to get past Ooh. this section. Muna is in survival mode out there at the moment, and I reckon that was a smart move because that wave could have landed her on the rocks. Yeah, Muna was right on the edge there. Uh, the Cabrina rider from Oahu was basically just squeezing her toes onto that board, saying, I need to not overfoil right now. Yeah. No, no, she was definitely pressuring down and waiting for scores to be hidden. It also, it looks like a good one there for Nia as we're waiting. But Nia not missing a single second as she is out there on the wave. And look at the eyes of the drone. Eyes in the sky. We're our finalists here of the GWA Wingfoot and World Tour World Cup here in Cape Verde, Punta Preda on the island of Sao. It looks like we might have Nia and Muna looking on another set wave. They're looking for the big ones. These women know how to ride the big waves. So what we're looking for, uh, there goes uh, Nia turning onto one. Muna looks like she may have just turned onto one. Oh, wow, that is absolutely amazing drone footage we're looking at, Joe. Yeah, no, I mean, those that... There's nothing like a view from above. I mean, who wouldn't want to be a bird or fly on the wall now, right? And get in those, the mind of these girls and just see them. Look at that image. Wow, they're riding so around the corner. We're actually having to lean forward, but I guess the swell has just shifted a tiny bit. So it's upwind a little bit. But there's Muna on another good one. This one's looking really close. Uh, boy. Muna continuing on riding. She's looking to improve on her score. Great drone shot. Yeah, Muna's got there at the moment. She's got a 4.33 and a 1.83. And here we can see the replay of that last one. That is going to be a good score. Beautiful wave cutting back to the white water. We can see the Karina rider just making the most of these smaller set waves. These girls are easing into it. And there we can see Muna. Just getting ready to get back out. And then Ania Swadia, she has a 2.77 and a 4.67. So also two good scores for her. But I reckon after that last wave of Muna, we might be seeing a change up on the leaderboard. Yeah, basically it's really coming down to wave selection, Joe. There's not a lot of bombs rolling through. We are 11 minutes into this one. So right now both ladies know that uh, they're going to need a big one. Yeah, they both know that had to go. And there we can see Muna just taking off and looking out of the corner of the booth. I can see Nia all the way out the back. But there we have your Cabrina athlete, Muna White, getting out of the horizon, getting us dizzy here with the old drone as they get back into position. Just under nine minutes left on the clock of the grand final GWA Wing Foiling World Tour. The opening event for the Wave Discipline here in Cape Verde. And what a week it has been here for this combination event as we have also the, uh, G the Qatar Airway GK Kite World Tour, the Kiting World Tour that was over here. And Chris, it looks like maybe another set is coming our way. 
Yeah, and it also looks like Muna's uh, second wave score has improved. So she is out front with a 9.66. Nia Suardias sitting on an 8.34. She has not caught the wave she's looking for yet, Joe. I know Nia's got more in the tank. So what she's doing is she is nervously waiting for a set. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you had uh, Cowley Seadi uh, in here before, and a lot of the guys, the Josh Angulos, all of the boys that ride here, this is a wave you wait for the set. This is not a wave that you scavenge on the inside because if you get caught on that inside, you are going to pay the consequences. But Nia here going on another wave. She's keeping herself busy as she's wanting to get maybe get a little bit looser. So when that set wave comes, she is ready to go. Yeah, so what we just saw to Nia there might be a little frustration from the teenager. Uh, she tried to milk that one. Oh, here we go. She does attack onto a big one and says, Muna, if you don't want it, I'll take it. Yeah, there we have Nia. Dropping in. There we are. Beautiful view there. But again, a smaller wave, Chris. She is not going for the sets. But is it going to be enough? Because I tell you what, scavenging the three, scavenging the fours. You know, I think she's playing the game that she doesn't see set waves coming. She wants to keep herself busy, but she's got to be careful because if she takes off on a wave and is out of position for the set, she could leave the doors open for Muna. Yeah, right now I know she's looking down at her watch, and she's she's just under seven minutes, which is actually a long time, but still it starts to get terrifying as an athlete on the water. Mm. So right now neither neither woman really knows who's winning. No, not so at all. Not at it's all. It's too close to call, and... It does look like that the Hawaiian Muna is waiting patiently on the outside for a set wave. So right now, Nia is looking to improve that score. Her backup score, Nia's, is looking like a 3.67, which is, is quite low for her. So it's not going to take much for Nia to improve. No, I reckon we'll be going to be seeing that. I mean, come on, we've still got just above six minutes to go. And we are starting to get nervous in here because this is the grand final. This is the business. This is crowning of who is going to be our queen here of the island of Sal. Muna White or Nia Swadiefs? We will soon find out. So, Joe, I, I, I don't even know if I can let the words come out of my mouth because Nia is such an amazing young woman. But it would be absolutely historical for Muna White from Hawaii, the U.S.-based rider, to win both the kite and the wing. It would. I mean, to come back, and let's not forget, Muna, the last time she competed was at this break four years ago in 2019 where she had the win on the kite. Wow, that's amazing. I Like I said, I, I'm not familiar with Muna. We just met on the beach earlier. Um, it looks like there might be some energy on the horizon, Joe. Yeah, it looks like there's some, I don't know if it's Durazo or the electric bunny, but it is definitely starting to bring some ripples coming our way. Muna further on the inside, near all the way on the back. So Muna deciding to drop in on this one. Let's see how she does. So Moon has got a fun one going. Looks like a little bit of a set wave. Oh, that's got some energy. This is going to be mm. good for her. She is absolutely trying to improve on her score as well. Moon is just really smooth. But we do see the teenager from Tarifa behind her. So let's wait and see what she's doing. Oh, here's a good one for Nia. Yeah, dropping oh, in, going gonna... backside as she's making her way along, going all the way out. Is she going to drop out? No, no. Coming very close. She's got to be careful. And she goes down. This could be very critical for Nia. I can already see the safety crew getting down here. Has that foil hit that wing? Because it is all in one bundle at the moment. It doesn't look like it has so far, but she is right on the inside. Come on, Nia. Get yourself back out. Let's have a look at the replay. Boy, Joe, that was critical. Okay, board is in on the rocks. That's not good, but Nia still has a chance at this because that is going to score huge with the judges, Joe. Yeah, I can see. I think if I'm not mistaken, it's a father Kuro in there making sure they get back. And there is the board to be able to get back out there, and it does look like she is. There it is. All right, come on, Nia. Get that adrenaline pumping. Get that adrenaline pumping. Get yourself out there. Still enough time. It's tight. It's tight. Three and a half minutes. Just shy of three and a half minutes to go. So we have Muna in the lead. And another big score coming in here for Muna for that last wave. Nia has to hit a very big one if she wants it. Yeah, I'm not sure if that last score has dropped for Nia. She rode that one almost all the way in. Um, you still never know. There's three minutes left. Uh, 
boy, this one. Oh, Muna dropping a huge bomb. She's sitting on 11.63 right now. So Muna from the USA, the Oahu rider, she wins the kite side. She's trying to make it a clean sweep, Joe. Oh, she is, and I, I hate that word. I hate clean sweep, but here it is well deserved at the moment. But, hey, it ain't over. You do not win until the fat lady sings, and we are not breaking out the cigars yet because Nia Swadith, there still is enough time for her to be able to get another set, but I will say it's glassy on the inside there. She still needs to get up, and there are lines coming out on the horizon, meaning she's not going to be in position for this set, Chris. Yeah, I mean, it might just be a case of Muna being a little bit older and more of a veteran because she is sitting out there looking like she might actually be getting another set wave coming in. So, but there, Nia is up and she is sitting on two minutes and 30 seconds. Yep, so there's plenty of time, still enough to go, but now dropping in. Here we have a Muna White, and this is looking like a very nice wave. Hold on to your hats, the Hawaiian is coming down the line. Oh, man, what a great way for Muna. Oh, she's in a critical section right there. It looks like it's about to break on her head. Oh, my, Joe. Oh, she is getting past. She managed to get past that section and then decided, nope, I'm done with that. That is enough. That was a good wave, racking up a yet what is definitely going to be another good score. Two minutes to go. I mean, Nia, she has to be patient. And there is an absolute bomb. But let's have a look on the screen as Muna White here with that replay, another good wave. Nia Swadith, it all comes down to this, Chris. Oh boy, look at Nia. Nia's on the outside in a big one. She's gonna be going as critical as she can right here. I'd love to see an error from her on the inside, but let's see what Nia can do. Yeah, we're trying to make the most of this wave. She is a bit out there on the shoulder. Are we going to see an air? Yeah, there we saw a little bit, but just going off the back, not being able to pull it off. Is she going to be able to get the scores? It is going to be close as we are just approaching the final 60 seconds. Boy, Joe, this one has been, this has been a real battle. Uh, my hats go off to both Nia and Muna. These women are charging Ponta Preta. I mean, what an amazing uh, contest this has been for all the athletes. The men are charging, the women are charging. Nia's doing airs on the inside. Muna White coming out of Hawaii, winning on the kite side, and now potentially sitting in a position to, like I said, win both titles. Yeah, no, and it is at the moment 40 seconds to go. Where is Nia? She's here on the inside. Nia is not going to be able to get back out in time. So without it being official, as it isn't there yet, I do reckon that we can call it closer because Nia is in a lull here on the inside. But I'm going to say it. What an amazing performance from the team from Tarifa because she does not have a lot of wave experience. And it's been ride after ride. She's been improving every single time. But I think the wave knowledge and a little bit more of the competition experience there from Muna has given her the advantage. And in a free two one there it is red flag in the sky your champion here for the gwa wing falling world tour women's wave discipline out of hawaii oahu congratulations muna white yeah joe what an accomplishment this young woman comes out of nowhere Sounds like she hadn't competed since 2019 on the kite side. Wins that a few days ago. Comes over to the wing side. No one knows who she is. I'd never heard of Muna White. And she goes and absolutely spanks the veterans. She beats the number one seed, the teen from Tarifa. Congratulations, Muna. Yeah, no, incredible riding. And while we wait for the next grand final of the men to come our way, we're going to look at the highlights of that last heat.
and welcome back everybody welcome back it is on we are gonna have the grand final in between those two beasts chris wow joe what a finish we are about to have here the men's grand final we got wesley brito the local cabo verdian going against benoit carpentier out of france no one saw benoit coming wesley was one of the favorites early on yeah and there we can see muna and nia just coming in the cape verdian flag is high in the sky everybody is getting ready to cheer everybody is getting ready to cry as it is on grand final so the two return rider out there Rizzi brito is going to be in the yellow then we have the free wing and starboard rider benoit carpentier but it looks like wesley is dropping in on his first wave so here goes Wesley. He did this in the semifinal earlier against Ugo. He had a great first wave, and it really gave some confidence to the Cabo Verdean. Ah, oh, yeah, he ain't messing around. He's coming in very close, side to side, rail to rail, getting past that section. Oh, boy, Wesley is in a super absolute. Oh, my God, what just happened, Joe? Oh, landing oh a gosh. cleaner to start off, but we will see also Benoit Carpentier here on the inside getting another wave. So we are going to get a replay of the white Lycra, Benoit Carpentier. But what a way to start for both of these athletes. Let's see the replay of both of those waves. Joe, that was absolutely insane. We got Benoit Carpentier here. He got a great first wave, absolutely going for it. The Frenchman, the, the champion paddleboarder knows how to compete. You don't have world champion next to your name unless you know what you are doing. All right, so here's the wave. This is the one from Wesley. Rail to rail, super smooth off the top there, Chris. So I, I, Wesley just literally left me speechless on this, which does not happen very often. <laughs> he is in a just critical section. And then this, his first wave, Joe. He doesn't hold back at all and throws a huge 360. Yeah, but obviously, as it was a smaller wave, only getting a 6.90. Benoit Carpentier for this wave, a 5.73. Nice, laid back, nice, loose, powering off that back foot. Good surfing there from the Frenchman as well. Yeah, Benoit's got a really nice style. He absolutely carves. He goes into the critical sections, and it's his style that got him to the finals. Oh, there we see the champion from Hawaii, Aeneas Suardias. What a heat that was, Joe. I cannot believe Muna just came and threw down and took out the team from Tarifa. Talk about dominating here in Cape Verde, but talking about the dominator, the terminator, the black mamba. Having a little look, but that one was very close to the shore. I reckon he's seen something out the back. Wesley, he was very patient in the few, in the past rounds. He was always waiting for those sets. Both of the riders going back out. I reckon he's just had a little look-see on one of those waves to get a second score. But they are already all the way up the upwind mark here of the competition area. So what's happening with these riders, Joe, as this contest goes on, they're learning. And what they're learning is it's you're not just out there riding waves. You're not out there to put on a show. You are out there to ride the two biggest and technically challenging waves you can find. So what Wesley did right there was a veteran move. He was on a smaller wave. He knew he wasn't going to be able to improve his score. So he said, I would rather go back out and get priority. Yeah, no, I think that was intelligent. And Benoit, you can see him, you know, pretty much right next to the Cape Verde. And Benoit, you know, he knows what it is to be in between the buzzers in a contest. World champion SUP rider out there at the moment. Great to see so many people from so many different types of sports, water sports out here. But at the moment, it is Wesley Brito in a commanding lead. And the heat he put on in the semifinals is going to be a hard one to repeat because what waves can through there yeah that was just crazy men's semi-final number one was one of the heats that they just got the goods yeah. at the waves just rolled in both Ugo and Wesley probably had five or six bomb set waves yeah and we're hoping obviously this being a final we want to see a couple of bombs coming our way I'm poking my head out again the old giraffe going poking my head out of the window here on the live stream doesn't look like there's anything out there yet but still 12 minutes i mean that and considering what we have seen in the final minutes multiple buzzer beaters at this competition 
That's loads of time. Yeah, no, we're still sitting on a full 12 minutes. We're not even halfway through this thing. And Wesley, again, what we're seeing, the success from the Cabo Verdean, to me, is because he gets these first two waves under his belt. He has two good scores. They're not great. They're not nines, but they're good enough to put pressure on Benoit. Yeah, no, he's he's gone in early, so a 6.9 and a 3.33 there for Brito, and we have a 5.73 for Benoit. Like you say, not the best of scores, not the biggest of ones, but it is enough for them to make it happen. As we are going to be going, and we are ready for this grand final. And hello everybody and welcome over here, Cape Verde. I hope everybody is enjoying the stream. It has been awesome to see you guys. Now, I tell you what, get out there to the action. Uh, getting creative here for the final. We've got to keep ourselves entertained in between these sets because when those sets come on, it's nothing but entertainment by the gladiators out there. As they would say in the good old gladiator film, gladiators, I salute you. Ooh, I like that one. You know, both you and Liam have thrown out a couple. <laughs> that, that's all right, because I am I know what to do. I will go back. I've already got a few ideas brewing. I'll do a little bit of studying, and uh, trust me, that's not the last word there, Joe. We actually have a little bet going on. We'll let you inside this, mate. We Each event, each one of us has to give each other a word, and we have to land that in a quote during the stream, and there's beers involved. It's a good bet. Oh, I already have my word, platypus. Oh. Oh, snap. You have no idea the shenanigans snap. that the McDonald's are capable of. So oh, I like it. I like it. I, I like the challenge, you know. I, I'm warning you, though, Joe. Don't start a war you can't finish. Mate, you know, challenge your limits. Don't limit your challenges, mate. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> right now I am looking at my friend Wesley out there. He is about 10 minutes away from being a champion at his home contest, which would just cap this off. I do not want to count Benoit Carpentier out. I have seen some amazing rides out of this Frenchman, the world champion paddleboarder. So he is absolutely in this. I think this might come down to waves, Joe. I think it will come down to waves because both of these guys know what it is to surf the set waves. Both of them are capable of getting those high points okay Wesley has had the highest scores in the competition but Benoit every single heat we see him he's improving and he has that style he uses a lot of the longboard SUP so he knows what it is to get that carving hat talking to Zane getting the spray out getting the flow on and I would like you said I reckon it's gonna come down to the set ways but hey I'm gonna stick a couple of quarters here in the wave meter so give us a give us about 30 seconds and we'll see a set coming our way how much is a wave these days? I don't know, but at this rate, it's going to be going expensive. Hey, well, we got some coins here, so let's feed that machine. Um, thank you, Joe. I actually am seeing Benoit on something oh, nice looking turn. fun. He actually gets his, his uh, butt in the water on that when he got so low. So great drone shot. Yeah, top to bottom here for Benoit Carpentier, right in the critical section of the wave. Really good ride in there, getting it on the drone through. Wesley Puto coming in as well. He's seen Benoit. He knows he has to push this one. Is he going to be able to get past this section? Yes, he is. Oh, are we going to be seeing another <sighs> jump? Are we going to be seeing another air? Chris? Oh, my gosh. Wesley, I, again, am speechless. This guy came to win, Joe. We just saw a great wave from Benoit Carpentier, but Wesley was just that much more in the critical section. He had to pump through that. I can't wait to see that replay. Yeah, I, I do reckon, though, I think Benoit had the better surfing. He had the top to bottom. He was going around. I mean, that first turn, it looks like he's on a shorter mast as well to be able to get those turns. Is that so? You know, I don't know what mast Benoit's on. Like I said, it's pretty traditional for these guys to be riding 82s. Here's the replay. Um, see how Wesley is having to pump through that critical section? Then he doesn't pull out. He says, nope, I'm I'll staying continue. in this one. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be close. I reckon, you know, I'm looking at scores coming through. Very similar all the way along. So what happens is the highest score and the lowest score get scratched, and then it's an average of the other three. And uh, at the moment, just waiting for those numbers, it is going to be very close in between them. But I'm going to say my money is on just a little bit there for Benoit. But you know what? It doesn't matter because there is a set and lines are stacking to the horizon. We are going to be having some waves, baby. 
All right, so a 6.13 for Benoit. Moving in to first position. 6.13. So he has an 11.86 total. There we can see the crowd starting to come down. And here he is. Benoit looks like, is he going to be taking off on this one, Chris? It looks like he's got something. Yeah, Benoit drops into a smaller one, but he does have a lot of speed. So at this point, we are six minutes left. Um, oh, boy, it does look like, oh, wow, Benoit. I'm going to back up here. He is nice on a good one. Nice turns, getting low and right in the crease of the wave. This is a beauty. I do not know how he has not hit the reef yet. Oh. And I, sorry, I jinxed that. That is going head over heels, but the racking around, the turns in the critical section, now we are talking. What is Benoit doing? He has let go of his leash. Oh, he popped his oh, wing. Because he knows his wing is pop. And he is going to try and get down to the shore break. Do you reckon he's going to surf a wave? Yeah, he is. Look, this guy's a surfer. He's paddling. He is going to try and get up on his wing board and paddle it all the way in. So there we can see. I can see guys running around. But watch out. Wesley Brito. Big bomb out the back. Oh my gosh, Wesley is on an absolute heater right now. Benoit swimming it on the inside and Wesley just get, getting a moonshot out there so big. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting, Joe. Ah, oh, nice wave all the way along. Yeah, we have Carpentier already got a seven point big wave for him now. Wesley's gonna have to equal it because he's currently in second. Oh, he's ironing up, he's ironing up. There goes the leash. I reckon we're gonna be seeing it. Are we gonna be seeing the air? It does look like he's trying to get that section all the way down. Are we going to be seeing some air time on it? Oh! Gavin just going off the back, but that was a big one. Oh, my goodness. Joe, I don't even know what to say. Wesley riding over the reef in six inches of water at the most, and he is going to be looking at a huge score on that. Right now, Benoit is in the lead with a 13.3. Unfortunately, you can see that air, that free wing out there with a the pop bladder. I do. This is too close to call. Four minutes left. Can we see down the beach? It'd be great to get a report if someone has a wing for him down there. Oh, and I'm seeing numbers coming through. I mean, it looks like the yeah the foil must have nipped the free wing and unfortunately exploded and open. But he has enough time. I mean, four minutes we still have. It's looking like a big score is going to be coming. A big score is going to be coming his way as we are just getting in to the final four minutes. And I'm waiting to see if Benoit is going to be making his way back. He got a 7.17 for that one. That was huge. But Wesley Brito in a commanding position at the moment. Wow, look at that score that just dropped, Joe. Wait, they, uh, let's just wait a sec. Hold on. This one is going to be too close to call. So. Okay. Ah, so close, so close. So what we got is we have three minutes left, and man, this is crazy right now, Joe, but Benoit Carpentier was able to get a wing from his caddy, and he winged right by Wesley. Wesley is in a lull. Wesley right now needs to get out there and match Benoit if something were to happen. We are waiting for scores to drop. Are those official yet, Joe? Yeah, they are official. So an 8.13 there from Wesley and a 6.90 totaling out at a 15.03. Carpentier has a 7.17, so that is higher than Wesley's second score. So he, that is a good thing. And he has a 6.13. So basically, Carpentier needs to get a big score to get back into contention. So he's going to need something around the 8 point, just shy of 8 points. So a high 7 if he wants to be moving through into first position. But now, 
Both of the guys, you can see Wesley is up, Benoit is out there. Two minutes on the clock, and the ocean is giving us some love because it looks like there is a set coming our way. This is how we want to finish a finish. Oh my gosh, Joe, this is unbelievable. We have a minute, 48 seconds left. Benoit, the French world champion paddleboarder, is I, he is still in this. Here he goes. He's in a big one. Let's see what he can do. Oh, this is going to be an important oh. one. Back to this critical section. He's surfing this off the top. Chris, look at this. Oh, my gosh. Benoit's in an absolute heater right now. He's trying to keep it together on this. This is going to be a high-scoring wave. All the way down. And Wesley has decided to go against that. Benoit here on the inside. So Benoit on the inside goes down, but that was a very good wave. Is it eight point potential? Is it high seven potential? We are gonna have to look. It is gonna be very, very close out there at the moment. Wesley, one minute to go. And I think there might be a wave coming his way. This is gonna come down to the wire. This is what we want for the final. These two gladiators battling it out. And whoever has it, both of them deserve it. What is it going to be? What is it going to be? Well, right now, Benoit is on the inside, and he is not going to get another wave. But we are looking at Wesley coming in on one more bomb. He needs to improve on his low score of 6.9, Joe. Yeah, so is it going to be enough? I honestly I don't think it's going to be enough to be able to improve that. But waiting for confirmation now, Wesley Brito on a bomb in the final 20 seconds ripping it over he knows how important this is his home country his home crowd shouting him along as he goes off of that wave with eight seconds to go still waiting for confirmation on a score from Benoit and ladies and gentlemen there it is red flag in the sky as we are waiting for the results to come in it is official ladies and gentlemen your winner from cape verde wesley brito taking it home chris that was incredible oh my gosh joe that was absolutely insane i don't even know what just happened wesley Brito is the champion of Cabo Verde. Just hats off to you, Wesley. Congratulations. I'm just happy for Cabo Verde. What, what a week. Yeah, incredible, incredible work. There we can see the beauty shots. This is what we want to see, guys. Streams, get the emotions. That man there, Wesley Brito, taking the win. This is incredible. Ah, oh, the Cape Verdean flag high in the sky, Chris, as they have just known. They know, and look at that, the wave. Wesley just giving it to him. Victory run in front of the crowd. Wesley is literally just catching a bomb for the crowd. He's screaming at him. I'm not even sure if he knows he won. He's going to ride this one all the way to the beach. They're going to pick him up on his shoulders if they can do that to the Black <laughs> Mamba. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's this is so great. I mean the event Cape Verde both winners Cape Verdean we have on the kiting three Cape Verdeans on the male podium here on the wing Wesley Brito the underdog the man that everybody talks out hadn't had a shine in in a competition but if there was a place to do it it was here fairly see that is Wesley that is incredible well my hats go off to Wesley Brito you know this is his first win and boy does he deserve it Joe the guy is such a good good human you know that's all I can say about Wesley it's not about his skills and his talent he's just I love the dude and I'm so proud of him and stoked for him right now like congratulations ah uh, it's amazing that is awesome and the smile is gonna say it all incredible to see there it is there's the tears there's the emotion there is the flag Cape Verdean style Wesley Brito, the number one of Punta Preta, the Black Mamba in command. 
I mean, just, just look at that shot, Joe. I mean, that's like a storybook right there. And here we can see a couple of the guys going to get him up on their shoulders as incredible work there. I mean, what a story. You know, this guy coming from Boa Vista, they saw him here in Cape Verde, started to get involved on the Duotone International team, and now there he is, holding high, hands up in the air, your number one, the champion, Wesley Brito. You know, congratulations to, to Wesley, congratulations to Duotone. Um, it's just, what a, what a great finish for Wesley. Well, there they have the emotion making their way through as they're going to be bringing that guy all the way up to the beach as we are coming up. And there it is. You can see Josh Silva, the organizer. They had to put him down because, I mean, he's a big dude. Yeah, Black Mama's not a small guy. So those guys, you know, my hat's off go to Wesley. I, I know how hard he works. You know, congratulations to Duotone. That's a great win. Um, it just, it's storybook. Yeah, it is. And there we can see... Oh, it's look at the look at the smile on his face. Look at the smile on his face. Cape Verdean flag in the sky. These are magical moments for athletes, and ah, oh, that is just so cool. That is so cool. And who didn't deserve it more than that man there, Wesley Brito? Incredible work. You know, that's two years that he's been on the podium back in Fortaleza in third place, and so to come out on top at at this, the first pure wave event in Cabo Verde you know I, I'm sure Wesley the whole time thought you know I, I got a chance at this and it's better than most of these guys I'm Cabo Verdean and and to be able to do it here is just storybook yeah I mean it's going to be one that he will remember so there we have the results of the final in third position it's going to be Zane Schweitzer with a 16.93 big heat out there for him fourth position is going to be Ugo Marin who went ballistic out there on the waves in second position, Benoit Carpentier took it to Wesley Brito. Look how close the result was there with a 14.24. But the numero uno, the champion, the number one here of the GWA Wing Foiling World Tour World Cup, Cape Verde, Punta Preta, Wesley Brito. Yeah, that was, uh, that was closer than I expected between Benoit and, and Wesley. So hats off to Wesley. You know, you... You crushed it, man. On to the women. In third place, we have Bowen Vanderland, Linden from the Netherlands, a North Rider. Elena Moreno showed up out of Spain. The Canaries and absolutely threw down Joe. Stoked to have her around and hope she gets on the tour more. And in second place, Nia Suardia is the team from Tarifa, but on the top of the podium again, Joe. Yeah, Muna White coming out of Hawaii, the USA. Incredible work for her. 2019 she took the wing to the kite surfing event 2023 she's taking the kiting and she's also taking the wing foil event wow i mean i guess muna white's kind of the queen of cabo verde so yeah and here we are on the screen there we have it so uh, what an incredible event there even look at that sun here we are we've got the nice shade chris let's get a little bit further forward so the guys at home can have us get a little bit of that tan so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for joining us here on the stream of the gwa wing foiling world tour cape verde punta preta chris it has been incredible you know, Joe, I don't think we could ask for anything more out of Cabo Verde. We've had, like, they've been so welcoming. We've had the conditions. We've had the winners. We had the, you know, the all Cabo Verdean podium on the kite side. And then to have Wesley Brito come in and win his first contest here, and I mean, it brings tears to my eyes, man. Yeah, no, it's been incredible to run for it. Thank you very much to all of the sponsors, everybody that makes this happen, to the GK crew, to the GWA crew. What an incredible week of live stream we have had. And now it is time to say goodbye. So on my behalf, Josie Ashler, thank you very much for everybody for being here with us. And I hope you enjoyed the stream. Chris, send it off. Oh, I've had a great time in Cabo Verde here. It's been a pleasure working with you and Liam and the whole crew. And uh, my hat's off to you guys for running an amazing event. You got not only a kite wave event done, but you got the wing done as well. So cheers. Well, there it is, guys. We will see you next time. Thank you for tuning in here. Cabo Verde, Island of Sao, Punta Preta.
CV móvel. Estamos ligados. Cabo Verde offers an incredibly diverse landscape, from exhilarating nature exploration and water sports to beachside pampering and cultural immersion. The sunny islands are a beach lover's paradise. With white sandy beaches, crystalline waters, and exciting water sports. The census islands call all nature enthusiasts and ecotourists. Mountainous peaks give way to lush valleys and surrealist volcanic landscapes where premium coffee and wine are produced. The Essence Islands are the cultural heart of Cabo Verde. Home to the two largest cities, visitors can explore the heritage sites while enjoying vibrant music, vivacious street life, and traditional food. Cabo Verde has it all. Let's go. 